Talmud, Masoda A C H A P T E R I Mishnah. If one warns his wife not to associate with a certain man, or Eliezer says he warns her on the testimony of two witnesses and makes her drink the water of bitterness on the testimony of one witness, or his personal testimony, or Joshua says he warns her on the testimony of two and makes her drink on the testimony of two, how does he warn her if he says to her in the presence of two, do not converse with that man, and she converse with him, she is still permitted to her husband and permitted to partake of the heave offering, should she have entered a private place with him and stayed with him a time sufficient for misconduct to have occurred, she is forbidden to her husband and forbidden to partake of the heave offering. If her husband died, she performs the ceremony of Elizabeth, cannot contract a levi rate marriage tomorrow now that the Tana has finished tractate Nazir, what is his reason for continuing with tractate soda? It is according. To the view of rabbi for it has been taught rabbi says why does the section of the nazi right adjoin that of the suspected woman to tell you that whoever witnesses a suspected woman in her disgrace should withhold himself from one but the tana in the mishnah should treat of tractate soda first and afterwards that of nazir since he treated of tractate ketub of marriage settlements and dealt with the theme he who imposes in vow upon his wife he next treated of tractate netarim vows and since he treated of tractate netarim he proceeded to treat of tractate nazir which is analogous to netarim and then continues with soda for the reason given by rabbi if one warns his wife as an accomplished fact it is allowable but as something still to be done it is not consequently our tana holds that it is forbidden to give a warning our samuel b r isaac said when resh began to expound the subject of soda he spoke thus they only pair a woman with a man according to his Deeds as it is said for the scepter of wickedness shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous rabbi Bibar Hannah said in the name of our Yohanan it is as difficult to peer them as was the division of the Red Sea as it is said God said hate the solitary and families he bringeth out the prisoners into prosperity but it is not so for Rab Judah has said in the name of Rab forty days before the creation of the child of Bath Kol issues forth and proclaims the daughter of A is for B the house of C is for D. The field of E is for F there is no contradiction the latter dictum referring to a first marriage and the former to a second marriage our Eliezer says he warns her on the testimony of two witnesses etc so far only do our Eliezer and our Joshua differ in the matter of warning and seclusion but in the matter of misconduct they agree that one witness is believed we similarly learn in the mission if one witness says I saw that she committed misconduct she does not drink the water whence is it? Derived according to Torah law that one witness is believed as our rabbis taught and there be no witness against her the text refers to two witnesses but perhaps it is not so and even one suffices there is a teaching to declare one witness shall not rise up against a man Talmud, Maso to be from the fact that it is stated a witness shall not rise up against a man do and not know that one is intended why is there a teaching to declare one witness this establishes the rule that wherever it is stated witness it signifies two unless the text specifies one and in the case under discussion the all merciful declares that when there are not two witnesses against her but only one and she has not been violated she is forbidden to her husband now the reason for that is because it is written one witness shall not rise up against a man were it however not so stated I might have supposed that witness in the verse relating to a suspected woman means one but if there be not even one witness Against her, why should she then be prohibited to her husband? The verse one witness, etc., is necessary because otherwise it might have occurred to me to suppose that there be no witness against her means he is not believed against her, he is not believed against her. What then does the text want? Unless there are two witnesses, let the scriptural text be silent on the point and not mention it at all, since the rule could have been deduced by analogy from the occurrence of the word Dabar in the verse relating to civil actions. And I would know that it applies to every case of testimony mentioned in the Torah. It was necessary for scripture to have mentioned it because otherwise it might have occurred to me to suppose that the matter is different in the case of a suspected woman, inasmuch as there was some basis for the charge seeing that he had warned her and she had been secluded with the man. Consequently, one witness should be believed against her, but how is it possible to say? That if the Torah had not specified that witness always means two, I might have supposed that the intention of there be no witness against her was that he is not believed against her and she is permitted to her husband surely from what is written and she had not been violated it is implied that she is forbidden to him it was necessary for scripture to have mentioned this because otherwise it might have occurred to me to suppose that the evidence against her is not believed unless there are two witnesses and that the verse means that she had not been violated on the evidence of two witnesses we are consequently taught that one witness is believed our Joshua says he warns her on the testimony of two etc what is our Joshua's reason scripture states against her i.e. against her in the matter of misconduct but not in the matter of warning against her in the matter of misconduct but not in the matter of seclusion our Eliza on the other hand says against her in the matter of Misconduct, but not in the matter of warning, only perhaps, however, against her does mean, and not in the matter of seclusion. Seclusion is compared to defilement, misconduct, for it is written, and he kept close, and she be defiled, but warning also is compared to defilement, for it is written, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. The all merciful excluded this by the phrase against her, but what leads you to this conclusion, it is obvious that seclusion is more serious than warning. Because she is forthwith prohibited to her husband, as with defilement, on the contrary, warning is more serious, since it is the root cause of her seclusion, rendering her forbidden to her husband. If there was no seclusion, would there have been any warning? But if there was no warning, what effect would seclusion have? Nevertheless, seclusion is the more serious, since it is the beginning of defilement. Our mission does not agree with the following tenet, for it has been taught our Jose, son of our Judah. Says in the name of our Eliezer, he who warns his wife does so on the testimony of one witness or his personal testimony and makes her drink the water of bitterness on the testimony of two witnesses. The sages replied according to the view of our Jose son of our Judah, there is no purpose in the matter. What is the reason of our Jose son of our Judah? Scripture states against her, i.e., against her in the matter of misconduct, but not in the matter of seclusion, perhaps, however, against her means and not in the matter of warning. Warning is compared to defilement, for it is written, and he be jealous of his wife and she be defiled, but seclusion is also compared to defilement, for it is written, and he kept close and she be defiled. That refers to a length of time sufficient for defilement to have occurred. It was stated above the sages replied according to the view of our Jose son of our Judah, there is no purpose in the matter. What does this mean? There may be times when he did not warn her and he claims. That he did warn her is there then according to our mission any purpose in the matter since there may be times when she had not been secluded with the man and the husband claims that she had been secluded our Isaac B. Joseph said in the name of our Yohanan read also according to the view of our Jose son of our Judah there is no purpose in the matter also according to the view of our Jose son of our Judah you say is there then no question with respect to our mission on the contrary according to our mission there is foundation for the charge but in the other case the view of our Jose son of our Judah there may be no foundation but if the teaching is reported it must be in this form our Isaac B. Joseph said in the name of our Yohanan according to the view of our Jose son of our Judah and also according to our mission there is no purpose in the matter our Hanan of Surah said nowadays a man should not say to his wife do not be secluded with so and so lest we decide according to our Jose son of our Judah who said a warning is effective if given on the husband's personal testimony if she then secluded herself with the man since we have not now the water for a suspected woman to test her the husband forbids her to himself for all time Rashlakish said what is the meaning of the term can we a matter which causes hatred cannot between her and others consequently he holds that the warning can be on the husband's personal testimony and since not everybody knows that he gave her a warning and they say what has happened that she holds herself aloof they will proceed to cause hatred against her Arjem Arbi Shalimia said in the name of Abba can we means a matter which causes hatred between husband and wife consequently he holds that the warning must be on the testimony of two witnesses and everybody is aware that he gave her a warning and it is he who proceeds to cause hatred against her Talmud Masoda conclude that they hold that it is forbidden to give a warning but according to him who says that it is permissible to give a warning, what is the meaning of can we are nominee? Isaac said, can we means nothing but warning, and thus scripture states, then the Lord warned W.A.N. his land, it has been taught our mayor used to say, if a person commits a transgression in secret, the Holy One blessed be
Enter your mind that we follow the order of the text and we our signifies will come of what use is a warning after misconduct and seclusion had taken place the school of our Ishmael taught a man does not warn his wife unless a spirit enters into him as it is said and the spirit of jealousy came upon him and he be jealous of his wife what is the meaning of the word spirit the rabbis declare it is a spirit of impurity but our Ashi declares it is a spirit of purity reasonable is the view of him who declares that it is a spirit of purity because it was taught and he be jealous of his wife this is voluntary in the opinion of our Ishmael but our Akiba says it is obligatory it is well if you say that it means a spirit of purity then everything is right but if you say that it means a spirit of impurity is it voluntary or obligatory for a man to introduce a spirit of impurity into himself to turn to the main text and he be jealous of his wife this is voluntary in the opinion of our Ishmael but our Akiba says it is obligatory for her he may defile himself this is voluntary in the opinion of our Ishmael but our Akiba says it is obligatory of them shall ye take your bondman forever this is voluntary in the opinion of our Ishmael but our Akiba says it is obligatory our Papa said to obey others declare it was our Meshashia who said to Rabbah is this to say that our Ishmael and our Akiba differ in this way throughout the Torah one maintaining that a precept is voluntary and the other that it is obligatory he replied they only differ here over text and he be jealous of his wife it is voluntary in the opinion of our Ishmael but our Akiba says it is obligatory what is the reason of our Ishmael he holds the same view as that of the following teacher it has been taught our Eliezer B. Jacob says since the Torah declares thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart it is possible to think that this applies also in such a circumstance therefore there is a text to say and the spirit of jealousy came upon him and he be jealous of his wife and what is the reason of our Akiba the word jealous occurs a second time in the verse and how does our Ishmael explain the repetition of jealous since it was necessary to write and she be defiled and afterwards and she be not defiled the Torah wrote and he be jealous of his wife this is in agreement with the teaching of the school of our Ishmael for it was taught in the school of our Ishmael wherever a scriptural passage is repeated it is only repeated because of some new point contained therein similarly for her he may defile himself this is voluntary in the opinion of our Ishmael but our Akiba says it is obligatory what is the reason of our Ishmael since it is written speak unto the priests the sons of Aaron and say unto them there shall none defile himself for the dead among his people it was likewise necessary to write for her he may defile himself and from where does our Akiba learn that a priest may so defile himself he Derives it from except for his kin what then is the purpose of for her he should defile himself it is to indicate that it is obligatory and how does our Ishmael explain the addition of these words for her he may defile himself but not for any of her limbs Talmud, Ma so to be what reply does our Akiba make to this explanation if that were the sole intention the all merciful should have written for her and then stop what is the purpose of the words he should defile himself deduce. Therefom how does our Ishmael meet this argument since the Torah wrote for her it likewise wrote he may defile himself this is in agreement with the teaching of the school of our Ishmael for it was taught in the school of our Ishmael wherever a scriptural passage is repeated it is only repeated because of some new point contained therein and similarly of them shall ye take your bondman forever this is voluntary in the opinion of our Ishmael but our Akiba says it is obligatory what is the reason? Of our Ishmael, since it is written, thou shalt save alive nothing that breathed. It was likewise necessary to write of them. Shall ye take your bondman forever in order to indicate that if a man belonging to any other Gentile people has intercourse with a Canaanite woman and begets a son by her, it is permissible to purchase him as a slave. For it has been taught once is it that if a man belonging to any other Gentile people has intercourse with a Canaanite woman and begets a son by her, it is permissible to purchase him as a slave. There is a text to declare moreover of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you of them shall ye by it is possible to think that also if a Canaanite had intercourse with a woman belonging to any other Gentile people and he begets a son by her, it is permissible to purchase him as a slave. Therefore there is a text to declare which they have begotten in your land from those born in your land and not from those who dwell in your land and from. Where does our Akiba learn this rule? He derives it from of them. Shall ye by what then is the purpose of of them? Ye shall take your bondman forever. It indicates that it is obligatory. And how does our Ishmael explain the addition of these words of them? He may purchase, but not of your brethren. From where does our Akiba derive this rule? It is deduced from the mention of your brethren at the end of the verse. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over. Another with rigor, how does our Ishmael meet this argument? Since the Torah wrote, but over your brethren, it likewise wrote of them. This is in agreement with the teaching of the school of our Ishmael, for it was taught in the school of our Ishmael. Wherever a scriptural passage is repeated, it is only repeated because of some new point contained there in Arhista. Said immorality in a house is like a worm in the sesame plant. Further said Arhista, anger in a house is like a worm in the sesame plant. Both. These statements refer to a woman, but in the case of a man, there is no objection. Further, said Arhista, at first before Israel sinned against morality, the Shechinah abode with each individual, as it is said, for the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp. When they sinned, the Shechinah departed from them, as it is said, that he see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. Or Samuel be Naman, he said, in the name of our Jonathan, whoever performs one precept in this world, it precedes him for the world to come, as it is said, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. And whoever commits one transgression in this world, it clings to him and precedes him for the day of judgment, as it is said, the paths of their way are turned aside, they go up into the waste and perish. Our Eliezer says it attaches itself to him like a dog, as it is said, he here cannot unto her to lie by her or to be with her to lie by her in this world or to be with her in the world to come. We learn elsewhere it is a Proper conclusion that if the first evidence that the woman had secluded herself with the man which does not prohibit her to her husband for all time is not established by fewer than two witnesses, is it not right that the final evidence that she had misconducted herself which prohibits her to him for all time should not be established by fewer than two witnesses? Therefore, there is a text to state, and there be no witness against her, implying that whatever evidence there may be against her is believed, even if it be only one witness. And with respect to the first evidence about her seclusion with the man, that one witness suffices may be argued by a fortiori reasoning as follows: If the final evidence regarding misconduct which prohibits her to her husband for all time is established by one witness, is it not proper that the first evidence which does not prohibit her to him for all time should be established by one witness? Therefore, there is a text to state because he hath. Found some unseemly matter in her and elsewhere it states at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall a matter be established as the matter mentioned in this latter case must be confirmed by the testimony of two witnesses so also here in the case of the suspected woman the matter must be confirmed by the testimony of two witnesses is this deduction to be drawn from the words because he hath found some unseemly matter in her it ought to be derived from against her i.e. against her in the matter of misconduct but not in the matter of warning against her in the matter of misconduct but not in the matter of seclusion he also says similarly and his teaching is to be cited as follows therefore there is a text to state against her in the matter of misconduct but not in the matter of warning against her in the matter of misconduct but not in the matter of seclusion and whence is it that merely in a case of misconduct where there had been no warning or Seclusion one witness is not believed it is stated here because he hath found some unseemly matter in her and elsewhere it states at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall a matter be established as in the matter mentioned in the latter case two witnesses are required so also here where there has been misconduct without warning and seclusion two witnesses are required our rabbis have taught which is the first testimony evidence of seclusion and the final testimony is evidence of defilement misconduct Talmud, Masoda and how long is the duration in the matter of seclusion sufficient for misconduct i.e. sufficient for cohesion i.e. sufficient for sexual contact i.e. sufficient for a person to walk around a day palm such as the view of our Ishmael our Eliezer says sufficient for preparing a cup of wine our Joshua says sufficient to drink it Ben Aze says sufficient to roast an egg our Akiba says sufficient to swallow it our Judah be says sufficient to swallow. Three eggs one after the other are Eliezer B. Jeremiah says sufficient for a weaver to not a thread Hanin B. Phineas says sufficient
Sexual contact i.e. sufficient for a date palm to rebound such as the view of our Eliza Arjashu says sufficient for preparing a cup of wine Ben Aze says sufficient to drink it our Akiva says sufficient to roast an egg Arjuta Bibatera says sufficient to swallow it now it is assumed that walking around a date palm and the rebound of a date palm are identical in length of time and the question thus arises are Ishmael said above sufficient for a person to walk around a date palm and our Eliza disagreed with him and here our Eliza says sufficient for a date palm to rebound Abe said walking around means on foot and rebound means by the force of the wind Arashi asked how is rebound to be understood does it mean that the palm is blown in one direction and then in its opposite or perhaps that it is blown in one direction and then in its opposite and finally returns to its original position the question remains unanswered our Eliza said above sufficient for preparing a cup of wine and here he says sufficient for a date palm to rebound they are alike in duration our Joshua said above sufficient to drink it and here he says sufficient for preparing a cup of wine say that the correct version is sufficient for preparing a cup of wine and drinking it but why not say rather that they are alike in duration if so he would agree with our Eliza's view Ben Aze said above sufficient to roast an egg and here he says sufficient to drink a cup of wine they are alike in duration are Akiba said above sufficient to swallow a roasted egg and here he says sufficient to roast an egg say that the correct version is sufficient to roast an egg and swallow it but why not say rather that they are alike in duration if so he would agree with Ben Aze's view Arjuta B but there is said above sufficient to swallow three eggs one after the other and here he says sufficient to swallow one roasted egg he spoke in accordance with the view of our Akiba who said that we fix as the duration a length of time sufficient to roast and swallow an egg and with reference to this he said speak rather only of the duration of swallowing that is sufficient time to swallow three eggs one after the other for that is the same as roasting and swallowing one egg our Eliezer B Jeremiah says sufficient for a weaver to not a thread our Ashi asked does this mean two ends which are distant or near the question remains unanswered Hanin B Phineas said sufficient for a woman to extend her hand to her mouth to remove a chip of wood our Ashi asked does this mean which tightly between the teeth or not the question remains unanswered Palemo said sufficient for her to extend her hand to a basket and take a loaf therefrom our Ashi asked is it a loaf which is wished in tightly or not a new or old basket a hot or cold loaf Talmud ma so to be wheaten or a barley soft or hard baked the question remains unanswered our Isaac son of our Joseph said in the name of our Yohanan each of the teachers Defined the duration of cohesion from his own experience, but they included Ben Aze who was unmarried. If you wish, I can say that he had married and separated from his wife, or that he had heard it from his master, or that the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him are already expounded sometimes in the name of RMI and at other times in the name of RC. Whoever eats bread without previously washing the hands is as though he had intercourse with a harlot, as it is said, for on account of a harlot to a loaf of bread. Rabbah said on that interpretation, the verse for on account of a harlot to a loaf of bread should have read on account of a loaf of bread to a harlot, but said Rabbah, the meaning is whoever has intercourse with a harlot will in the end go seeking a loaf of bread. Arzerika said in the name of our Eliezer, whoever makes light of washing the hands before and after a meal will be uprooted from the world. Arhai Biashi said in the name of Rab with the first washing. Before the meal it is necessary to lift the hands up with the latter washing after the meal it is necessary to lower the hands there is a similar teaching who washes his hands before the meal must lift them up lest the water pass beyond the joint flow back and render them unclean Arabab says whoever eats bread without first wiping his hands is as though he eats unclean food as it is stated and the Lord said even thus shall the children of Israel eat their bread unclean and what means and the adulteress hunted for the precious life our high Abba said in the name of our Yohanan every man in whom is haughtiness of spirit will in the end stumble through an unfaithful married woman as it is said and the adulteress hunted for the precious life Rabbah said on that interpretation the word precious should have been haughty furthermore the verse should have read the haughty soul hunted the adulteress but said Rabbah the meaning is whoever has intercourse with a married woman even though he had studied Torah of which it is written it is more precious than rubies i.e. above a high priest who enters into the innermost part of the sanctuary she will hunt him to the judgment of Gehenna Yohan and said in the name of our Simeon Biohe every man in whom his haughtiness of spirit is as though he worships idols it is written here everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord and it is written elsewhere thou shalt not bring an abomination into thine house are. Yohanan himself said he is as though he had denied the fundamental principle as it is said thy heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God etc. Our Hamabi Hanan said he is as though he had broken all the laws of sexual morality it is written here everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord and it is written elsewhere for all these abominations etc. Ola said he is as though he had erected an idolatrous altar as it is said Cecia from man whose breath is in his nostrils for wearing Bama is he to be accounted of red not Bama but Bama an idolatrous altar what means hand to hand he shall not escape punishment Rab said whoever has intercourse with a married woman though he proclaimed the holy one blessed be he to be possessor of heaven and earth as did our father Abraham of whom it is written I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord God most high possessor of heaven and earth he will not escape the punishment of Gehenna the students of the school. Of Arshila objected on that interpretation the phrase hand to hand etc. should have read of my God's hand will not escape punishment but said they of the school of Arshila the meaning is though he received the Torah as did our teacher Moses of whom it is written that his right hand was a fiery law unto them he will not escape the punishment of Gehenna Yohanan objected on that interpretation the phrase hand to hand should have read hand from hand but said our Yohanan Talmud, Masode. The meaning is though he practiced charity in secret concerning which it is written a gift in secret pacifieth anger he will not escape the punishment of Gehenna whence is there a prohibition for the haughty of spirit Rabbah said in the name of Zeir I hear ye and give your be not proud our Naman B Isaac said it is derived from this passage thine heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God and it is written beware lest thou forget the Lord thy God this is in accord with what Arabin said. In the name of Arle for Arabin said in the name of Arle wherever it is stated beware lest and do not the references to a prohibition are already expounded sometimes he said it in the name of RC and at other times in the name of RMI every man in whom his haughtiness of spirit will in the end be reduced in rank as it is said they are exalted there will be reduction of status unless you think that they remain in existence the text continues and they are gone if however he changes end. Becomes humble he will be gathered to his fathers in his due time like our father Abraham as it is said but when they are lowly they are gathered in like all i.e. like Abraham Isaac and Jacob in connection with whom the word all is used if not they are cut off as the tops of the ears of corn what means as the tops of the ears of corn are and are his explained and one says that it means like the of the grain and the other that it means like the ears themselves this is quite right. According to him who says that it means like the of the grain since it is written as the tops of the ears of corn but according to him who says that it means like the ears themselves what signifies as the tops of the ears of corn are said and it was similarly taught in the school of our Ishmael it is like a man who enters his field he gleans the tallest ears with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit Aruna and Arhista explained it one says that it means the contrite is with me. And the other that I got am with the contrite the more probable view is in accord with him who holds the meaning to be I am with the contrite for behold the holy one blessed be he ignored all the mountains and heights and caused his Chechenah to abide upon Mount Sinai but did not elevate Mount Sinai up to himself or Joseph said man should always learn from the mind of his creator for behold the holy one blessed be he ignored all the mountains and heights and caused his Chechenah to abide upon Mount Sinai and ignored all the beautiful trees and caused his Chechenah to abide in a bush our Eliezer also said every man in whom his haughtiness of spirit is fit to be hewn down like an Asher it is written here the high ones of stature shall be hewn down and elsewhere it is written and ye shall hew down their Asher and further said our Eliezer every man in whom his haughtiness of spirit is dust will not be disturbed for the resurrection as it is said awake and sing yet dwell in it. Dust it is not said yet that lie in the dust but yet that dwell shot in the dust i.e. each one who during his lifetime
Ruffled by the slightest wind, how much more so a human being who contains but one quarter of a log are high. B. Ashi said in the name of Rabbi, a disciple of the sages should possess an eighth of pride. Arhuna, the son of Arjashua, said this small amount of pride crowns him like the honor of the grain. Rabbi said a disciple of the sages who possesses haughtiness of spirit deserves excommunication, and if he does not possess it, he deserves excommunication. Arnam and B. Isaac said he should not possess it. Or part of it is it a trifling matter concerning which it is written, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Hezekiah said a man's prayer is not heard unless he makes his heart soft like flesh, as it is said, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another shall all flesh come to worship, etc. Arzara said concerning flesh it is written, and it is healed, but it is not written concerning man, and he is healed. Are Yohanan said the word for man, Adam indicates dust. Blood and gall the word for flesh base are indicates shame stench and worms some declare that instead of stench we should have the word sheol since its initial letter corresponds are as she said every man in whom his haughtiness of spirit will in the end be degraded as it is said Talmud, Maso to be for arising and for a scab and seth rising means nothing else than elevation as it is said upon all the high mountains and upon all the hills that are Nisayoth lifted up sephah scab means nothing else than attachment as it is said attach me I pray thee into one of the priest's offices that I may eat a morsel of bread or Joshua believe I said come and see how great are the lowly of spirit in the esteem of the holy one blessed be he since when the temple stood a man brought a burnt offering and received the reward of a burnt offering a meal offering and he received the reward of a meal offering but as for him whose mind is lowly scripture ascribes it to him as though he had offered Every one of the sacrifices, as it is said, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit more than that his prayer is not despised, as it continues a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise our Joshua believe I further said he who calculates his ways in this world will be worthy to behold the salvation of the Holy One. Blessed be he, as it is said to him that ordereth his way will I show the salvation of God. Read not we Sam that ordereth, but we sham who calculates his way, how must he? Warn her, etc. This is self-contradictory, you declare if he says to her in the presence of two, do not converse with that man. Consequently, conversation is the equivalent of seclusion. He then proceeds to teach and she converse with him. She is still permitted to her husband and permitted to partake of the heat offering. Consequently, conversation is nothing of a said. This is what he means if he said to her, do not converse and she converse with him, do not converse and she secluded herself with. Him that is nothing but if he said to her do not be secluded with him and she converse with him she is still permitted to her husband and permitted to partake of the heat offering should she have entered a private place with him and stayed a time sufficient for misconduct to have occurred she is forbidden to her husband and forbidden to partake of the heat offering if her husband died she performs the ceremony of Eliza why so let her also contract a Levi-rate marriage our Joseph said. Scripture declared and when she is departed out of his house she may go and be another man's wife she may marry another man but not her brother-in-law Abay said to him according to your argument Eliza also should be unnecessary he replied to him if the husband is living is not a get required so here likewise Eliza is necessary another version is our Joseph said the all merciful declared and when she is departed out of his house she may go and be another man's wife so as not to destroy his. House and you argue let her also contract a Levi-rate marriage Abbe said to him according to your argument she should never marry again so as not to destroy another man's house he replied to him Talmud, Masoda do we compel any other man to marry her as in the case of a brother-in-law where it is a duty another version is our Joseph replied the text calls the second husband another because he is not the equal of the first husband since the latter removes wickedness from his house by divorcing his wife whereas the other introduces wickedness into his house by marrying such a woman and you argue let her also contract a Levi-rate marriage Abbe said to him according to your argument if she does marry another man and he died without issue she may not contract a Levi-rate marriage since the text calls him another while living with the second husband she may have been of spotless reputation Rabbi said it is an fortiori argument if she is forbidden to her husband to whom she is otherwise allowed how much more so to her brother-in-law to whom she is normally forbidden Abbe said to him according to your argument if a high priest betrothed a widow and he died and had a brother who was an ordinary priest she may not marry him since if she becomes forbidden to one to whom she is otherwise allowed how much more so to one to whom she is normally forbidden you say if she becomes forbidden she is actually forbidden to one to whom she is allowed he is forbidden to marry her but ask rather as follows according to Rabbi's argument if the wife of a priest had been violated and he died and he had a brother who was disqualified she may not marry him since if she is forbidden to her husband to whom she is otherwise allowed how much more so to one to whom she is normally forbidden a woman who had been violated is permitted to a non-priest and the prohibition does not apply in his case mission of the following are prohibited to partake of it he offering she who says I am you and clean to thee when witnesses came and testified that she had Mel's conducted herself she who says I refuse to drink the water when the husband is unwilling to make her drink the water and when the husband cohabited with her on the journey Gamara Aram said the following did Arshis hey tell us and enlighten our eyes from our mission in the case of a suspected woman where the witnesses against her are in a far distant land the water does not prove her what is the reason because scripture states and be kept close and she be defiled and there be no witness against her this is when there is nobody who knows anything against her thus excluding the case when there are men who know something against her and he enlightened our eyes from our mission where it is taught when witnesses came and testified that she had misconducted herself when did the witnesses come if we say that they came before she drank the water she is an adulteress consequently they could only have come after she had drunk the water this is quite right if you say that the water does not prove her then all is clear but if you say that in such a circumstance the water does prove her the water may demonstrate retrospectively that the witnesses were false our Joseph said to him still I maintain that the water does prove her and answer that some merit she possesses causes the water to suspend its effect in what do our Joseph and our she's hate differ in the matter of her becoming ill according to the teaching of rabbi for we learn rabbi says merit in the woman causes the water of bitterness to suspend its effect and she never bears a child or thrives but she gradually grows ill and finally dies through that death our she's hate is of the opinion that both in the view of rabbi and of the rabbi she grows ill and our Joseph is of the opinion that in the view of rabbi she grows ill but in the view of the rabbi she does not our shimai be as she raised an objection our Simeon says Merit does not cause the water of bitterness to suspend its effect and if you say that merit does cause the water of bitterness to suspend its effect you discredit the water in the case of all the women who drink it and defame the pure woman who drank it since people will say they were unclean only their merit caused the water to suspend its effect upon them but if it is so then through the teaching where the witnesses against her are in a far distant land you likewise defame the pure women who drank and people will say they were unclean only the witnesses against them are in a far distant land the reply to our Shimei is you quote our Simeon but as our Simeon holds that merit does not cause the water to suspend its effect he similarly holds that the existence of witnesses does not cause it to suspend its effect Rab raised an objection the following have their meal offerings destroyed Talmud Maso to Bishi who says I am unclean and when witnesses came and testified that she had Misconducted herself when did the witnesses come if I say that they came before the offering was hallowed then it can become not holy consequently they could only have come after it had been hallowed this is quite right if you say that the water proves her consequently she is qualified to have the flower hallowed and offered on her behalf and since it was hallowed from the commencement it is certainly holy and for that reason her meal offering is destroyed but if you say that the water does not prove her it becomes evident retrospectively that the hallowing was from the commencement in error and therefore the flower becomes not holy Rab Judah of Discarda said suppose that after the hallowing she committed adultery within the temple precinct since it was hallowed from the commencement it is certainly holy our measure she objected but do not the priestly novitiates accompany her Rab Judah meant she committed adultery with one of these novitiates or as she said suppose it was Necessary for her to relieve herself, do you think that the priestly novitiates hang on to her head? Dear our Papa said the matter is certainly as we originally explained, and when you argue the offering becomes not holy, the answer is that the rule by which the offering is destroyed is a decree of the rabbis, lest it should be said
Generally known there is a teaching in accord with the view of Arshi's hate but not for the same reason as his visit she be clean this indicates there are no witnesses against her in the far distant land and if she be clean the addition of an indicates it is not merit that causes the water to suspend its effect and if she be clean meaning that she has escaped the effect of the water because she is in fact clean and not because women who spin by moonlight were discussing her now as for our Simeon agreed that he does not expound the conjunction and still there is a case Talmud, Masoda where there are witnesses against her in a far distant land that is uncommon mission how does the husband deal with her he brings her to the court of justice in the place where he resides and they assign to him two disciples of the sages lest he cohabit with her on the journey our Judah says her husband is trusted with her Gemara two disciples of the sages and he make three is this. To say that it supports the teaching of Rav for Rav Judah said in the name of Rav the rabbis did not teach that a woman may be in the company of two men except in a city but on a journey there must be three in case one of them should have need to relieve himself and consequently one of them will be left alone with the possibility of immorality no here the reason is that they should be witnesses against him but the fact that disciples of the sages are necessary and not ordinary men does. This not support another teaching of Rav for Rav Judah said in the name of Rav the rabbis did not teach that a woman may be in the company of two men except in the case of pure men but in the case of dissolute men not even with ten it once happened that ten men carried a live woman out of the city in a coffin to violate her no here the reason is that they will know to warn him our Judah says her husband etc it has been taught our Judah says by a fortiori reasoning it is deduced today. Husband is trusted if a husband is trusted in the matter of his wife during menstruation where the penalty is excision how much more so in the matter of his wife under suspicion in connection with which there is a mere prohibition and how do the rabbis meet this argument the same reasoning establishes their view in the case of a wife during menstruation where the penalty is excision since it is so stringent the husband is trusted but in the case of a wife under suspicion where cohabitation is a mere prohibition since there is no stringent penalty for him he is not trusted but does Arjuna derive his view from a fortiori reasoning he surely derives it from a scriptural text for it has been taught then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest according to the Torah it is the husband who has to bring his wife but said the sages they assign to him two disciples of the sages lest he cohabit with her on the journey our Jose says by a fortiori reasoning it is deduced. That a husband is trusted with her if a husband is trusted in the matter of his wife during menstruation where the penalty is excision how much more so in the matter of his wife while under suspicion in connection with which there is a mere prohibition the sages replied to him no if you argue that he may be trusted in the case of his wife during menstruation to whom he will have a right under recovery will you argue so in the case of his wife under suspicion when he may never have a right to her it further states stolen waters are sweet etc our Judah says according to the Torah it is the husband who has to bring his wife as it is said then shall the man bring his wife at first he argued his view to the sages by a fortiori reasoning but when they refuted it he then quoted the text to them but our Judah's opinion is the same as that of the first tenor there is a point of difference between them is a continuation but said the rabbis etc mission they bring her up to the Great court of justice which is in Jerusalem and the judges solemnly charge her in the same way that they charge witnesses in capital cases and say to her my daughter wine does much frivolity does much youth does much bad neighbors do much do it for the sake of his great name which is written in holiness so that it may not be obliterated by the water and they relate to her matters which neither she nor all the family of her father's house is worthy to hear if she said I have misconducted myself she gives acquittance for her marriage settlement and departs but if she says I am pure they bring her up to the east gate which is by the entrance of Nicanor's gate where they give suspected women the water to drink purify women after childbirth and purify lepers a priest seizes her garments if they are rent they are rent and if they become unstitched they are unstitched until he uncovers her bosom and he undoes her hair our Judah says if her bosom was beautiful he does not uncover it and if her hair was beautiful he does not undo it if she was clothed in white he clothes her in black if she wore golden ornaments Talmud, Maso to be and necklaces earrings and finger rings they remove them from her in order to make her repulsive after that the priest takes a common rope and binds it over her breast whoever wishes to look upon her comes to look with the exception of her male and female slaves because her heart is made to find through them all women are permitted to look upon her as it is said that all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness Gemara whence is this Arhai began to said in the name of our Jose Behanan from the analogous use of the word law it is written here and the priest shall execute upon her all this law and elsewhere it is written according to the tenor of the law which they shall teach thee as in this latter case it is the court of seventy one so also in the former it is the court of seventy one and the judges solemnly charge her etc. I quote in contradiction just as they solemnly charge her not to drink so they solemnly charge her to drink saying to her my daughter if the matter is clear to thee that thou art pure rely upon that purity and drink because the water of bitterness is only like dry powder which is placed upon living flesh if there is a wound it penetrates and goes through the skin and if there is no wound it has no effect there is no contradiction here they charge her not to drink before the writing. On the scroll is blotted out and there they charge her to drink after it has been blotted out and say to her etc. Our rabbis have taught he tells her narratives and incidents which occurred in the early writings for instance which wise men have told and have not hid it from their fathers namely Judah confessed and was not ashamed what was his and he inherited the life of the world to come Reuben confessed and was not ashamed what was his and he inherited the world to come and what was there. Reward what was their reward you ask it was as we have just mentioned but the meaning is what was their reward in this world unto them alone the land was given and no stranger passed among them it is quite right with Judah we find that he confessed for it is written and Judah acknowledged them and said she is more righteous than I once however is it that Reuben confessed as our Samuel be he said in the name of our Yohanan what means that which is written let Reuben live and not die and this for Judah all the years that the Israelites were in the wilderness Judah's bones kept turning in his coffin until Moses arose and begged mercy for him he said before him Lord of the universe who caused Reuben to confess it was Judah as it is stated and this for Judah immediately after Moses prayed to your Lord the voice of Judah each limb entered its socket but the angels would not permit him to enter the heavenly academy so Moses prayed and bring him in unto his people he was unable to discuss the theme which the rabbis were then debating so Moses prayed with his hands let him contend for himself he was still not able to secure a decision in accordance with the traditional practice so Moses prayed be and help against his adversaries it is quite right that Judah confessed so that Tamar should not be burnt but why did Reuben confess surely our hate has declared consider him shameless who publicly specifies his sins Reuben confessed so that his brothers should not be suspected of his offense if she said I have misconducted myself etc is it to be concluded from this that acquittance is written out of a said read in our mission the document of the marriage settlement is torn Rabba replied to him but the mission mentions acquittance but said Rabba we deal here with places where they do not write a document for a marriage settlement but if she says I am pure they bring her up to the east gate they bring her up Talmud, Masoda, but she is already. There they lead her up and lead her down for the purpose of wearying her for it has been taught our Simeon B. Eliezer says the court causes the witnesses to be taken from place to place that their mind may become confused and they retract their evidence if false where they give suspected women the water to drink etc. This is quite right in the case of suspected women because it is written and the priest shall set the woman before the Lord likewise is it with lepers because it is written and the priest that cleanseth him shall set the man before the Lord but why woman after childbirth is it to say because they come to stand by their offerings for it has been taught a person's offering is not sacrificed until he stands by it if so it should also apply to men and women with a running issue it does indeed also apply to them and the tenor in the mission only specifies one of them our rabbis have taught they do not give two suspected women the water to drink at the same time so that the heart of one should not become defined because of the other our Judah says it is not from this reason but scripture declares the priest shall cause her to swear her alone and for the first tana it is likewise written her the first tana is our Simeon who expounds the reason of scriptural text and here he states the reason what is the meaning of her, her alone so that the heart of one should not become defined because of the other what difference is there then between them it difference between them is the case of a woman who is
bosom was beautiful, etc. Is this to say that Arjuna is afraid of impure thoughts being aroused and the rabbis do not fear this? Behold, we have heard the opposite opinion of them, for it has been taught in the case of a man who is to be stoned, they cover him with one piece of cloth in front, and in the case of a woman with two pieces, one in front and one behind, because the whole of her is considered nudity. This is a statement of Arjuna, but the sages say a man is stoned naked, but a woman is not. Stoned naked, Rabbi answered, What is the reason here, lest she go forth from the court innocent and the priestly novitiates become inflamed through her, whereas in the other case she is stoned, should you reply that it may cause them to be inflamed by another woman? Rabbi declared, We have learned a tradition that the evil impulse only bears sway over what a person's eyes see. Rabbi asked, Is it then that Arjuna contradicts himself and the rabbis do not contradict themselves, but said, Rabbi Arjuna does not contradict himself as we have just explained Talmud, Maso to be and the rabbis likewise do not contradict themselves. What is the reason here, because it is written that all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness in the other case of stoning, however, there cannot be a severe warning than that should you or you let both be inflicted upon her. Our nom and said in the name of Rabbi Abba, the text states, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, choose for him or her alike. Death is this to say that Mishnaic teachers disagree with respect to this teaching of Arnaman. No, everybody is in agreement with Arnaman's teaching, but they differ here on the following point. The rabbis hold that disgrace is worse than physical pain, and Arjuna holds that physical pain is worse than disgrace if she was clothed in white, etc. It has been taught if black garments became her, they clothe her in mean garments if she wore golden ornaments, etc. This is obvious since she has to be made repulsive. How much more is it necessary to do this? What you might have thought is that with these ornaments upon her, the disgrace would be greater as the proverb declares strip naked yet wearing shoes. Therefore, we are taught that all ornaments must be removed after that the priest takes a common rope, etc. Our Abba asked, Are who not does the absence of a common rope invalidate the ceremony of a suspected woman if the purpose is that her garments should not slip down from her than a small? Belt would also suffice, or is it perhaps as the master said she girded herself with a belt to adorn herself for him? Therefore, the priest takes a common rope and binds it over her breast, and consequently, its absence does invalidate the ceremony. He replied, You have the reason stated after that he takes a common rope and binds it over her breast so that her garments should not slip down from her. Whoever wishes to look upon her comes to look, etc. This is self contradictory. You say, Whoever wishes to look upon her comes to look. Consequently, it makes no difference whether they be men or women, and it is taught all women are permitted to look upon her, hence women are permitted, but men are not. Abbe answered, Explain it as referring to women. Rabbi said to him, But the mission states, Whoever wishes to look upon her comes to look, but said, Rabbi, the meaning is, Whoever wishes to look upon her comes to look. It makes no difference whether they be men or women, but women are obliged to. Look upon her as it is said that all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness mission in the measure with which a man measures it is meted out to him she adorned herself for a transgression the holy one blessed be he made her repulsive she exposed herself for a transgression the holy one blessed be he held her up for exposure she began the transgression with the thigh and afterwards with the womb therefore she is punished first in the thigh and afterwards in the womb nor does all the body escape to our Joseph said although the measure has ceased the principle in the measure has not ceased for our Joseph said and similarly taught our high from the day the temple was destroyed although the Sanhedrin ceased to function the four modes of execution did not cease but they did cease the meaning is the judgment of the four modes of execution did not cease he who would have been condemned to stoning either falls from a roof and dies or a wild beast tramples him to death he who would have been condemned to burning either falls into a fire or a serpent stings him he who would have been condemned to decapitation is either handed over to the Gentile government or robbers attack him he who would have been condemned to strangulation either drowns in a river or dies of a quincy it has been taught rabbi used to say whence is it that in the measure with which a man measures it is meted out to him as it is said by measure in sending her away thou dost contend with her eye have your only se whence is it to include a tricab and half a tricab a cab and half a cab a quarter an eighth a sixteenth and a thirty second part of a cab there is a text to state for all the armor of the armed man in the tumult and whence is it that every pair reckons together into a great sum there is a text to state laying one thing to another to find out the account thus we find in the case of a suspected woman that in the measure with which she measured it was meted out to her she stood at the entrance of her house to display herself to the man therefore a priest sets her by the Nicanor gate and displays her disgrace to all she wound a beautiful scarf about her head for him therefore a priest removes her head here and places it under her feet she beautified her face for him therefore Talmud, Masoda her face is made to turn green in color she painted her eyes for him therefore her eyes protrude she plaited her hair for him therefore a priest undoes her hair she signaled to him with her finger therefore her fingernails fall off she girded herself with a belt for him therefore a priest takes a common rope and ties it above her breast she thrust her thigh towards him therefore her thigh falls she received him upon her body therefore her womb swells she gave him the world's dainties to eat therefore her offering consisted of animals fodder she gave him costly wine to drink in costly goblets therefore a priest gives her water of bitterness to drink in a Pots her she acted in secret and he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High directed his face against her to punish her as it is said the eye also of the adulterer wait for the twilight saying no I shall see me another version is she acted in secret the all present proclaims it in public as it is said though his hatred cover itself with guile his wickedness shall be openly shewed before the congregation since the teaching that even the slightest sin is punished is derived from laying one thing to another to find out the account why do I require for all the armor of the armed man in the tumult that the punishment is according to measure but since that is derived from for all the armor of the armed man in the tumult why do I require by measure in sending her away thou dost contend with her it is in accord with the teaching of our high papa for our high papa said the holy one blessed be he does not exact punishment of a nation until the time of its Banishment into exile as it is said by measure in sending her away etc. But it is not so for Rabbah has said why are three cups mentioned in connection with Egypt one which she drank in the days of Moses one which she drank in the days of Pharaoh and one which she is destined to drink with her allies should you reply that they passed away and these are different Egyptians behold it has been taught our Judah said Maniam and an Egyptian proselyte was a colleague of mine among the disciples of our Akiba and Maniam and the Egyptian proselyte told me I am an Egyptian of the first generation and I married an Egyptian woman of the first generation I will marry my son to an Egyptian woman of the second generation so that my grandson may be permitted to enter the community but if the above statement was made it was made as follows our Hina Papa said the Holy One blessed be he does not exact punishment of a king until the time of his banishment into exile as it is said by measure in sending her away, etc. Omimar um, applied this teaching of our high papa to the following what means the text for I the Lord change not therefore ye o sons of Jacob are not consumed I the Lord change not I have not smitten a people and repeated it therefore ye o sons of Jacob are not consumed that is what is written I will spend mine arrows upon them mine arrows will be spent but the sons of Jacob will not cease or Hamunah said the Holy One blessed be he does not exact punishment of a man until his measure of guilt is filled as it is said in the fullness of his sufficiency he shall be in straits etc. Our high papa expounded what means the text rejoice in the Lord O ye righteous praise is comely for the upright red not praises is wa comely but praises new habitation this alludes to Moses and David over whose works in erecting a sanctuary their enemies had no power of the temple planned by David it is written her gates are sunk in the ground with regard to Moses the Master said after the first temple was erected the tent of meeting was stored away its boards hooks bars pillars and sockets where were they stored are his said in the name of Abami beneath the crypts of the temple our rabbis have taught the suspected woman set her eyes on one who was not proper for her what she sought was not given to her and what she possessed was taken from her because whoever sets his eyes on that which is not his is not granted what he seeks and what he possesses is taken from him Talmud, Maso to be we thus find it with the primeval serpent in the garden of Eden which set its eyes on that which was not proper for it what it sought was not granted to it and what it
Priest informs her of his edit affects her belly first and then the thigh so as not to discredit the water of bitterness. Mishnah Samson went after the desire of his eyes, therefore the Philistines put out his eyes as it is said, and the Philistines laid hold on him and put out his eyes. Absalom glory in his hair, therefore he was hanged by his hair, and because he cohabited with the ten concubines of his father, therefore he was stabbed with ten lances as it is said, and ten young men that bear. Joab's armor compassed about, and because he stole three hearts, the heart of his father, the heart of the court of justice, and the heart of Israel, as it is said, so Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel, therefore three darts were thrust through him, as it is said, and he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom. It is the same in connection with the good Miriam waited a short while for Moses, as it is said, and his sister stood afar off, therefore Israel was delayed for her seven days in the wilderness, as it is said, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. Joseph earned merit by burying his father, and there was none among his brothers greater than he, as it is said, and Joseph went up to bury his father, etc., and there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, whom have we greater than Joseph, since none other than Moses occupied himself with his burial. Moses earned merit through the bones of Joseph, and there was none in Israel. Greater than he as it is said, and Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, whom have we greater than Moses, since none other than the omnipresent occupied himself with his burial, as it is said, and he buried him in the valley. Not only concerning Moses did they say this, but concerning all the righteous, as it is said, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Tomorrow our rabbis have taught Samson rebelled against God through his eyes, as it is said, and Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, because she is pleasing in my eyes. Therefore the Philistines put out his eyes, as it is said, and the Philistines laid hold on him and put out his eyes, but it is not so, for behold, it is written, but his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord when he went to choose a wife, he nevertheless followed his own inclinations. It has been taught, Rabbi says, the beginning of his Samson's degeneration occurred in Gaza, therefore he received his. Punishment in Gaza the beginning of his Samson's degeneration was in Gaza as it is written and Samson went to Gaza and saw there an harlot etc. Therefore he received his punishment in Gaza as it is written and they brought him down to Gaza but behold it is written and Samson went down to Tim and nevertheless the beginning of his degeneration occurred in Gaza and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sarat whose name was Delilah it has been taught Rabbi says if her name had not been called Delilah she was fit that it should be so called she weakened his strength she weakened his heart she weakened his actions she weakened his strength as it is written and his strength went from him she weakened his heart as it is written and when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart she weakened his actions since the Shechina departed from him as it is written but he was not that the Lord had departed from him and when Delilah saw that he had told her all his Heart, how did she know this? Arhanin said in the name of Rab, words of truth are recognizable. Abbe said she knew that this righteous man would not utter the divine name in vain when he exclaimed, I have been a Nazi right unto God. She said, Now he has certainly spoken the truth, and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him what means and urged him. Or Isaac of the school of Rm, I said at the time of the consummation, she detached herself from him. Now therefore beware I. Pray thee and drink no wine nor strong drink and eat not any unclean thing. What means any unclean thing? Furthermore, had she Samson's mother up to then eaten unclean things? Or Isaac of the school of Rm, I said she had hitherto eaten things forbidden to a Nazi right, but God clave the hollow place that is in Lehi. Or Isaac of the school of Rm, I said he Samson lusted for what was unclean, therefore his life was made dependent upon an unclean thing, and the spirit of the Lord began, etc. Hananah said Jacob's prophecy became fulfilled as it is written Dan shall be a serpent in the way to move him in Mahanadan or Isaac of the school of Rmi said this teaches that the Sheshanah kept ringing in front of him like a bell it is written here to move him Lafamo in Mahanadan and it is written elsewhere a golden bell Paman and a pomegranate between Zara and Eshtal R.C. said Zara and Eshtal are two great mountains and Samson uprooted them and ground one against the other. And he shall begin to save Israel Arhamah Hananah said Talmud, Masoda of the oath of Abimelech became void as it is written that thou wilt not deal falsely with me nor with my son nor with my son's son and the child grew and the Lord blessed him wherewith did he bless him Rab Judah said in the name of Rab with his physique which was like that of other men but his manly strength was like a fast flowing stream and Samson called unto the Lord and said O Lord God remember me I pray the end. Strengthen me, I pray thee, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Rab said, Samson spoke before the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe. Remember, on my behalf, the twenty years I judged Israel, and never did I order anyone to carry my staff from one place to another. And Samson went and caught three hundred foxes. Why, just foxes are able to be Said in the name of Arhai, Abba Samson declared, Let the animal come, which turns backward and exact punishment of the Philistines who went back on their oath. It has been taught. Our Simeon the pious said, The width between Samson's shoulders was sixty cubits, as it is said. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and laid hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and plucked them apart and all and put them upon his shoulders. And there is a tradition that the gates of Gaza were not less than sixty cubits in width. And he did grind in the prison house. Or Yohanan said, Grind means. Nothing else than sexual transgression, and thus it is stated. Then let my wife grind unto another. It teaches that everyone brought his wife to him to the prison that she might bear a child by him who would be as strong as he was. Our Papa said that is what the proverb tells. Before the wine drinker said wine, before a pluffman a basket of roots. Or Yohanan also said whoever is faithless, his wife is faithless to him. As it is said, if mine heart have been enticed unto a woman, and I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, and it continues, then let my wife grind unto another, and let others bow down upon her. That is what the proverb tells. He among the full-grown pumpkins, and his wife among the young ones. Or Yohanan also said Samson judged Israel in the same manner as their father in heaven. As it is said, Dan shall judge his people as one. Or Yohanan also said Samson was called by the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he. As it is said, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. According to this argument. His name may not be erased. The intention is that his name was typical of the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he is the Holy One. Blessed be he shields the whole world. So Samson shielded Israel during his generation. Or Yohanan also said Balaam was lame in one leg, as it is said, and he went to five. Samson was lame in both legs, as it is said, and adder in the path. Our rabbis have taught five were created after the likeness of him who is above, and all of them incurred punishment on account of it. Feature which distinguished them Samson in his strength, Saul in his neck, Absalom in his hair, Zedekiah in his eyes, and Asa in his feet. Samson was punished in his strength, as it is written, and his strength went from him. Saul was punished in his neck, as it is written, Saul took his sword and fell upon it. Absalom was punished in his hair, as we shall have occasion to explain later. Zedekiah was punished in his eyes, as it is written, they put out the eyes of Zedekiah, Asa was punished in his feet, as it is written, but in the time of his old age he was diseased in his feet, and Rab Judah said in the name of Rab Padagra, God attacked him, Marzitra, son of Arnam, and asked Arnaman what is Padagra like, he answered like a needle in living flesh, how did he know this, some say he suffered from it himself, others say that he heard it from his teacher, and others declare the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will shoot them, his covenant Rab expounded, why was Asa punished? Because he imposed forced labor upon the disciples of the sages, as it is said, and King Asa made a proclamation unto all Judah, none was exempted, what means none was exempted, Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, even the bridegroom from his chamber and the bride from her canopy, it is written, and Samson went down to Tim, and it is written, behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Tim, our Eliezer said, since in the case of Samson he was disgraced, there it is written, in connection with it went down, but in the case of Judah, since he was exalted in it, there is written in connection with it, goeth up our Samuel Binaman. He said, There are two places named Timnah. One was reached by going down, and the other by going up. Our Papa said, There is only one place named Timnah who came to it from one direction, had to descend, and from another direction, had to ascend. As
The God of the universe thank praise and bless him who spake and the world came into being when Judah saw her he thought her to be an harlot for she had covered her face because she had covered her face he thought her to be an harlot our Eliezer said she had covered her face in her father-in-law's house for our Samuel be he said in the name of our Jonathan every daughter-in-law who is modest in her father-in-law's house merits that kings and prophets should issue from her whence is this from? Tamar prophets issued from her as it is written the vision of Isaiah the son of Amos and kings issued from her through David and our Levi has said this is a tradition in our possession from our fathers that Amos and Amaziah were brothers when she was brought forth instead of Mus the verb should have been with Mazith our Eliezer said the verb in the text implies that after her proofs were found Samuel came and removed them and Gabriel came and restored them that is what is written for the chief musician the silent dove of them that are afar off of David Mike Tamar Yohanan said at the time when her proofs were removed she became like a silent dove of David Mike that means there issued from her David who was meek mock and perfect Tam to all another explanation of Mike is his wound Mako was whole Tam since he was born already circumcised another explanation of Mike is just as in his youth before he became king he made himself small in the presence of Anyone greater than himself to study Torah so was he the same in his greatness she sent to her father-in-law saying by the man whose these are am I with child she ought to have told the messenger plainly our zitrabi Tobia said in the name of Rab another version is our Hamabi business said in the name of our Simeon the pious and still another version is our Yohanan said in the name of our Simeon be better for a man to cast himself into a fiery furnace rather than shame his fellow in public whence. Is this from Tamar discerned I pray thee our Hamabi Hanan said with the word discerned Judah made an announcement to his father and with the word discerned an announcement was made to him with the word discerned he made an announcement discerned now whether it be thy son's coat or not and with the word discerned an announcement was made to him discerned I pray thee whose are these the word na I pray thee is nothing else than an expression of request she said to him I beg of thee discern the face of thy Creator and hide not thine eyes from me and Judah acknowledged them and said she is more righteous than I that is what our Hanin be business said in the name of our Simeon the pious Joseph who sanctified the heavenly name in private merited that one letter should be added to him from the name of the Holy One blessed be he as it is written he appointed it in Joseph for a testimony Judah however who sanctified the heavenly name in public merited that the whole of his name should be called after the name of the Holy One blessed be he when he confessed and said she is more righteous than I a bath call issued forth and proclaimed thou didst rescue Tamar and her two sons from the fire by thy life I will rescue through thy merit three of thy descendants from the fire who are the Hanani missile and Azariah she is more righteous than I how did he know this a bath call issued forth and proclaimed from me came forth secrets and he knew her again no more Samuel the elder father in law our Samuel be. Am I said in the name of our Samuel be am I having once known her he did not separate from her again it is written here and he knew her again no more Yosef and elsewhere it is written with a great voice increasing Yosef Absalom glory in his hair etc our rabbis have taught Absalom rebelled against his father through his hair as it is said there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty and when he pulled his head now it was at every year's end that he pulled it because the hair was heavy on him therefore he pulled it he weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight it has been taught that the king's weight was the weight with which the men of Tiberias and Sephori's weigh therefore he was hanged by his hair as it is said and Absalom chanced to meet the servants of David and Absalom rode upon his mule and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak and his head caught hold of the oak and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth and the mule that was under him went on he took a sword and wished to cut himself loose but it was taught in the school of our Ishmael at that moment Sheol was split asunder beneath him and the king was much moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept and as he went thus he said O my son Absalom my son my son Absalom would God I had died for thee O Absalom my son my son and the king covered his face and the king cried with a loud voice O my son Absalom O Absalom my son my son why is my son repeated eight times seven to raise him from the seven divisions of Gehinnom and as for the last some say to unite his severed head to his body and others say to bring him into the world to come now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up what means had taken Rush said he had made a bad purchase for himself the pillar which is in the king's tale etc our Hanabi Papa said in the deep plan of the king of the universe Talmud Masoda as it is written I will Raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. Similarly, it is stated so he sent him Joseph out of the vale of Hebron. Our Hannah the Papa said the meaning is it was through the deep plan of that righteous man Abraham who had been buried in Hebron, as it is written, No of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. For he said, I have no son, had he then no sons. Behold, it is written, and unto Absalom there were born three sons and one daughter. Our Isaac be of Dimi said. His meaning was that he had no son fit for the kingship. Our Hisda said there is a tradition that whoever burns his neighbor's produce will not leave a son to succeed him. And he Absalom had burnt the produce of Job, as it is written, therefore he said unto his servant, See, Job's field is near mine, and he hath barley there go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servant set the field on fire. It is the same in connection with the good Miriam, etc. Is this like the other cases mentioned there? She Waited a short while for Moses here the Israelites waited for her seven days have they said read that in connection with the good the principle of measure for measure does not apply Rabbah said to him but the Mishnah teaches it is the same in connection with the good but said Rabbah the Mishnah must be understood thus it is the same in connection with the good that there is the same measure nevertheless the measure in the case of the good is greater than the measure in the case of punishment and his sister stood afar off our Isaac said the whole of this verse is spoken with reference to the Shechinah and stood as it is written and the Lord came and stood etc his sister as it is written say unto wisdom thou art my sister afar off as it is written the Lord appeared from afar unto me to know as it is written for the Lord is a God of knowledge what as it is written what doth the Lord require of thee done as it is written surely the Lord God will do nothing to him as it is written and called a Lord is peace now there arose a new king etc. Rab and Samuel differ in their interpretation one said that he was really new while the other said that his decrees were made new he who said that he was really new did so because it is written new and he who said that his decrees were made new did so because it is not stated that the former king died and he reigned in his stead who knew not Joseph he was like one who did not know Joseph at all and he said unto his people behold it. People of the children of Israel Atan taught he Pharaoh originated the plan first and therefore was punished first he originated the plan first as it is written and he said unto his people therefore he was punished first as it is written upon thee and upon that people and upon all thy servants come let us deal wisely with him it should have been with them our Hamabi Hanan said Pharaoh men come and let us out the savior of Israel with what shall we afflict them if we afflict them. With fire it is written for behold the Lord will come with fire and it continues for by fire will the Lord plead etc. If we afflict them with the sword it is written and by his sword with all flesh but come and let us afflict them with water because the Holy One blessed be he has already sworn that he will not bring a flood upon the world as it is said for this is as the waters of Noah unto me etc. They were unaware however that he would not bring a flood upon the whole world but upon one people he would bring it or alternatively he would not bring the flood but they would go and fall into it thus it says and the Egyptians fled towards it this is what our Eliezer said what means that which is written in the thing wherein they say to dealt proudly against them in the pot in which they cooked where they cooked whence is it learned that say means cooking because it is written and Jacob saw W A S potage our high B Abba said in the name of our Samai there were three in that. Plan Bis Balam Job and Jethro Balam who devised it was slain Job who silently acquiesced was afflicted with sufferings Jethro who fled merited that his descendants should sit in the chamber of hewn stone as it is said and the families of scribes which dwelt at Job as the Tyrathites the Shimithites the Sukkotites these are the Kenites that came of Hamath the father of the house of Rechab and it is written and the children of the Kenite Moses father-in-law etc and fight against us and get them up out of the land it should have read and we will get us up our Abu Bikahana said it is like a man who curses himself and hangs the curse upon somebody else therefore they did set over him taskmasters it should have read over them it was taught in the school of our Eliezer B. Simeon it indicates that they brought a
with hard service in mortar and in brick etc. Rabba said at first it was in mortar and in brick but finally it was in all manner of service in the field all their service wherein they made them serve with rigor. Our Samuel bin Amani said in the name of Arjana and they changed men's work for the women and the women's work for the men and even he who explained Perak above as meaning with tender mouth admits that here it means with rigorous work RRA expounded as the reward for the righteous. Women who lived in that generation were the Israelites delivered from Egypt when they went to draw water the Holy One blessed be he arranged that small fishes should enter their pitchers which they drew up half full of water and half full of fishes they then set two pots on the fire one for hot water and the other for the fish which they carried to their husbands in the field and washed anointed fed gave them to drink and had intercourse with them among the sheepfolds as it is said when you lie. Among the sheepfolds etc as a reward for when you lie among the sheepfolds the Israelites merited the spoliation of the Egyptians as it is said as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her pinions with yellow gold after the women had conceived they returned to their homes and when the time of childbirth arrived they went and were delivered in the field beneath the apple tree as it is said under the apple tree I caused thee to come forth from thy mother's womb etc the Holy One blessed. Be he sent down someone from the high heavens who washed and straightened the limbs of the babes in the same manner that a midwife straightens the limbs of a child as it is said and as for thy nativity in the day thou wast born thy navel was not cut neither wast thou washed in water to cleanse thee he also provided for them two cakes one of oil and one of honey as it is said and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil etc when the Egyptians noticed them they went to kill them but a miracle occurred on their behalf so that they were swallowed in the ground and the Egyptians brought oxen and plowed over them as it is said the plowers plowed upon my back after they had departed the Israelite women with their babes broke through the earth and came forth like the herbage of the field as it is said I caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field and when the babes had grown up they came in flocks to their homes as it is said and thou didst increase and wax great. And it's come with ornaments red, not with ornaments baadiatim, but in flocks beadra there. At the time the Holy One blessed be he revealed himself by the Red Sea, they recognized him first, as it is said, This is my God, and I will praise him. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, etc. Rab and Samuel differ in their interpretation. One said they were mother and daughter, and the other said they were daughter-in-law and mother-in-law, according to him who declared they were mother and daughter, they were Joshua and Miriam, and according to him who declared they were daughter-in-law and mother-in-law, they were Joshua and Elisheba. There is a teaching in agreement with him who said they were mother and daughter, for it has been taught Shifra is Joshua, and why was her name called Shifra? Because she straightened Meshapar the limbs of the babe. Another explanation of Shifra is that the Israelites were fruitful Shepherd and multiplied in her days Puyas. Miriam and why was her name called Puah because she cried out Puah to the child and brought it forth another explanation of Puah is that she used to cry out through the Holy Spirit and say my mother will bear a son who will be the savior of Israel and he said when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women etc what means of name Arhin and said he entrusted them with an important sign and told them that when a woman bends to deliver a child her thighs grow cold like stones have an Another explains the word of name in accordance with what is written that I went down to the potter's house and behold he wrought his work on the wheels as in the case of the potter there is a thigh on one side a thigh on the other side and the wooden block in between so also with a woman there is a thigh on one side a thigh on the other side and the child in between if it be a son then you shall kill him Arhin said he entrusted them with an important sign as if it is a son his faces. Turned downward, and if a daughter her face is turned upward, but the midwives feared God and did not, as the king of Egypt spoke to them instead of Allah, to them we should have had Lahan our Jose, son of our Hanada, said it teaches that he solicited them for immoral intercourse, but they refused to yield, but saved the men children alive. Atan had taught not only did they not put them to death, but they supplied them with water and food, and the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Behold, the Hebrew women are not. As the Egyptian women, etc., what means Hayath, if it is to say they were actually midwives, do you infer that a midwife does not require another midwife to deliver her child, but the meaning is they said to him, as people are compared to an animal, Hey, Judah is called the lion's whelp of Dan, it is said, Dan shall be a serpent, Naphtali is called the hind, let loose Issachar, strong as Joseph, a firstling bullet, Benjamin, a wolf, and Rabbi Neth of those sons of Jacob were a comparison with. An animal is written in connection with them, it is written, but in the instances where such a comparison is not written, there is a text, What was thy mother a lion as she couched among lions, etc.? And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. Rab and Samuel differ in their interpretation. One said they are the priestly and Levitical houses, and the other said they are the royal houses. One who says they are the priestly and Levitical houses, Aaron and Moses, and one who says they are the royal houses, for also David descended from Miriam, as it is written, and Ashba died, and Caleb took unto him Ephrath, which bare him her, and it is written, Now David was the son of that Ephrath, etc., and Caleb the son of Hezron begot children of Ashba, his wife, and of Jeriah, and these were her sons, Shur and Shobab, and Arden the son of Hezron, he was the son of Jephunneh, it means that he was the son who turned Penah from the council of the spies, still he was the son of Kenez, as it is written, and Othniel, the son of Kenez, Caleb's younger brother, took it. Rabbah said he was the stepson of Kenez Talmud. Masoda, there is also evidence for this, since it is written, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizite, conclude therefore that Ashba is identical with Miriam, and why was her name called Ashba? Because all men forsook her as at first begot, but he was married to her, Aryohan, and said, Whoever marries a woman for the name of heaven, the text describes it. To him, as though he had begotten her, Jeriot, she was so named because her face was like curtains, and these were her sons, Red, not Bay, not her sons, but Bo, not her builders. Sure, he was so called because he set himself right. Yishur, Shobab, he was so called because he turned his inclination aside. Shabab and Arden, he was so called because he disciplined Reda, his inclination. Others say because his face was like a rosewood, and Asher, the father of Tekoa, had two wives. Hela and Nara Asher is identical with Caleb and why was his name called Asher because his face was black and Hushir through his fast the father he became a father to her to go he fixed Taka his heart on his father in heaven had two wives this means Miriam became like two wives Hela and Nara she was not both Hela and Nara but at first she was Hela an invalid and finally Nara a young girl and the sons of Hela were Zerath Zohar and Ethan Zerath Miriam was so called because she became the rivals era of her contemporaries in beauty Zohar because her face was beautiful like the noon Zohar Ethan because whoever saw her took a present Ethan to his wife and Pharaoh charged all his people are Jose son of Arhanan said he imposed the same decree upon his own people are Jose son of Arhanan also said he made three decrees first if it be a son then ye shall kill him then every son that is born ye shall cast into the river and finally he Imposed the same decree upon his own people, and there went a man of the house of Levi. Where did he go? Our Judah Bezabina said that he went in the council of his daughter Atan at Totem Rome was the greatest man of his generation when he saw that the wicked Pharaoh had decreed every son that is born ye shall cast into the river. He said in vain do we labor. He arose and divorced his wife. All the Israelites thereupon arose and divorced their wives. His daughter said to him, Father, thy decree is more severe than Pharaoh's because Pharaoh decreed only against the males, whereas thou hast decreed against the males and females. Pharaoh only decreed concerning this world, whereas thou hast decreed concerning this world and the world to come. In the case of the wicked Pharaoh, there is a doubt whether his decree will be fulfilled or not, whereas in thy case, though thou art righteous, it is certain that thy decree will be fulfilled, as it is said, thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be. Established unto thee, he arose and took his wife back, and they all arose and took their wives back, and took to wife it should have read, and took back our Judah Bezabina said he acted towards her as though it had been the first marriage. He seated her in a palanquin, Aaron and Miriam danced before her, and the ministering angels proclaimed the joyful mother of children, a daughter of Levi. How is this possible? She was one hundred and thirty years old, and he calls her a daughter for our Hamabi Hanan said. This refers to Joshua, whose conception occurred during the journey to Egypt, and her birth between the walls, as it is said,
inside and the pitch outside so that that righteous child should not smell the bad odor and she put the child therein and laid it in the reed suf r Eliezer said in the red suf c r samuel b namani said talmud ma so to be it means reeds as it is written the reeds and flax shall wither away and the daughter of pharaoh came down to bathe at the river are and said in the name of our simeon beohe it teaches that she went down there to cleanse herself of her father's idols and thus it says when the lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of zion etc and her maidens walked along etc are you and said the word for walk means nothing else than death and thus it says behold i am going to die and she saw the ark among the reeds when the maiden saw that she wished to rescue moses they said to her mistress it is the custom of the world that when a human king makes a decree though everybody else does not obey it at least his children and the members of his household Obey it, but thou dost transgress thy father's decree. Gabriel came and beat them to the ground and sent her handmaid to fetch it. Our Judah and our Nehemiah differ in their interpretation. One said that the word means her hand, and the other said that it means her handmaid. He who said that it means her hand did so because it is written. Amatha, he who said that it means her handmaid did so because the text has not yet on her hand, but according to him who said that it means her handmaid, it has just been stated that Gabriel came and beat them to the ground. He left her one because it is not customary for a king's daughter to be unattended, but according to him who said that it means her hand, the text should have been yada. It teaches us that her arm became lengthened, for a master has said, You find it so with the arm of Pharaoh's daughter, and similarly with the teeth of the wicked, as it is written, Thou hast broken Shibber to the teeth of the wicked, and Reshlakish said, Red not Shibber but Sherbat thou has lengthened she opened it and saw the child it should have been and saw Hosea B. R. Hanana said she saw the Shechina with him and behold the boy what he is called a child and then a boy Etana taught he was a child but his voice was like that of a grown boy such as the view of Arjuna Ar Nehemiah said to him if so you have made our master Moses into one possessed of a blemish but it teaches that his mother made for him a canopy such as is used at the marriage of boys in the ark saying perhaps I may not be worthy to be present at his marriage canopy and she had compassion on him and said of the Hebrews children is this how did she know it Ar Hosea B. R. Hanana said because she saw that he was circumcised is this Ar Yohanan said it teaches that she unwittingly prophesied that this one will fall into the river but no other will fall that is what Ar Eliezer said what means the text and when they shall say unto you seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto the wizards that chirp and that mutter they foresee and know not what they foresee they mutter and know not what they mutter they saw that Israel's savior would be punished through water so they arose and decreed every son that is born ye shall cast into the river after they had thrown Moses into the water they said we do not see that sign any longer they thereupon rescinded their decree but they knew not that he was to be punished through the water of Mary but that is what our Hamabi Hananah said what means the text these are the waters of Mary because they strove these are the waters about which Pharaoh's magician saw and heard and concerning this Moses said six hundred thousand footmen etc Moses said to Israel on my account were all of you delivered from drowning by the edict of Pharaoh our Hanabi be Papa said that day was the twenty first of Nisan and the ministering angel spoke before the Holy One blessed be he Lord of the universe shall he who will utter a song to be by the Red Sea on this day be punished on this day. Arahabi Hanana said that day was the sixth of seven, and the ministering angel spoke before the Holy One, Blessed be he, Lord of the universe, shall he who will receive the Torah on Mount Sinai on this day be punished on this day. It is quite right according to him who said that it was the sixth of seven, for then it occurred three months after his birth, for a master has said Moses died on the seventh of Adar and was born on the seventh of Adar, and from the seventh of Adar to the sixth of seven is three months, but according to him who said that it was the twenty first of Nisan, how could it have been that year was a leap year, the greater part of the first Adar and the greater part of the last Nisan, and a full month in between, then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call the owners of the Hebrew women? Why just of the Hebrew women? It teaches that they handed Moses about to all the Egyptian women, but he would not suck, he said, shall a mouth which will speak with the Shechina suck what is unclean, that is what is written, whom will he teach knowledge, etc., to whom will he teach knowledge, and to whom will he make the message understandable to them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts, and Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, go, etc., our Eliezer said, it teaches that she went quickly like a young woman, our Samuel B. Namani said, she is called the maid Alma, because she made the words secret, and Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away, our Hamabi Hanana said, she prophesied without knowing what she prophesied, Heliki, take away, behold, what is thine, Hashalaki, and I will give thee thy wages, our Hamabi Hanana said, not enough that the righteous have their loss restored to them, but they also receive their reward, in addition, and Miriam the prophet is the sister of Aaron, took, etc., the sister of Aaron, and not the sister of Moses, Aram said in the name of Rab, and According to others, it was Arnaman who said in the name of Rabbit teaches that she prophesied while she yet was the sister of Aaron only Talmud, Masode, and said, My mother will bear a son who will be the savior of Israel. When Moses was born, the whole house was filled with light, and her father arose and kissed her upon her head, saying, My daughter, thy prophecy has been fulfilled. But when they cast him into the river, her father arose and smacked her upon her head, saying, Where now is thy prophecy? That is what is written, and his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him, what would be the fate of her prophecy, Joseph, and Merit, etc. Why the difference that first it is written, and Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, etc., followed by in all the house of Joseph and his brethren and his father's house, and in the sequel it is written, and Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren followed by in all that went up with. Him to bury his father Aryohan and said at first before the servants of Pharaoh beheld the glory of the Israelites they did not treat them with respect but in the sequel when they beheld their glory they treated them with respect for it is written and they came to the threshing floor of added but is there a threshing floor for brambles Arabah said it teaches that they surrounded Jacob's coffin with crowns like a threshing floor which is surrounded with a hedge of brambles because the sons of Esau of Ishmael and of Keturah also came Atanah taught they all came to wage war against the Israelites but when they saw Joseph's crown hanging upon Jacob's coffin they all took their crowns and hung them upon his coffin Atanah taught sixty three crowns were hung upon Jacob's coffin and there they lamented with a very great and sore lamentation it has been taught even the horses and asses joined in the lamentation when the cortege arrived at the cave of Machpelah Esau came and wished to prevent the interment there saying to them Mamre Kiriath Arba the same as Hebron now our Isaac has said Kiriath Arba is so called because four couples were buried there is Adam and Eve Abraham and Sarah Isaac and Rebekah and Jacob and Leah Jacob had buried Leah in his portion and what remains belongs to me they replied to him thou didst sell it he said to them granted that I sold my birthright but did I sell my plain heirs right they replied yes for it is written in my grave which I Jacob have digged for me and our Yohanan has said in the name of our Simeon Bij Hosea the word Kira dig means nothing else than sale Mekra and thus in the coast towns they use Kira as a term for sale he said to them produce a document of sale for me they replied to him the document is in the land of Egypt who will go for it let Naphtali go because he is swift as a hind for it is written Naphtali is a hind let loose he giveth goodly words Arabah said read not goodly words Imra. Shepherd, but Imra Sefer words of a document among those present was Hashim, a son of Dan, who was hard of hearing, so he asked them what is happening. They said to him, Esau is preventing the burial until Naphtali returns from the land of Egypt. He retorted, Is my grandfather to lie there in contempt until Naphtali returns from the land of Egypt? He took a club and struck Esau on the head so that his eyes fell out and rolled to the feet of Jacob. Jacob opened his eyes and laughed, and that is what is written. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. At that time was the prophecy of Rebekah fulfilled, as it is written, Why should I be bereaved of you both in one day? Although the death of the two of them did not occur on the one day, still their burial took place on the same day. But if Joseph had not occupied himself with Jacob's burial, would not his brethren have occupied themselves with it? Behold, it is written for his sons. Carried him into the land of Canaan, they said among themselves,
It thither and made the iron to swim now cannot the matter be argued by a fortiori reasoning if iron floated on account of Elisha who was a disciple of Elijah who was a disciple of Moses how much more so on account of Moses our teacher our Nathan says he was buried in the sepulchre of the kings and Moses went and stood by the sepulchre of the kings and exclaimed Joseph the time has arrived which the Holy One blessed be he swore I will deliver you and the oath which thou didst impose. Upon the Israelites has reached the time of fulfillment if thou wilt chew thyself well and good otherwise behold we are free of thy oath at that moment Joseph's coffin shook and Moses took it and carried it with him all those years that the Israelites were in the wilderness those two chests one of the dead and the other of the Shechinah proceeded side by side and passers by used to ask what is the nature of those two chests they received the reply one is of the dead and the other of it. Shechinah but is it then the way of the dead to proceed with the Shechinah they were told Talmud, Ma so to be this one Joseph fulfilled all that was written in the other but if Moses had not occupied himself with him would not the Israelites have occupied themselves with him behold it is written and the bones of Joseph which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt buried they in Shechem furthermore if the Israelites had not occupied themselves with him would not his own sons have done. So and behold it is written and they became the inheritance of the children of Joseph they said to one another leave him his honor will be greater when the burial is performed by many rather than by few and they also said leave him his honor will be greater when the burial is performed by the great rather than by the small buried they in Shechem why just in Shechem Arham a son of Arhan and said from Shechem they stole him and to Shechem we will restore what is lost the following verses. Are contradictory it is written and Moses took the bones of Joseph with him and it is written and the bones of Joseph which the children of Israel brought up etc. Arham a son of Arhan and said whoever performs a task without finishing it and another comes and completes it scripture ascribes it to the one who completed it as though he had performed it or Eliezer said he is likewise deposed from his greatness for it is written and it came to pass at that time that Judah went down our Samuel be Namani. Said he also buries his wife and children for it is written she was daughter the wife of Judah died etc. And it is written but er and Onan died Rab Judah said in the name of Rab why was Joseph called bones during his lifetime because he did not interfere to safeguard his father's honor when his brother said to him thy servant our father and he made no reply to them Rab Judah also said in the name of Rab and others declare that it was Arham son of Arhan why did Joseph die before his brothers because he gave himself superior ears and Joseph was brought down to Egypt our Eliezer said Red not was brought down but brought down because he brought Pharaoh's astrologers down from their eminence and Potiphar an officer of Pharaoh's bought him Rab said he bought him for himself but Gabriel came and castrated him and then Gabriel came and mutilated him Paraphor originally his name is written Potiphar but afterwards Potiphar whom have we greater than Moses etc. And the Lord said. Unto me let it suffice the early by said with the word suffice Moses made an announcement and with the word suffice an announcement was made to him with the word suffice he made an announcement suffice you and with the word suffice an announcement was made to him let it suffice the another explanation of let it suffice Rabbi is thou hast a master Rabbi is Joshua another explanation of let it suffice thee is that people should not say how severe the master is and how persistent the people is and why so in the school of our Ishmael it was taught according to the camel is the burden and he said unto them I am an hundred and twenty years old this day why does the text state this day the meaning is this day are my days and years completed its purpose is to teach you that the Holy One blessed be he completes the years of the righteous from day to day and from month to month for it is written the number of thy days I will fulfill I can no more go out and come in what means go out and Come in if it is to be understood literally behold it is written and Moses was an hundred and twenty years old when he died his eye was not dim nor his natural force abetted it is also written and Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto Mount Nebo and it has been taught twelve steps further but Moses mounted them in one stride our Samuel Benaman he said in the name of our Jonathan it means to go out and come in with words of Torah thus indicating that the gates of wisdom were closed against him and Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tent of meeting a tent taught that was a Sabbath when two teachers gave discourses and the authority was taken from one to be transferred to the other it has further been taught our Judah said were it not for a scriptural text it would be impossible to utter the following where did Moses die in the portion of Reuben for it is written and Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto Mount Nebo and Nebo was located in the portion of Reuben for it is written and the children of Reuben built and Nebo etc. It was called Nebo because three prophets Nebiim died there is Moses Aaron and Miriam and where was Moses buried in the portion of Gad for it is written and he provided the first part for himself etc. Now what was the distance between the portion of Reuben and that of Gad for mill who carried him those for mill it teaches that Moses was laid upon the wings of the Shechinah and the ministering angels kept proclaiming. He executed the justice of the Lord and his judgments with Israel and the Holy One blessed be he declared who will rise up for me against the evildoers who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity Samuel said that God declared who is as a wise man and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing are Yohanan said that God declared where shall wisdom be found Arnaman said that God announced so Moses died there etc. Simeon said so Moses died there the great sage of Israel it has. Been taught our Eliezer the elder said over an area of twelve mil square corresponding to that of the camp of Israel of Bathcol made the proclamation so Moses died there the great sage of Israel others declare that Moses never died it is written here so Moses died there and elsewhere it is written and he was there with the Lord as in the latter passage it means standing and ministering so also in the former it means standing and ministering and he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab over. Against Bethir our Barakiah said although scripture provides a clue within a clue nevertheless no man knowed of his sepulchre the wicked government once sent to Talmud, Masoda the governor of Bethir the message to us where Moses is buried when they stood above it appeared to them to be below when they were below it appeared to them to be above they divided themselves into two parties to them who were standing above it appeared below and to those who were below it appeared. Above this is in fulfillment of what is said, no man knoweth of his sepulchre, Arham, a son of Arhan, and said, Even Moses, our teacher, does not know where he is buried. It is written here, No man knoweth of his sepulchre, and it is written elsewhere, and this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed Arham, a son of Arhan, and also said, Why was Moses buried near Bethir to atone for the incident at Pir Arham, a son of Arhan, and further said, What means the text? Ye shall walk after the Lord your God. Is it then possible for a human being to walk after the Sheshan offer? Has it not been said for the Lord thy God is a devouring fire, but the meaning is to walk after the attributes of the Holy One, blessed be he as he clothes the naked, for it is written, and the Lord God made for Adam and for his white coats of skin and clothed them, so do thou also clothe the naked, the Holy One, blessed be he visited the sick, for it is written, and the Lord appeared unto him by the oaks of Mamre, so do thou also. Visit the sick, the Holy One, blessed be he comforted mourners, for it is written, and it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed Isaac his son, so do thou also comfort mourners, the Holy One, blessed be he buried the dead, for it is written, and he buried him in the valley, so do thou also bury the dead coats of skin, Rab and Samuel differ in their interpretation, one said that it means a material that grows from the skin and the other a material from which the human skin derives. Pleasure our simile expounded Torah begins with an act of benevolence and ends with an act of benevolence, it begins with an act of benevolence, for it is written, and the Lord God made for Adam and for his white coats of skin and clothed them, and it ends with an act of benevolence, for it is written, and he buried him in the valley, our simile expounded, why did Moses our teacher yearn to enter the land of Israel, did he want to eat of its fruits or satisfy himself from its bounty, but thus spake Moses many. Precepts were commanded to Israel which can only be fulfilled in the land of Israel I wish to enter the land so that they may all be fulfilled by me the Holy One blessed be he said to him is it only to receive the reward for obeying the commandments that thou seekest I ascribe it to thee as if thou didst perform them as it is said therefore will I divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul unto death and was numbered with the transgressors yet he bare the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors theref
Neither oil nor frankincense, all other meal offerings consist of wheat, but this consists of barley. The meal offering of Ilmer, although consisting of barley, was in the form of groats, but this was in the form of coarse flour. Rabban Gamaliel says his her actions were the actions of an animal, so her offering consisted of animals. Father Torah, it has been taught, Abahanin says in the name of Arlizer, what is the purpose of placing a basket upon her hands in order to weary her so that she may retract if the Torah has such consideration for them who transgress his will, how much more so for them who perform his will. But once is it known that the object of this regulation is to show consideration, perhaps it is to avoid the divine name on the scroll being obliterated, he is of the opinion Talmud, Ma so to be that she is first given the water to drink and then the offering is sacrificed, so that if it be suggested that the reason is because of the scroll, the writing has. Already been obliterated with all other meal offerings, etc. The following is quoted in contradiction. How is the procedure of meal offerings? A man brings a meal offering from his house in silver or golden baskets, places it in a ministering vessel, hallows it in a ministering vessel, adds to it its oil and frankincense, and carries it to a priest who carries it to the altar and brings it near onto the southwest corner opposite the point of the altar's horn, and that suffices. He then moves it. Frankincense to one side of the vessel, takes a handful of the flour from a place where its oil is abundant, sets it in a ministering vessel, hallows it in a ministering vessel, gathers its frankincense and places it on the top thereof and sets it upon the altar and fumigates it in a ministering vessel. He next salts a handful of flour and sets it upon the fire. When the handful has been offered, the remainder may be eaten, and the priests are allowed to mix it with wine, oil, and honey, and are. Only forbidden to make it leaven. Now here it is taught that meal offerings are brought only in silver or golden baskets. Our Papa said the correct version of the Mishnah is in vessels which are proper to be used as ministering vessels. It therefore follows that a basket of palm twigs is not proper to be used as a vessel. This would not agree with the view of our Jose son of our Judah, for it has been taught as regards a ministering vessel of wood. Rabbi disqualifies it, but our Jose son of our Judah allows it. If you wish, you may say that it is in accord even with the view of our Jose son of our Judah, because he is referring to wooden vessels which are valuable. But does he say that with regard to wooden vessels which are inferior, does our Jose son of our Judah not hold with the text present it now unto the governor places it in a ministering vessel and hallows it in a ministering vessel? Is the conclusion to be drawn from this that the ministering vessels only hallow when such is the intention? The correct version is places it in a ministering vessel in order to hallow it in a ministering vessel adds to it its oil and frankincense as it is said he shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense thereon and carries it to a priest for it is written and he shall bring it to Aaron's sons etc who carries it to the altar for it is written and he shall bring it unto the altar brings it near unto the southwest corner opposite the point of the altar's horn and that suffices whence is this for it is written and this is the law of the meal offering the sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord before the altar and it has been taught before the Lord it is possible to think that this means on the west side of the altar therefore the text declares before the altar if scripture only had before the altar it is possible to think that this means on the south side therefore the text declares before the Lord so what was the procedure he sets it on the southwest corner opposite it Point of the altar's horn and that suffices our Eliezer says it is possible to think that the meaning is he sets it on the west of the horn or the south of the horn but you can answer wherever you find two texts one self-confirmatory and confirming the words of the other whereas the second is self-confirmatory but annuls the words of the other we abandon the latter and accept the former thus when you emphasize before the Lord on the west side of the altar you annul before the altar on the south side but when you emphasize before the altar on the south side you confirm before the Lord on the west side what then is the procedure he brings it on the south of the horn but how do you confirm it Arashi said this Tana holds that the whole of the altar stood in the north what means and that suffices Arashi said it was necessary to mention this because otherwise it may have occurred to me to say that the bringing of the meal offering itself to the altar without the ministering Vessel is required, consequently, we are informed that the contrary is the correct procedure, but say that it is really so, and the ministering vessel is not necessary. The text states, and it shall be presented unto the priest, and he shall bring it unto the altar as the presentation to the priest is in a ministering vessel. So, also, the bringing to the altar must be in a ministering vessel. He then moves the frankincense to one side of the vessel so that none of it may be included in the handful taken of the meal offering. As we have learned, if when he took a handful there came into his hand a pebble or particle of salt or grain of frankincense, it is disqualified, takes a handful of flour from a place where its oil is abundant. Once is this, for it is written of the fine flour thereof, and of the oil thereof, of the bruised corn thereof, and of the oil thereof, sets it in a ministering vessel, and hallows it in a ministering vessel. For what purpose, since he has already hallowed it? Once it is analogous to the case of blood, although the knife hallows it in the animal's neck, the priest again hallows it in a ministering vessel, so here too there is no difference, gathers its frankincense and places it on the top thereof, for it is written, and all the frankincense which is upon the meal offering and sets it upon the altar Talmud, Masoda, and fumigates it in a ministering vessel, he fumigates it in a ministering vessel, you say the correct version is, and sets it upon the altar in a ministering vessel to fumigate it, he next salts a handful of flour and sets it upon the fire, for it is written, and every oblation of the meal offering shall thou season with salt when the handful has been offered, the remainder may be eaten, once is this, for it is written, and the priest shall burn the memorial of it, etc., and it is written, and that which is left of the meal offering shall be Aaron's and his sons when the handful has been offered, etc., this is differently explained. By two teachers, for it has been reported from what time does the taking of the handful render the eating of the remainder permissible? Our Hannah says when the fire takes hold of it, or Yohanan said when the fire burns the greater part of it, and the priests are allowed to mix it with wine, oil, and honey. For what reason the text states by reason of the anointing, i.e., as a mark of eminence, in the same manner as kings take their food and are only forbidden to make it leaven, for it is written, it shall not be baked with leaven. Their portion, our Simeon B. Lakish says it means that even their portion must not be baked with leaven with all other meal offerings, etc. But do all other meal offerings require oil and frankincense? Behold, there is a meal offering of the sinner concerning which the Almerciful said he shall put no oil upon it, neither shall he put any frankincense thereon. This is what he intends. All other meal offerings require oil and frankincense and consist of wheat in the form of fun. Flour, but the meal offering of the sinner, although it does not require oil and frankincense, consists of wheat in the form of fine flour. The meal offering of the omer, although it consists of barley, requires oil and frankincense and is in the form of groats. But this one of the suspected woman does not require oil and frankincense and consists of barley in the form of coarse flour. It has been taught. Our Simeon said it is right that the meal offering of a sinner should require oil and frankincense, so that a sinner should not gain. Why then are they not required that his offering should not be luxurious? It is also right that an ordinary sin offering should require drink offering, so that a sinner should not gain. Why then are they not required that his offering should not be luxurious? The sin offering of a leper, however, and his trespass offering do require drink offerings because they are not due to sin. But that is not so. For behold, our Samuel Binaman, he said in the name of our Jonathan. On. Account of seven faults does the plague of leprosy occur, etc. In this case he received atonement of his sin by the plague he suffered, and when he brings an offering, it is only to allow him to participate in what is holy according to this conclusion. The sin offering of a Nazi right should require drink offering, since it is not due to a sin he holds with our Eliezer Hakapper, who said a Nazi right is also a sinner. Rabban Gamaliel says as etc. It has been taught Rabban Gamaliel said to the sages. Learned men permit me to explain this alleged Ikali Talmud, Ma so to be he had heard our mayor say she fed him with the dainties of the world, therefore her offering is animals fodder. Then said he to him, You may be right about a rich woman, but what of a poor woman? But the reason is as her actions were the action of an animal, so her offering consisted of animals fodder. Mission the priest takes an earthenware bowl and pours half a log of water into it from the labor Arjuda says a quarter. Of a log, just as our Judah reduces the amount of writing, so he reduces the quantity of water. The priest enters the temple and turns right. There was a place there, a cubit square in extent,
Half cedar wood hyssop and scarlet so are these required with the water of bitterness. Rabbi said the text mentions in an earthen vessel, i.e. a vessel to which I referred previously. Rabbi said the rabbis in our mission did not teach that a used vessel may be employed except when its exterior is not blackened by smoke, but if its exterior is blackened, it is unfit for use. What is the reason it is analogous to the water? Just as the water must not be changed in appearance, so also the vessel must not be changed in appearance. Rabbi asked, How is it if the earthenware had been blackened and rewhitened by being passed through the furnace again? Do we say that since it has once been rejected, it remains rejected, or perhaps since it has been restored, it is suitable? Come and here, our Eliezer says, If a man twisted cedar wood, scarlet, and hyssop into a cord for the purpose of carrying his bundle on his back, they are unfit to be used in the ceremony of purification, and yet they are here again. Smooth it out, but in that case we suppose that some of the material has been peeled off the priest enters the temple and turns right, etc. For what reason? Because a master has declared all the turns which thou dost make must only be to the right. There was a place there, a cupid, etc. Our rabbis have taught and of the dust that is, etc. It is possible to think that the priest may prepare dust from outside and bring it in. Therefore there is a text to state on the floor of the tabernacle if on the floor of the tabernacle it is possible to think that he may dig for it with an axe. Therefore there is a text to state that is how was it done. If dust is there, take of it. If none is there, put some there and take of it. Another very the taught end of the dust that is this teaches that he prepares some from outside and brings it in on the floor of the tabernacle. Isi Judah says it includes the floor Talmud, Masoda Talmud, Masoda of the tabernacle in Shiloh, Nab, Gideon, and the permanent temple is Ibimenahum says it is unnecessary to include the permanent temple if in the case of a minor defilement scripture does not differentiate between the temporary tabernacle and the permanent temple in the case of the defilement of a married woman how much more so is it unnecessary to differentiate why then does the text state on the floor of the tabernacle he may not take it from the midst of a heap the following question was asked if there is no dust how is it about putting ashes there according to the view of Beth Shammai the question does not arise because they said that we never find ashes called dust but the question does arise according to the view of Beth Hillel because they said that we do find ashes called dust how is it then although the word dust is used it is here written on the floor of the tabernacle perhaps however the phrase on the floor of the tabernacle is intended to be understood according to the interpretation of Isib Judah and Isib. Menahem come and here for our Yohanan said in the name of our Ishmael in three places the Halacha crushes the scriptural text under heel the Torah states with dust whereas the Halacha allows the blood to be covered with anything the Torah states no razor whereas the legal decision is that a Nazi right may not shave with anything the Torah states a book whereas the legal decision allows any form of document now if this is so it should also have been enumerated he taught some instances and omitted others what else then did he omit he omitted the shaving of a leper for it has been taught and it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair that is a generalization off his head and his beard and his eyebrows that is a particularization even all his hair he shall shave off that is again a generalization now the rule of exegesis is when there is a general proposition followed by the enumeration of particulars and this is followed by a general proposition Include only that which resembles the particulars as the particulars refer to a part of the body where the hair grows and is visible so every place where the hair grows and is visible comes within the scope of the law what does it include it includes the hair on the private part what does it exclude it excludes that of the armpit and the whole body which is normally covered the halacha however as he shaves himself as smooth as a gourd for we have learned when the priest comes to shave the leper he passes a razor over all his flesh and it continues on the seventh day he shaves the second shaving after the manner of the first Arnaman B. Isaac said are Yohanan enumerated instances where the halacha crushes the scriptural text under heel but here it crushes a rabbinical teaching under heel our papa said are Yohanan enumerated instances where the halacha crushes the scriptural text under heel and overthrows it but here it crushes the text under heel and extends it or as she said According to whom is this teaching that only the visible parts of the body are to be shaved? It is our Ishmael who expounds the Torah by the rule of generalization and particularization Talmud. Maso to be according to whom is the teaching that he must be shaved the second time as smooth as a gourd? It is our Akiva who expounds the Torah by the rule of amplification and limitation for it has been taught and it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair that is an amplification off his head and his beard and his eyebrows that is a limitation even all his hair he shall shave off that is again an amplification now the rule of exegesis is where there is an amplification followed by a limitation and this is followed by an amplification the amplification applies to the whole in which respect is there an amplification it includes all the body to be shaved in which respect is there a limitation it excludes the hair which grows inside the nostril how is it? Then with our original question whether ashes may be used when there is no dust come and here for our Hunabi ashes said in the name of Rab if there is no dust there he brings decayed herbage and hallows it but this is no proof decayed herbage may indeed be called dust but not ashes just sufficient to be visible above the water our rabbis have taught three things must be visible is the dust in the ceremony of the suspected woman the ashes in the ceremony of the red heifer and the spittle in the ceremony of Eliza they said in the name of our Ishmael also the blood of the bird what is our Ishmael's reason because it is written and shall dip them in the blood of the bird etc and it has been taught in the blood it is possible to think that they must be dipped in blood and not in water therefore the text declares over the running water if scripture had only mentioned water it would be possible to think that they must be dipped in water and not in blood therefore the text Declares in the blood what then was the procedure he brings water in which the blood of the bird is recognizable what is the quantity a quarter of a log and why is this instance not included in their enumeration by the rabbis that is part of the subject matter for thus said the all-merciful dip in blood and water how is this argument met by our Ishmael in that case the all-merciful should have written and he shall dip in them so why is it stated in blood and in water that the blood must be recognizable and how is this argument met by the rabbis if the all-merciful had written and he shall dip in them I might have imagined that he was to dip in each separately therefore he wrote in blood and in water to indicate that they must be mixed how does our Ishmael answer this point that they are to be mixed is learned from another verse it is written and kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water how do the rabbis answer this point if we had to Learned it from that passage we might have thought that he is to kill it near a vessel press the jugular veins and receive the blood in another vessel hence we are informed by this verse that the killing must be done over the vessel containing the water our Jeremiah asked our Zerah how is it if the bird was so big that its blood effaced all trace of the water or if it was so small that all trace of its blood was effaced by the water he answered have I not told thee not to take thyself. Beyond a legal decision the rabbis estimated the quantity of a quarter of a log by a free bird and this is never so big that its blood should efface all trace of the water nor so small that all trace of its blood should be effaced by the water our rabbis have taught if he put the dust in the bowl before the water it is invalid but our Simeon allows it what is the reason of our Simeon because it is written and for the unclean they shall take of the dust of the burning of the sin. Offering and it has been taught our Simeon said was it dust and not ashes the text changes the expression to indicate that a conclusion was to be drawn from it by the rule of analogy it is mentioned here dust and there in the ceremony of the suspected woman it is also mentioned dust as in the second instance the dust had to be placed over the water so also here the dust had to be placed over the water and further as it is valid here if he put the dust on before the water so also there in the ceremony of the suspected woman it is valid if he put the dust on before the water whence is this derived there in the right of the red heifer there are two texts it is written there too consequently the ashes are first and it is written running water in the vessel consequently the water is first so what was the procedure he can put either in first how is this interpretation answered by the rabbis in a vessel precisely so there too that they are to be mixed but say rather that there too means Precisely so and in a vessel means that the water must be poured directly into the vessel from the spring as we find that everywhere it is the qualifying element which is on top so also here the qualifying element must be on top Talmud, Masoda Mishnah when he comes to write the scroll from what place does he write from if no man have lain with thee but if thou hast gone aside being under thy husband etc he does not however include then the priest shall cause the woman to swear but continues with the Lord
except that he interprets the particle eth as indicating the inclusion of instructions and responses, whereas Armeyer draws no deductions from the occurrences of the particle eth. Arjuda, on the other hand, expounds all the above points as implying limitation curses, denotes the passages which are actually curses. The curses is to exclude the imprecations which result from the benedictions, these is to exclude the imprecations in Deuteronomy, the these is to exclude instructions and responses. What is the difference that Armeyer interprets the definite article in the curses as implying amplification and the definite article in the these as implying limitation? When the definite article occurs in connection with amplification, it also denotes amplification, and when it occurs in connection with limitation, it also denotes limitation. But Armeyer does not accept the rule that an affirmative is to be deduced as the corollary of a negative. Artanum said it is written in Aki Arakiba expounded. When husband and wife are worthy, the Sheshana abides with them. When they are not worthy, fire consumes them. Rabba said the fire which results from the woman is severer than that from the man. What is the reason in the case of the former? The letters Allah and Shin are consecutive, but not in the case of a man. Rabba said, Why does the Torah command that dust should be provided for the ceremony of a suspected woman? If she be innocent, there will issue from her a son like our father Abraham, of whom it is written, Dust and ashes, and if she be not innocent, she reverts to dust. Rabba expounded as a reward for our father Abraham, having said, I am but dust and ashes. His descendants were worthy to receive two commandments, viz. the ashes of the red heifer and the dust of the ceremony of a suspected woman. But there is likewise dust for the covering of the blood. In this case, the use of dust is merely the completion of the commandment without any advantage to the performer. Rabba expounded as a Reward for our father Abraham having said I will not take a thread nor a shalash his descendants were worthy to receive two commandments this thread of blue and the thong of the phylacteries it is right in the case of the thong of the phylacteries for it is written and all the peoples of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and it has been taught our Eliezer the elder says this refers to the phylactery worn upon the head but what is the advantage to him who performs the law of the thread of blue it has been taught our mayor used to say why is blue specified from all the varieties of colors because blue resembles the color of the sea and the sea resembles the color of heaven and heaven resembles the color of the throne of glory as it is said and they saw the God of Israel and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of sapphire stone and as it were the very heaven for clearness and it is written the likeness of the throne is it Appearance of a sapphire stone Mishnah he writes neither on a wooden tablet nor on papyrus nor on Talmud, Maso to be dipped but on a parchment scroll as it is said in a book nor does he write with a preparation of gum or vitriol or with anything which indents the parchment but with ink as it is said and blot out writing which is capable of being blotted out Gemara Rabbah said a scroll for a suspected woman which one wrote at night is invalid what is the reason an analogy is drawn. Between two passages where the word law occurs here it is written and the priest shall execute upon her all this law and elsewhere it is written according to the tenor of the law which they shall teach thee and according to the judgment as judgment could only be delivered in the daytime so a scroll for a suspected woman could only be written in the daytime if he wrote the text not in its proper order it is invalid for it is written and he shall write these curses just as they are written. In the scriptural text, if he wrote it before she took the oath upon herself, it is invalid as it is said, he shall cause her to swear, and after that he shall write. If he wrote it in the form of a letter, it is invalid in the book, said the Almerciful Talmud. Masoda, if he wrote it on two folios, it is invalid. The Almerciful spoke of one book and not of two or three books. If he wrote one letter and blotted it out with the water of bitterness, and then wrote another letter and blotted it out, it is invalid for it is written, and the priest shall execute upon her all this law. Asked how is it if he wrote two scrolls for two suspects and blotted them in one vessel of water? Do we only require that the writing should be expressly for each case that we have here, or perhaps it is also necessary to have obliteration expressly for each case? If furthermore, you conclude that we also require obliteration expressly for each case, how is it if he obliterated them in two vessels and then mixed? Them do we only require that the obliteration should be expressly for each case that we have here, or perhaps each of the women does not drink the water prepared for her? If furthermore you conclude that this renders the right invalid because each of the women does not drink the water prepared for her, how is it if he again divided the water into two parts after having mixed it? Is there or is there not a retrospective differentiation? The questions remain unanswered. Rob asked, How is it if he made her drink through a straw or tube? Is that to be regarded as a mode of drinking or not? The question remains unanswered. Rashi asked, How is it if some of the water was spilled or remained over? The question remains unanswered. Arzara said in the name of Rabbi, are two oaths mentioned in connection with a suspected woman? One was imposed before the writing on the scroll was blotted out, and the other after it was blotted out. Rob they are both written in the scriptural text before. The inscription on the scroll was obliterated, but said Rabbah with one oath the curse was connected and not with the other. What was the formula of the oath with which a curse was connected? Aram Rome said in the name of Rabbi, make thee swear that thou hast not misconducted thyself, for if thou hast made the curses befall thee, Rabbah asked in this wording the curse and the oath are distinct, but said Rabbah the formula is I make thee swear that if thou hast misconducted thyself, may the curses befall. The Arashi asked in this wording there is a curse, but no oath, but said Arashi the formula is I make thee swear that thou hast not misconducted thyself, and that if thou hast made the curses befall thee, Mishnah to what does she respond? Amen, amen, and amen over the curse, and an amen over the oath, and amen with respect to this man, and an amen with respect to any other man, and amen that I did not go astray as a betrothed maiden or married woman Talmud, Maso to be or a childless widow waiting. For my brother in law's decision whether he would marry me or take into his house and an amen that I have not misconducted myself, and if I have made the curses befall me, or Meir says one amen is that I have not misconducted myself, and the other amen that I will not misconduct myself, all agree that a man cannot make a stipulation with her in respect of the time before she was betrothed or after she is divorced if she secludes herself with another man and misconducts herself, and subsequently her husband takes her back, he cannot make a stipulation with her in respect of this. This is the general rule, he cannot make a stipulation with her in respect of any act of cohabitation which does not render her prohibited to him. Mar Arham has said a childless widow waiting for her brother in law's decision whether he would marry her who acted immorally is forbidden to her lover. Whence is this since the mission teaches a childless widow waiting for my brother in law's decision? Whether he would marry me or take into his house, this is quite right. If you say that she is prohibited to her brother in law, then he can make a stipulation with her. But if you say that she is not prohibited to him, how can he make a stipulation with her? For we have learned this is the general rule. He cannot make a stipulation with her in respect of any act of cohabitation which does not render her prohibited to him in the West. However, they said the legal decision is not in agreement with our Hamana, but whose then is the teaching concerning a childless widow waiting for her brother in law or taken to his house? It is our Akibus, for he said no betrothal can take effect in cases which are subject to a mere negative prohibition, and he regards her act as equal to an incestuous union. Our Jeremiah asked, can he make a stipulation in connection with the first marriage or her marriage with his brother? Come and here, this is the general rule. He cannot make a stipulation with her in respect of. Any act of cohabitation which does not render her prohibited to him, consequently, when it would render her prohibited to him, he can make a stipulation with her. Draw that conclusion. Armeyer says one amen is that I have not misconducted myself, etc. It has been taught when Armeyer declares and the other amen that I will not misconduct myself. It does not imply that if she in the future misconducts herself, the water affects her now, but should she later misconduct herself, the water will bestir and affect her. Arashi asks, Can a man make a stipulation with regard to remarriage? Do we argue that for the present she is not prohibited to him, and therefore he cannot make a stipulation with her, or that it may happen that he will divorce and remarry her, and therefore can make a stipulation come and here? All agree that a man cannot make a stipulation with her in respect of the time before she was betrothed, or after she is divorced, if she secludes herself with another man and misconducts herself. And subsequently her husband took her back, he cannot make a stipulation with her in respect of this. Hence, if he takes her back and she then misconducts herself, he can make a stipulation in respect of this straw. That conclusion our rabbis have taught this is a
Rabbis hold that this indicates the exclusion of them all and the law indicates the inclusion of the case of two husbands and two paramours. Arjuna holds that this is to exclude two cases and the law is to include two cases. This is to exclude two cases is the same husband and the same paramour and the same husband and two paramours. The law is to include two cases is two husbands and the same paramour and two husbands and two paramours. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-I-I -I Mishnah he takes her meal. Offering out of the basket of palm twigs and places it in a ministering vessel and sets it upon her hand and the priest places his hand under hers and waves it having waved it he brought a handful to the altar fumigated it and the remainder was eaten by the priest he first gives her the water of bitterness to drink and then sacrifices her meal offering our Simeon says he sacrifices her meal offering and then gives her to drink as it is said and afterward shall make the woman drink it. Water but if he gave her to drink and then sacrificed her meal offering it is valid. Gemara R. Eliezer said to our Joshua his contemporary you shall not sit down until you have explained the following whence is it that the meal offering of a suspected woman requires to be waved whence have we it is written in connection therewith and shall wave but my question is whence is it that it has to be done with the cooperation of the owner it is derived from the analogous use of the word hand. In connection with the peace offering here it is written the priest shall take out of the woman's hand and there it is written his own hands shall bring as in this present case it refers to the priest who waves the offering of the suspected woman so there it refers to the priest and as there in the waving of the peace offering the owner holds it during the rite so here the owner holds it what then was the procedure the priest places his hand under the hands of the owner and waves. Having waved it he brought a handful he first gives her the water of bitterness to drink and then sacrifices her meal offering but he has already offered it this is what is intended what is the procedure in connection with meal offerings he waves brings a handful to the altar fumigates it and the remainder is eaten by the priest as to the giving of the water to drink on this our Simeon and the rabbis differ because the rabbis hold that he gives her to drink and then sacrifices her meal. Offering whereas our Simeon holds that he sacrifices her meal offering and then gives her to drink as it is said and afterwards shall make the woman drink but if he gave her to drink and then sacrifice her meal offering it is valid Talmud, Maso to be our rabbis taught and when he hath made her drink what does this intend to tell us since it has already been stated and he shall make the woman drink it informs us that if the writing on the scroll has been obliterated and she says I refuse to drink they exert influence upon her and make her drink by force such as the statement of our Akiva our Simeon says and afterwards shall make the woman drink what does this intend to tell us since it has already been stated and he shall make the woman drink it informs us that it only takes place after all the rites mentioned above have been carried out thus indicating that three things prevent the giving of the water to drink the priest must have offered the handful the writing on it. Scroll must have been blotted out and the woman must have taken the oath the priest must have offered the handful our Simeon is consistent with his opinion when he said that the priest sacrifices her meal offering and then gives her to drink the writing on the scroll must have been blotted out obviously so for what else could he give her to drink our Ashi said no it is necessary to mention this for the case where a trace of the inscription is recognizable the woman must have taken the oath this means merely she does not drink but they write the scroll for her before she takes the oath but Rabbah has said if he wrote the scroll for a suspected woman before she took the oath what he did was invalid our Simeon mentioned this unnecessarily on what then do they differ there are three verses first he shall make the woman drink second and afterward shall make drink and third and when he hath made her drink the rabbis hold that the first phrase is required for the subject Matter i.e. he gives her to drink and then sacrifices her meal offering the phrase and afterward shall make drink is necessary to cover the case where a trace of the inscription is recognizable and the third phrase indicates that if the writing on the scroll has been obliterated and she says I refuse to drink they exert influence upon her and make her drink by force our Simeon on the other hand holds that and afterward shall make drink is required for the subject matter i.e. he sacrifices her meal offering and then gives her to drink the first phrase is to indicate that if he first gave her to drink and afterward sacrificed her meal offering it is valid and the third phrase denotes that if the writing on the scroll has been obliterated and she says I refuse to drink they exert influence upon her and make her drink by force the rabbis however do not hold that the text opens with a commandment which is only valid as an accomplished fact does our Akiva hold that they give her to Drink by force surely it has been taught our Judah says they insert iron tongs into her mouth so that if the writing on the scroll has been obliterated and she says I'll refuse to drink they exert influence upon her and make her drink by force our Akiva says do we require anything else than to prove her and is she not actually proved but so long as the priest has not offered the handful she can retract and when he has offered the handful she cannot retract but even on your reasoning the teaching is inconsistent it states when he has offered the handful she cannot retract but is she not actually proved you must perforce say that there is no contradiction as one case is where she retracts through trembling and the other where she retracts through defiance and this is what he means when she retracts through defiance she does not drink at all but when it is through trembling so long as the priest has not offered the handful she is able to retract since the writing on the scroll had not yet been obliterated or even if it had been obliterated because the priest acted illegally in obliterating it but if he had offered the handful in which case the priest acted illegally in obliterating it she is unable to retract Talmud, Masoda but our Akiva nevertheless contradicts himself he declared above that it was the obliteration of the inscription which prevents her from retracting and here he declares that the offering of the handful prevents her there are two Tanim who take opposite sides on this question in the view of our Akiva the question was asked how is it if she said I refuse to drink through defiance and she retracts and says I am willing to drink is it that since she said I refuse to drink she admitted I am unclean and having presumed herself to be unclean she is unable to retract or perhaps since she says I am willing to drink she evidences that she first spoke in terror the question remains unanswered Samuel's father said it is necessary to put Something bitter into the water what is the reason scripture declares the water of bitterness i.e. water which had been previously made bitter mission if before the writing on the scroll had been blotted out she said I refuse to drink her scroll is stored away and her meal offering I is scattered over the ashes her scroll is not valid to be used in giving another suspected woman to drink if the writing on the scroll has been blotted out and she said I am unclean the water is poured away and her meal offering I is scattered in the place of the ashes if the writing on the scroll had been blotted out and she said I refuse to drink they exert influence upon her and make her drink by force she had scarcely finished drinking when her face turns green her eyes protrude and her veins swell and it is exclaimed remove her that the temple court be not defiled if she possessed a merit it causes the water to suspend its effect upon her some merit suspends the effect for one year another for Two years and another for three years hence declared Ben is a man is under the obligation to teach his daughter Torah so that if she has to drink the water of bitterness she may know that the merit suspends its effect. Our Eliezer says whoever teaches his daughter Torah teaches her obscenity. Our Joshua says a woman prefers one cab and sexual indulgence to nine cab and continence he used to say a foolish pietist the cunning rogue a female Pharisee and the plague of Pharisees bring destruction upon. The world Gemara Rab Judah declared that Samuel said in the name of our Meir when I studied Torah with our Akiva I used to put vitriol into the ink and he said nothing to me but when I went to our Ishmael he said to me my son what is thy occupation I answered I am a scribe he told me my son be careful because thy work is the work of heaven if thou omittest a single letter or addest a single letter thou dost as a consequence destroy the whole world I said to him there is an ingredient which I put into. The ink and its name is vitriol. He asked me, may we put vitriol into the ink? The Torah has said, he shall blot out. Are you writing which can be blotted out? What did our Ishmael intend to tell our Meir that the letter answered him in that manner? Our Meir meant obviously I am skilled in the rules of defective and clean spelling, but I even have no reason to fear lest a fly should come and settle upon the crownlet of the letter D and obliterate it so that it makes it look like the letter R. There is an ingredient which I put into the ink and its name is vitriol, but it is not so for it has been taught. Our Meir said, when I studied Torah with our Ishmael, I used to put vitriol into the ink and he said nothing to me, but when I went to our Akiva, he forbade it to me. Here is an inconsistency in the order of the rabbis upon whom our Meir attended, and
Valid to be used in giving another suspected woman to drink. Our Papa said perhaps it is not so. The first teacher only gives his opinion there because the scroll was designated for Rachel and cannot therefore be redesignated for Leah. But since the text of the Torah scroll is written without reference to any individual, we may obliterate the passage. Our Naman B. Isaac said perhaps it is not so. Our Ahi B. Joshua only gives his opinion there in the case of a scroll which was written for the purpose of the curses. But with the Torah scroll which is written for the purpose of study, we may not obliterate the passage. Does not then Our Ahi B. Joshua accept what we learned if a man wrote a document to divorce his wife but changed his mind and then met a man who resided in the same city and said to him, My name is identical with yours and my wife's name identical with your wife's name. It is invalid as a document wherewith to divorce the answer there in connection with divorce the all merciful. Declared he shall write for her, we require that it should be written expressly for her here. Likewise, it is stated, shall execute upon her what is intended by the word execute the obliteration of the writing she had scarcely finished drinking when her face, etc. Whose teaching is this? It is our Simeon's because he said that the priest sacrifices her meal offering and then gives her to drink since the water does not affect her so long as her meal offering is not sacrificed as it is written. A meal offering of memorial bringing iniquity to remembrance, but cite the continuation of the mission. If she possessed a merit, it causes the water to suspend its effect upon her. This accords with the view of the rabbis because if it be supposed that it accords with the view of our Simeon, behold, he has declared merit does not cause the water of bitterness to suspend its effect. Our his said, whose is it then? It is our Akibas because he said he sacrifices her meal offering and then gives her. To drink and on the question of the effect of merit he agrees with the rabbis and it is exclaimed remove her etc. What is the reason perhaps she dies is this to say that a corpse is forbidden in the camp of the Levites but it has been taught one who is defiled through contact with the corpse is permitted to enter the camp of the Levites and not only did they say this of one who is defiled through contact with the corpse but even the corpse itself may be taken there as it is said and Moses took the bones of Joseph with him with him i.e. in his division Abbe said the reason is lest she become menstruant is this to say that a sudden fright brings on menstruation yes for it is written and the queen was exceedingly grieved and Rab said it means that she became menstruant but we have learned trembling holds back the menstrual flow fear holds it back but a sudden fright brings it on if she possessed a merit etc. whose teaching is our mission it is not that of Abba Jose B. Hanan, nor of our Eliezer B. Isaac of Fardarim nor of our Ishmael for it has been taught if she possess a merit it suspends the effect of the water for three months sufficiently long for pregnancy to be recognizable such is the statement of Abba Jose B. and our Eliezer B. Isaac of Fardarim says for nine months as it is stated then she shall be free and shall conceive seed and elsewhere it declares a seed shall serve him it shall be related i.e. a seed which is fit to be related our Ishmael says for twelve months and although there is no proof of this yet there is some indication because it is written wherefore O King let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor Talmud Masoda if there may be a lengthening of thy tranquility and it is written all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar and it is written at the end of twelve months the teaching is certainly our Ishmael's and he found a verse which mentions it. Period and repeats it for it is written thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Edom but why was it said that although there is no proof of this yet there is some indication it may be different with heathens upon whom God does not execute judgment immediately and another for three years etc. What sort of merit if I answer merit of studying Torah she is in the category of one who is not commanded and fulfills rather must it be merit of performing a commandment but does it merit of performing a commandment protect as much as that surely it has been taught the following did our Menahem son of our Jose expound for the commandment is a lamp and Torah is light the verse identifies the commandment with a lamp and Torah with light the commandment with a lamp to tell thee that as a lamp only protects temporarily so the fulfillment of a commandment only protects temporarily and Torah with light to tell thee that as light protects permanently so Torah protects permanently. And it states when thou walkest it shall lead thee etc. When thou walkest it shall lead thee as in this world when thou sleepest it shall watch over thee as in death and when thou awakest it shall talk with thee as in the hereafter parable of a man who is walking in the middle of the night and darkness and is afraid of thorns pits thistles wild beasts and robbers and also does not know the road in which he is going if a lighted torch is prepared for him he is saved from thorns pits and thistles but he is still afraid of wild beasts and robbers and does not know the road in which he is going when however dawn breaks he is saved from wild beasts and robbers but still does not know the road in which he is going when however he reaches the crossroads he is saved from everything another explanation is a transgression nullifies the merit of a commandment but not of study of Torah as it is said many waters cannot quench love said our Joseph a commandment protects and rescues. While one is engaged upon it, but when one is no longer engaged upon it, it protects but does not rescue. As for study of Torah, whether while one is engaged upon it or not, it protects and rescues. Rabbi Demur to this according to this reasoning did not do and Ahita fell engaged upon study of Torah. So why did it not protect them? But said Rabbi, while one is engaged upon study of Torah, it protects and rescues. And while one is not engaged upon it, it protects but does not rescue. As for a commandment, whether while one is engaged upon it or not, it protects but does not rescue. Rabbi said it is certainly merit of the study of Torah which causes the water to suspend its effect. And when you argue that she is in the category of one who is not commanded and fulfills, it can be answered granted that women are not so commanded still when they have their sons taught scripture and mission and wait for their husbands until they return from the school, should they not share the merit. With them what means the crossroads in the parable related above Arhista said it alludes to a disciple of the sages and the day of his death Arnaman B. Isaac said it alludes to a disciple of the sages and his fear of sin Marzitra said it alludes to a disciple of the sages when the tradition cited by him is in accord with the Halachai another explanation is a transgression nullifies the merit of a commandment but not of study of Torah Our Joseph said Armenahim son of Arhose expounded that verse as though it were interpreted from Sinai and had Dog and Ahitophel expounded it similarly they would not have pursued David as it is written saying God hath forsaken him etc. What verse did they expound that he see no unclean thing in the etc. They did not know however that a transgression nullifies the merit of a commandment but not of study of Torah what means he would utterly be caught in Edula said not like Simeon the brother of Ezra nor like our Yohanan of the princes. House, but like Hillel and Jimna, when Ardimi came, he related that Hillel and Jimna were brothers. Hillel engaged in study of Torah, and Jimna was occupied in business. Eventually, Shimna said to him, Come, let us become partners and divide the prophets of Bath. Call issued forth and proclaimed, If a man would give all the substance of his house, etc. Talmud, Maso to be hence declared, Ben is a man is under the obligation to teach our Eliezer. Says whoever teaches his daughter Torah teaches her. Obscenity can it enter your mind that by teaching her Torah, he actually teaches her obscenity. Read rather as though he had taught her obscenity. Our Rabbi said, What is our Eliezer's reason? Because it is written, I wisdom have made subtlety my dwelling. I.e., when wisdom enters a man, subtlety enters with it. And what do the rabbis make of the words I wisdom? They require them in accordance with the teaching of our Jose son of our Hanan. For our Jose son of our Hanan said, Words of Torah only remain with him. Who renders himself naked on their behalf as it is said, I wisdom have made nakedness my dwelling. Our Yohanan said, Words of Torah only remain with him who makes himself like one who is as nothing as it is said, Wisdom shall be found from nothing. Our Joshua says, A woman prefers, etc. What does he intend? He means that a woman prefers one cab and sensuality with it to nine cab with continence. He used to say, A foolish pietist, etc. What is a foolish pietist? Like e.g., a woman is drowning in the river and he says, It is improper for me to look upon her and rescue her. What is a cunning rogue? Like our Yohanan says, He who explains his case to the judge before the other party to the suit arrives. Our Rabbi says, He who gives a poor man a dinar to bring his possessions to the total of two hundred zoos. For we have learned he who possesses two hundred zoos may not take gleanings, forgotten sheep, the produce of the corner of the field or the poor tithe, but should he lack one dinar of the two hundred zoos even.
knows not what he says the Tanner recites and knows not what he says our rabbis taught who is an A.M. Hires whoever does not recite the Shema morning and evening with its accompanying benediction such as the statement of our Meir the sages say whoever does not put on the phylacteries Ben Aze says whoever has not the fringe upon his garment our Jonathan B. Joseph says whoever has sons and does not rear them to study Torah others say even if he learned scripture and Mishnah but did not attend upon Rabbinical scholars, he is an A.M. Hires if he learned scripture, but not Mishnah. He is a boy if he learned neither scripture nor Mishnah concerning him. Scripture declares, I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and mingle not with them that are given to change our Isaac. Said they are the men who learn legal decisions. This is self-evident. It is not because you might have supposed that the text meant they who repeat a sin and that it is according to the teaching of Arhuna. For Arhuna said, when a man commits a transgression and repeats it, it becomes to him something which is permissible. Therefore, he informs us that this is not the intention of the text. Attended, taught the Tanaim bring destruction upon the world. How can it occur to you to say that they bring destruction upon the world? Rabbanah said, because they decide points of law from their teachings. It has been similarly taught. Our Joshua said, Do they destroy the world? Rather, do they cultivate the world as it is said, as for the ways the world is for him? But the reference is to those who decide points of law from their teachings. A female Pharisee, etc. Our rabbis have taught a maiden who gives herself up to prayer, gad about widow and a minor whose months are not completed. Behold, these bring destruction upon the world, but it is not so for our Yohanan has said, We learn fear of sin from a maiden who gave herself up to prayer and confidence in the bestowal of reward from a gad about widow. Fear of sin from a maiden for our Yohanan heard a maiden fall upon her face and exclaim, Lord of the universe, thou hast created paradise and Gehenim, thou hast created righteous and wicked. May it be thy will that men should not stumble through me. Confidence in the bestowal of reward from a widow. A certain widow had a synagogue in her neighborhood, yet she used to come daily to the school of our Yohanan and pray there. He Said to her, My daughter, is there not a synagogue in your neighborhood? She answered him, Rabbi, but have I not the reward for the steps when it is said that they bring destruction upon the world? The reference is to such a person as Yohanni, the daughter of Rita, be what means a minor whose months are not completed. They explained it, thus it refers to a disciple who rebels against the authority of his teachers. Our Abba said it refers to a disciple who has not attained the qualification to decide questions of law and yet decides them. For our Abba declared that Arhuna said in the name of Rab what means that which is written, for she hath cast down many wounded, yet all her slain are a mighty host, for she hath cast down many wounded. This refers to a disciple who has not attained the qualification to decide questions of law and yet decides them, yet all her slain are a mighty host. This refers to a disciple who has attained the qualification to decide questions of law and does not decide. Them Talmud, Maso to be at what ages he qualified at forty, but it is not so for Rabbi decided questions of law. He did so only in a town where the rabbis were his equals and the plague of Pharisees, etc. Our rabbis have taught there are seven types of Pharisees: the Shikmai Pharisee, the Nikbi Pharisee, the Kaisei Pharisee, the Pestle Pharisee, the Pharisee who constantly exclaims, "What is my duty that I may perform it?" The Pharisee from love of God and the Pharisee from fear the Shikmai Pharisee. He is one who performs the action of Sheshem. The Nikbi Pharisee he is one who knocks his feet together. The Kaisei Pharisee are Naman B. Isaac said he is one who makes his blood to flow against walls. The Pestle Pharisee Rabbi Bishila said his head is bowed like a pestle in the mortar. The Pharisee who constantly exclaims, "What is my duty that I may perform it?" But that is a virgin. A. What he says is, "What further duty is for me that I may perform it?" The Pharisee from love and it. Pharisee from fear Abbe and Rabbah said to the Tana who was reciting this passage do not mention the Pharisee from love and the Pharisee from fear for Rab Judah has said in the name of Rabbi man should always engage himself in Torah and the commandments even though it be not for their own sake because from engaging in them not for their own sake he will come to engage in them for their own sake our Naman B. Isaac said what is hidden is hidden and what is revealed is revealed the great tribunal will exact punishment from those who rub themselves against the walls King Jan said to his wife fear not the Pharisees and the non-Pharisees but the hypocrites who ape the Pharisees because their deeds are the deeds of Zimri but they expect a reward like Phineas Mission our Simeon says merit does not cause the water of bitterness to suspend its effect and if you say that merit does cause the water of bitterness to suspend its effect you discredit the water in the case of all the women who drink it and defame the pure woman who drank it since people will say they were unclean only their merit caused the water to suspend its effect upon them rabbi says merit causes the water of bitterness to suspend its effect and she never bears a child or thrives but she gradually grows ill and finally dies through that death if her meal offering became defiled before it became hallowed in the ministering vessel behold it is like all meal offering similarly defiled and can be redeemed but if it became defiled after it had been hallowed in the ministering vessel behold it is like all meal offering similarly defiled and is destroyed the following have their meal offerings destroyed talmud masoda she who says i am unclean to thee when witnesses came and testified that she had misconducted herself she who says i refuse to drink when the husband refuses to let her drink and when her husband cohabited with her on the journey to jerusalem furthermore the meal Offerings of all women married to priests are destroyed. The meal offering of the daughter of an Israelite who is married to a priest is destroyed, but the meal offering of a priest's daughter who is married to an Israelite is eaten. What differences are there in law between a priest and a priest's daughter? The meal offering of a priest's daughter is eaten, but the meal offering of a priest is not eaten. A priest's daughter may become declassed, but a priest does not become declassed. A priest's daughter may render herself unclean by contact with the dead, but a priest may not render himself unclean by contact with the dead. A priest eats of the most holy class of offerings, but a priest's daughter may not eat of the most holy. What differences are there in law between a man and a woman? A man rends his clothes and loosens his hair, but a woman does not rend her clothes and loosen her hair. A man may vow that his son will become a Nazirite, but a woman may not vow that her son will become. A N A Z I R L T E A man may be shaved on account of the Nazarite of his father, but a woman cannot be shaved on account of the Nazarite of her father. A man may sell his daughter, but a woman may not sell her daughter. A man may give his daughter in betrothal, but a woman may not give her daughter in betrothal. A man is stoned naked, but a woman is not stoned naked. A man is hanged, but a woman is not hanged. A man is sold for his theft, but a woman is not sold for her theft. Gemara, our rabbis taught it. Meal offerings of all women who had married into the priesthood are to be destroyed. How is this in the case of the daughter of a priest Levite or Israelite who had married a priest? Her meal offering is not eaten because he has a share in it, nor is it treated as a holocaust because she has a share in it. But the handful is offered separately and the remainder separately. But there is to be applied here the rule that whatever sacrifice has a portion thereof treated as offerings made by fire comes. Under the law of Ye shall not burn our Judah son of our Simeon because he said they are burnt as fuel in accordance with the statement of our Eliezer for it has been taught our Eliezer says for a sweet savor thou mayest not bring it upon the altar but thou mayest bring it as fuel this is right for our Eliezer who holds this opinion but what is there to say as regards the rabbis who do not hold this opinion they declare that it is to be treated according to the view of our Eliezer B. Simeon for it has been taught our Eliezer B. Simeon says a handful is offered separately and the remainder is scattered upon the place of the ashes Talmud, Maso to be and even the rabbis only differ from our Eliezer B. Simeon in the matter of the meal offering brought by a sinner from among the priests which is something to be offered in its entirety but even here the rabbis admit the meal offering of the daughter of an Israelite who is married etc. What is the reason because scripture declared and every meal Offering of the priest shall be holy burnt, it shall not be eaten of the priest, but not of a priest's daughter. A priest's daughter may become declassed, but a priest does not become declassed. Whence have we this? Because scripture declared he shall not profane his seed among his people, his seed may become profaned, but he himself cannot become profaned. A priest's daughter may render herself unclean, etc. What is the reason scripture declared? Speak unto the priests, the sons of A
her without her clothing a man is hanged etc what is the reason scripture declared and thou hang him on a tree him but not her a man is sold for his theft but a woman is not sold for her theft what is the reason scripture declared and he shall be sold for his theft for his theft but not for her theft chapteriv mission a betrothed maiden and a childless widow waiting for her brother-in-law to decide whether he will marry her do not drink the water of bitterness and do not receive what is due under the marriage settlement as it is said when a wife being under her husband goeth aside thus excluding a betrothed maiden and a childless widow waiting for her brother-in-law a widow who had married a high priest a divorced woman or a halyza who had married an ordinary priest an illegitimate talmud masoda or a nethina who had married an israelite and an israelite's daughter who had married an illegitimate or a nathan do not drink the water of bitterness and do not receive what is due under the marriage settlement the following do not drink and do not receive the marriage settlement she who says I am unclean when witnesses came and testified that she had misconducted herself and she who says I refuse to drink when her husband is unwilling to let her drink or when her husband cohabited with her on the journey to Jerusalem she receives the marriage settlement but does not drink if the husband died before the women drank Beth Shammai declare that they receive the marriage settlement but do not drink and Beth Hillel declare that they either drink or do not receive the marriage settlement a wife who was pregnant by a former husband or was suckling a child by a former husband does not drink and does not receive the marriage settlement such is the statement of our mayor but the rabbis declare that he is able to separate from her and take her back after the period of two years a woman incapable of conception one too old to bear children and one who is unfit to bear children do not receive the marriage settlement and do not drink. Our Eliezer says he is able to marry another wife and have offspring by her. As for all other women, they either drink or do not receive the marriage settlement. The wife of a priest drinks and is permitted to her husband. The wife of a eunuch drinks through seclusion with all persons forbidden to her in marriage jealousy, necessitating the ordeal I has established with the exception of a minor and one not a man. In the following cases, a court of law can give warning when the husband is a deaf mute or has become insane or is imprisoned, not for the purpose of making her drink. Did they say this, but to disqualify her in connection with the marriage settlement? Our Jose says also to make her drink when her husband is released from prison. He makes her drink tomorrow. In the instances enumerated by the mission, the husband does not let her drink, but he may give her a warning. Whence is this learned? Our rabbis. Taught speak unto the children of Israel and say the addition of and say is to include a betrothed maiden and a childless widow waiting for her lover in the law respecting the warning whose is the teaching of our mission it is our Jonathan's for it has been taught being under thy husband excludes a betrothed maiden it is possible to think that we are also to exclude a childless widow therefore the text repeats the word man such as the statement of our Joshua our Jonathan says being under thy husband excludes a childless widow it is possible to think that we exclude a childless widow waiting for her lover but not a betrothed maiden therefore there is a text to declare when a wife being under her husband goeth aside thus excluding a betrothed maiden one teacher considers a betrothed maiden as more bound to him since the marriage ensues through him and they stone her on his account whereas the other teacher considers that a childless widow is more bound to her brother-in-law since the nuptial surrender is not lacking what then does our Jonathan make of the repetition of the word man he requires it to include the wife of a deaf mute man the wife of an imbecile and the wife of Talmud, Maso to be Talmud, Maso to be a weak-minded man and what does our Joshua make of the phrase being under her husband he requires it to draw an analogy between the husband and wife and between the wife and husband now the reason given why a betrothed maiden is excluded is because these scriptural texts occur otherwise I would have said that a betrothed maiden must drink but when our Ahabi Hanani came from the south he brought this teaching with him besides thine husband i.e. when intercourse with a husband had preceded intercourse with a paramour and not when intercourse with a paramour had preceded intercourse with a husband Rami Bihama said it is necessary to rely upon the text for such a contingency as when the fiancé had had intercourse with her in her father's house. Similarly with a childless widow the text would be required for the contingency as when the brother-in-law had had intercourse with her in her father-in-law's house but can you call her a childless widow waiting for her lover in such circumstances surely she is his legal wife for Rab has said he has acquired her as his wife in every respect it is as Samuel said he has only acquired her for the objects mentioned in the scriptural portion if that is so are we to say that Rab agrees with our Joshua and Samuel with our Jonathan Rab can reply I even agree with our Jonathan because from the fact that it was necessary for the text to exclude her it follows that she is his legal wife Talmud Masoda similarly Samuel can reply I even agree with our Joshua because from the fact that it was necessary for the text to include her it follows that she is not his wife at all the question was asked does a woman who transgresses the Jewish ethical code require to be warned in order to make her lose her marriage settlement or does she not require it do we say that since she transgresses the ethical code she does not require to be warned or perhaps warning is necessary because she may reform come and hear a betrothed maiden and a childless widow waiting for her brother-in-law do not drink and do not receive what is due under the marriage settlement in these instances a man does not let her drink but he may give her warning but for what purpose does he warn her is it not to make her lose her marriage settlement Abbe said no the purpose is to prohibit her to himself in marriage our papa said the purpose is to make her drink when she is married as it has been taught we may not warn a betrothed maiden with the object of making her drink while she is betrothed but we may warn a betrothed maiden with the object of making her drink when she is married Rabbi said come and hear a widow who had married a high priest a divorced woman or a halyza who had married an Ordinary priest and illegitimate or a nethina who had married an Israelite and an Israelite's daughter who had married an illegitimate or a nathan do not drink and do not receive what is due under the marriage settlement they do not drink but they receive a warning but for what purpose if you answer to make them prohibited to the husband behold they are already prohibited rather must it be to make them lose the marriage settlement Rab Judah of Discarda said no the purpose is to prohibit her to the paramour as to the husband as we learn just as she is prohibited to the husband so is she prohibited to the paramour our Hannah of Surah said come and here in the following cases a court of law can give warning when the husband is a deaf mute or has become insane or is imprisoned not for the purpose of making her drink did they say this but to disqualify her in connection with the marriage settlement conclude from this that she does require to be warned that conclusion is to be drawn. But why did not the other rabbis draw the inference from this passage they thought perhaps it is different in the circumstance where she had no cause at all to be afraid of her husband the question was asked if a woman transgresses the Jewish ethical code and the husband desired to retain her may he do so or may he not do we say that the all merciful depends upon the husband's objection to her conduct and in this case he does not object or perhaps since a husband normally objects he must object and divorce her come and here in the following cases a court of law can give warning when the husband is a deaf mute or has become insane or is imprisoned should you maintain that if the husband desired to retain her he may do so can the court of law do something of which the husband may not approve as a general rule when a woman transgresses the ethical code the husband is agreeable to the warning the question was asked if the husband retracted his warning is the warning Retracted or not, do we say that the all merciful depends upon the husband's warning and here the husband retracted it, or perhaps since he already gave a warning, he is unable to withdraw it. Come and here in the following cases a court of law can give warning when the husband is a deaf mute or has become insane or is imprisoned. Should you maintain that if a husband retracted his warning, his warning is retracted, can we perform an action which the husband may come and retract as a general rule? A man agrees with the opinion of a court of law, come and here and they assign to him two disciples of the sages, lest he cohabit with her on the journey. Should you maintain that if a husband retracted his warning, the warning is retracted, let him then withdraw it and cohabit with her. Why are disciples of the sages specified because they are learned men so that if he wishes to cohabit with her, they say to him, withdraw your warning and cohabit with her. Come and here, Arjashia said three things did. Zeira tell me as emanating from the men of Jerusalem if a husband retracted his warning the warning is retracted if a court of law wished to pardon an elder who rebelled against their decision they may pardon him and if the parents wish to forgive a stubborn and rebellious son they may forgive him when however I came to my colleagues in the south they agreed with me in respect of two but did
While under suspicion when he may never have a right to her now if you maintain that a warning may be retracted after seclusion then it can happen that he may again have a right to her because if he so desire he can retract his warning and cohabit therefore deduce from this that after seclusion it cannot be retracted draw that conclusion if the husbands died before the women drank Beth etc. On what point do the two schools differ Beth are of opinion that a bond which is due. For redemption is considered as having been redeemed Talmud, Maso to be Talmud, Maso to be whereas Beth are of opinion that a bond which is due for redemption is not considered as having been redeemed a wife who was pregnant by a former husband etc. Our nomin said in the name of Rabbi Abu the dispute is in connection with a barren woman and one too old to bear children but as for a woman incapable of conception all agree that she does not drink and does not receive her marriage. Settlement as it is said, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed, i.e., one whose way it is to conceive seed, thus excluding one whose way is not to conceive seed. An objection was raised if a man gives a warning to his betrothed or to his brother's childless widow, should she seclude herself with the other man before the marriage, she does not drink and does not receive her marriage settlement. Talmud, Masoday, a wife who was pregnant by a former husband or was suckling a child by a former husband, does not drink and does not receive the marriage settlement, such as the statement of our mayor, because our mayor says a man may not marry a woman who is pregnant by a former husband or is suckling a child by a former husband, and if he married her, he must let her go and never take her back. The sages, on the other hand, say he must let her go, but when the time arrives when he may marry her, he marries her if a youth married a barren woman or one too old to bear, and he did not previously. Have a wife and children, she does not drink and does not receive the marriage settlement. Our Eliza says he is able to marry another wife and have offspring by her, but if a man gives a warning to his betrothed or to his brother's childless widow and she secluded herself after marriage, she either drinks or does not receive the marriage settlement. If the wife is pregnant or suckling a child by himself, she either drinks or does not receive the marriage settlement. And if a youth married a barren woman or one too old to bear and he already had a wife and children, she either drinks or does not receive the marriage settlement. The legal wife of an illegitimate, the legal wife of a nathan, the wife of a proselyte or freed slave, and a woman incapable of conception either drink or do not receive the marriage settlement. Here, the woman incapable of conception is specified among the women who are required to drink. It is a refutation of Arnaman. Arnaman can reply that which I stated above is a Difference between Tanaim, whereas I agree with the following Tana, for it has been taught. Our Simeon B. Eliezer says a woman incapable of conception does not drink and does not receive the marriage settlement, as it is said, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed, i.e., one whose way is to conceive seed, thus excluding one whose way is not to conceive seed. What then do the rabbis make of the phrase, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed? They require it in accordance with the following teaching, then she shall be free and conceive seed, so that if she had been barren, she now becomes visited, such as the statement of our Akiva Arishmael said to him, in that case, all barren women will seclude themselves and be visited, and since this one did not seclude herself, she will be the loser. If so, what is the purpose of then she shall be free and shall conceive seed? If she formerly bore children in pain, she will now bear with ease. If formerly girls, she will now give birth to boys. If formerly Short she will now bear tall children, if formerly dark she will now have fair children, the legal wife of an illegitimate either drinks or does not receive the marriage settlement. This is self-evident what you might have said was that disqualified members of the community should not be multiplied, therefore he informs us that such a marriage is treated like any other the wife of a proselyte or freed slave and a woman incapable of conception either drink or do not receive the marriage settlement. This is self-evident what you might have said was speak unto the children of Israel but not to proselytes, therefore he informs us that proselytes are included in the law or as an alternative answer and say is to be interpreted as including the wife of a proselyte, etc. The wife of a priest drinks, etc. This is self-evident what you might have said was and she had not been violated, then she is prohibited to her husband, hence if she had been violated, she is permitted to him, but this woman being the wife of a priest is prohibited to him even if she had been violated and consequently she does not drink therefore he informs us that she does undergo the ordeal and is permitted to her husband this is self-evident Arhuna said this refers to a case where she becomes ill but if she becomes ill the water has proved her guilty it refers to a case where she becomes ill in other limbs what you might have said was that she had committed adultery and the fact that the water did not affect her in the usual way was due to her having acted immorally under force and as such she is prohibited to a priest therefore he informs us that she is permitted to her husband the wife of a eunuch drinks this is self-evident what you might have said was besides thine husband declared the all-merciful and this man being a eunuch does not come within the category of husband therefore he informs us that he is considered to be her husband for the law of the ordeal through seclusion with all persons forbidden to her in marriage jealousy is established this is self-evident Talmud, ma so to be what you might have said was the phrase and she be defiled occurs twice once with respect to the husband and the other with respect to the paramour but it only applies when she becomes prohibited to the paramour by this act of adultery but where she was in any event forbidden to him conclude that she is not barred from marrying him therefore he informs us that she has to undergo the ordeal although the paramour was forbidden to her in any case and if guilty she cannot marry her paramour with the exception of a minor etc a man declared the all merciful not a minor and one not a man whom does this exclude if I answer that it is to exclude one whose flesh is wasted behold Samuel has said a warning against seclusion can be given in connection with a man who is wasting and he disqualifies for partaking of the heap offering a warning against Seclusion can be given in connection with him. This is self evident. What you might have said was, and a man lie with her carnally declared the all merciful, and such a one does not come within that category. Therefore, he informs us that seclusion with him does bring the woman within the scope of the law, and he disqualifies for partaking of the heap offering. That is self evident. What you might have said was, he shall not profane his seed declared the all merciful one who had seed can profane. But one who had no seed cannot profane. Therefore, he informs us that he can profane if, on the other hand, it is to exclude a Gentile. Behold, our Hamdan has said a warning against seclusion can be given in connection with the Gentile, and he disqualifies for partaking of the heap offering. A warning against seclusion can be given in connection with him. This is self evident. What you might have said was, the phrase and she be defiled occurs twice once with respect to the husband and the other. With respect to the paramour, but it only applies when she becomes prohibited to the paramour by this act of adultery. But where she was in any event forbidden to him, conclude that she is not warned against seclusion. Therefore, he informs us that a warning can be given with respect to a gentile, and he disqualifies for partaking of the heap offering. This is self-evident. What you might have said was, and if a priest's daughter be married unto a stranger, declared the all merciful I.U.N. There was a legal marriage status, but not when there is no legal marriage status. Therefore, he informs us that a gentile does disqualify her. This is in agreement with our Yohanan, who said in the name of our Ishmael, whence is it that a gentile or a slave who had intercourse with a priest's daughter or Levite's daughter or an Israelite's daughter disqualifies her for the heap offering? As it is said, but if a priest's daughter be a widow or divorced, only in the case of a man where her widowhood or Divorce is legally recognized, thus excluding a Gentile or slave where her widowhood or divorce is not legally recognized. What then does the phrase and not a man exclude? Our Papa said it excludes an animal because there is not adultery in connection with an animal. Rabbi Parazika asked Arashi whence is the statement which the rabbis made that there is no adultery in connection with an animal because it is written, Thou shalt not bring the hire of a harlot or the wages of a dog, etc. And it has been taught the hire of a dog and the wages of a harlot are permissible as it is said, even both these the two specified in the text are abominations, but not for what is the purpose of the scriptural phrase carnally. It is required for this teaching carnally to the exclusion of something else. What means something else? Arashi said it excludes the case where he warned her against unnatural intercourse. Rabbi said to him, It excludes the case where he warned her against unnatural. Intercourse it is written as lying with womankind but said Rabbi excludes the case where he warned her against contact of the bodies Abbe said to him that is merely an obscene act and not adultery and did the all merciful prohibit a wife to her husband for an obscene act but said Abbe it excludes the case where
that he should marry a woman of ill repute who is such at the outset, but the statement should take this form if a man married a woman of ill repute and similarly read the daughter of a woman of ill repute, but the legal decision is let a man marry the daughter of a woman of ill repute rather than a woman of ill repute because our Talifah, the son of the West, resided in the presence of Arabah. If a woman is an adulteress, her children are legitimate since the majority of the acts of cohabitation are ascribed to the husband. Aram Rum asked, How is it if she was excessively dissolute according to him who maintains that a woman only conceives immediately before her period? The question does not arise because the husband may not know when this is and does not watch her, but the question does arise according to him who maintains that a woman only conceives immediately after the time of her purification. How is it then does he watch her since he knows when this occurs or perhaps? This is of no account since she is excessively dissolute. The question remains unanswered in the following cases. A court of law, etc. Our rabbis taught man why does scripture repeat the word to include the wife of a deaf man, the wife of an imbecile, the wife of a weak-minded man, and cases where the husband has gone on a journey to a distant country or is imprisoned at a court of law can give the warning to disqualify them in connection with the marriage settlement. It is possible to think that the warning is also to make them drink. Therefore, there is a text to say, then shall the man bring his wife. Our Jose says it is also to make the woman drink so that when the husband is released from prison, he makes her drink on what do they differ? The rabbis are of the opinion that we require that the same man who warned her must bring her, whereas our Jose is of the opinion that we do not require that the same man who warned her must bring her. Our rabbis taught when a wife being under her husband. Go with aside this is to compare a husband with a wife and a wife with a husband for what practical purpose are she's hate said just as he does not make her drink if he is blind as it is written and it be hid from the eyes of her husband so she does not drink if she is blind or as she said just as a woman who is lame or armless does not drink for it is written Talmud, ma so to be and the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and put the meal offering in her hand so he does not make her drink. If he is lame or armless mar son of Arashi said just as a dumb woman does not drink for it is written and the woman shall say amen amen so he does not make her drink if he is dumb chapterv mission just as the water proves her so the water proves him as it is said and shall enter twice just as she is prohibited to the husband so is she prohibited to the paramour as it is said defiled and is defiled this is the statement of our Akiva Arjashua said thus use Tekarai Bihakas of to expound. Rabbi says the word defiled occurs twice in the scriptural portion one referring to her being prohibited to the husband and the other to the paramour on that day are Akiva expounded and every earthen vessel wherein do any of them falleth whatsoever is in it shall be unclean it does not stay tame is unclean but yet by e to make others unclean this teaches that a loaf which is unclean in the second degree makes whatever it comes in contact with unclean in the third degree are Joshua said who will remove the dust from thine eyes are Yohanan and Bizakai since thou sayest that another generation is destined to pronounce clean a loaf which is unclean in the third degree on the ground that there is no text in the Torah according to which it is unclean is not our Akiva that people he adduces a text in the Torah according to which it is unclean is whatsoever is in it shall be unclean on that day are Akiva expounded and ye shall measure without the city for the east side two thousand cubits etc but Another text states from the wall of the city outward 8,000 cubits round about it is impossible to say that it was 8,000 cubits since it has been already stated 2,000 cubits and it is impossible to say that it was 2,000 cubits since it has been already stated 8,000 cubits how was it then 8,000 cubits for the suburb and 2,000 cubits for the Sabbath limit our Eliezer the son of our Jose the Galilean says 8,000 cubits for the suburb and 2,000 cubits for fields and vineyards on that day our Akiva expounded and sang Moses and the children of Israel the song unto the Lord and spake saying there was no need for the word saying so why was it added it teaches that the Israelites responded to every sentence after Moses in the manner of reading Hallel I will sing unto the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously on that account is the word saying mentioned our Nehemiah says in the manner of reading the Shema and not Hallel on that day our Joshua be. Harkness expounded job only serve the Holy One blessed be he from love as it is said though he slain me yet will I wait for him and should it be still doubtful whether the meaning is I will wait for him or I will not wait there is another text to declare till I die I will not put away mine integrity from me this teaches that what he did was from love our Joshua Behan and I said who will remove the dust from thine eyes are Yohanan Bizakai since thou hast been expounding all thy life that job only served the all present from fear as it is said that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil did not Joshua the people of that people teach that what he did was from love Gemara the Mishnah states so the water proves him whom if I say that it is the husband what has the husband done should you reply Talmud Masoda that if there be sin in him the water proves him it may be asked should there be sin in him on his own account does the water prove her for her own Sin and behold it has been taught and the man shall be free from iniquity and that woman shall bear her iniquity i.e. so long as the husband is free from iniquity the water proves his wife but if the husband is not free from iniquity the water does not prove his wife should the mission on the other hand refer to the paramour it should have used the same phraseology as in the continuation is just as she is prohibited to the husband so is she prohibited to the paramour it certainly refers to the paramour but in the first clause since it uses the word her it uses the word him and in the continuation since it used the word husband it used the word paramour as it is said and shall enter twice the question was asked does the teacher in the mission mean shall enter and shall enter or and shall enter and shall enter come and here just as she is prohibited to the husband so is she prohibited to the paramour as it is said defiled and is defiled but it is still questionable whether the teacher in the mission draws the conclusion from the repetition of defiled or from the conjunction in defiled and is defiled come and here since he states in the continuation rabbi says the word defiled occurs twice in the scriptural portion one referring to the husband and the other to the paramour it follows that it is our Akiva who expounds the conjunction and consequently for our Akiva there are six texts containing the phrase and shall enter one for the command regarding her and one for the command regarding him one for the action regarding her and one for the action regarding him one for the notification regarding her and one for the notification regarding him for rabbi on the other hand there are three texts one for the command one for the action and one for the notification but once does rabbi derive the teaching just as the water proves her so the water proves him he derives it from the following teaching for it has been taught and make the belly to swell and the thigh to fall away, i.e., the belly and thigh of the paramour. You say it is the belly and thigh of the paramour, perhaps it is not so, but the belly and thigh of the adulteress, since it is stated, and her belly shall swell, and her thigh shall fall away. Here it is clearly the belly and thigh of the adulteress, which are referred to. So, how am I to explain and make the belly to swell and the thigh to fall away? It refers to the belly and thigh of the paramour, and the other it indicates that the priest informs her that the water affects the belly first, and then the thigh so as not to discredit the water of bitterness, and the other, if that were so, it should have been written her belly and her thigh. What means belly and thigh without specification conclude that the reference is to the paramour, but am I to suppose that the phrase without specification is intended only for this? If that were so, it should have been written his belly and his thigh. What means belly and thigh draw to? Inferences therefom are Joshua said thus use Zechariah etc. Our rabbis taught why is it mentioned three times in the scriptural portion if she be defiled she be defiled and she is defiled one to make her prohibited to the husband one to the paramour and one for partaking of the heave offering this is the statement of our Akiva Ishmael said it is an fortiori conclusion if a divorced woman who is allowed to partake of the heave offering is prohibited to marry into the priesthood how much more must a woman who is prohibited from partaking of the heave offering be prohibited to marry into the priesthood for what purpose is it stated and she be defiled and she be not defiled if she be defiled why should she drink and if she be not defiled why does he make her drink scripture informs you that in a doubtful case she is prohibited from this you can draw an analogy with respect to the defilement caused by a creeping thing if in the case of a suspected woman where the effect is not the same should the act be in error or in presumption under compulsion or of free will there is a consequence of being prohibited when there is a doubt as when there is certainty how much more so must there be the consequence of defilement in a case of doubt as in a case of certainty with a creeping thing where the effect is the same whether the contact
partake of the heave offering and are Ishmael answers him with a statement about the priesthood and further whence does our Akiva derive the rule that the suspected woman cannot marry into the priesthood should you answer that with reference to this rule about the priesthood a scriptural text is not necessary Talmud, Masoda since a woman about whom there is a doubt whether she is immoral is treated like an immoral woman and for the rule about the heave offering a scriptural verse should likewise be unnecessary since a woman about whom there is a doubt whether she is immoral is treated like an immoral woman but according to our Akiva there are four texts where the word defiled occurs one to prohibit the woman to the husband one to the paramour one to the priesthood and one for the heave offering whereas according to our Ishmael there are only three texts one to prohibit her to the husband one to the paramour and one for the heave offering and the prohibition. Regarding the priesthood he deduces by a fortiori reasoning once however does our Ishmael know that a text is required for the heave offering and that the prohibition regarding the priesthood is to be deduced by a fortiori reasoning perhaps a text is required as regards the priesthood and the heave offering is permitted to her he can reply to you this is proved by the analogy of the husband and paramour just as the prohibition respecting husband and paramour is in force already during the lifetime of the husband so also the prohibition respecting the heave offering is likewise to come into force during his lifetime to the exclusion of that respecting the priesthood which comes into effect after death our Akiva on the other hand does not accept the analogy of the husband and paramour and even if he accepted it a teaching which is deducible by a fortiori reasoning scripture took the trouble to write down our said in the name of Rab the difference between the case where there is a rational being to be interrogated and one where there is no rational being to be interrogated is derived from the following text and the flesh that touch it any unclean thing shall not be eaten when the thing is certainly unclean it may not be eaten hence when there is a doubt whether it is unclean or clean it may be eaten consider now the continuation and as for the flesh all that is clean shall eat sacrificial flesh a man who is certainly clean may eat but when there is a doubt whether he is unclean or clean he may not eat is not then the conclusion to be drawn from this that in one case there is a rational being to be interrogated and not in the other the statement of Argital in the name of Rab was necessary and it was also necessary to derive the rule of defilement caused by a creeping thing from the case of the suspected woman for if it had only been based on the teaching of Rab I would have said that the rule was the same whether the defilement occurred in a private domain or a public place therefore it was also necessary to derive it from the case of a suspected woman if further it had been derived solely from the case of the suspected woman I would have said that the rule only applied when that which was touched and that which touched it were both rational beings so it is necessary to have Rab's teaching on that day our Akiva expounded and every earthen vessel etc since it has no basis in scripture according to which it is unclean why should it be unclean Rab Judah said in the name of Rab it has none from the Torah but it has one as a deduction from a fortiori reasoning if a tibolyam who is allowed with non holy food disqualifies the heave offering how much more so must a loaf unclean in the second degree which is disqualified in the case of non holy food render the heave offering unclean in the third degree it can however be objected this applies to a tibolyam because he may be a source of primary defilement but it may be answered you can draw the necessary conclusion Talmud, Ma so to be from a tibolyam who was defiled by a creeping thing should it be objected that it applies only to a tibolyam who was defiled by a creeping thing because he belongs to that category in which there may be a primary source of defilement the case of an earthenware vessel proves the contrary and should it be objected that it applies to an earthenware vessel because its interior space renders unclean. The case of tibolyam proves the contrary thus the original reasoning by a fortiori holds good since the characteristic of the tibolyam is unlike the characteristic of the earthenware vessel and vice versa the point they have in common is that they are allowed with non-holy food but disqualify the heave offering how much more than must a loaf unclean in the second degree which disqualifies in the case of non-holy food disqualify the heave offering another generation however might. Object what is the point common to them both that in each there is a characteristic which makes for severity but our Yohanan does not raise an objection on the ground that there is in each a characteristic which makes for severity it has been taught our Jose said once is it that with sacrificial food there is disqualification with the fourth degree of defilement it is a deduction from a fortiori reasoning if one lacking atonement who is permitted with the heave offering is disqualified as regards sacrificial food how much more does the third degree which is disqualified with the heave offering create a fourth degree of defilement with sacrificial food we learned the rule about a third degree of defilement with sacrificial food from the Torah and a fourth degree from a fortiori reasoning once have we it from the Torah that there is a third degree with sacrificial food as it is written and the flesh that touch it any unclean thing shall not be eaten do we not deal here with Flesh that touched something unclean in the second degree and the all-merciful declared it shall not be eaten. A fourth degree is derived from a fortiori reasoning as we stated above our Yohanan said I do not understand the master's reason since its refutation is by its side this food which is made unclean by contact with the tibolyam proves the contrary inasmuch as it is disqualified in the case of heave offering but does not create a fourth degree of defilement with sacrificial food for it. Has been taught Abbasal said a tibolyam is unclean in the first degree as regards sacrificial food to create two further degrees of defilement and one degree of disqualification. Our mayor says he creates one further degree of defilement and one of disqualification. The sages say just as he disqualifies food or liquids of the heave offering so he disqualifies sacrificial food and drinks to this our papa demurred once is it that our Jose holds the same view as the rabbis perhaps he holds the same. View as Abbasal who says that the Tibolyam creates two further degrees of defilement and one of disqualification if it enter your mind that he holds the same view as Abbasal let him deduce the rule about a fourth degree of defilement with sacrificial food from the case of food that is rendered unclean by contact with the Tibolyam as follows if a Tibolyam is himself allowed with not holy food and yet you say that food which is unclean through him creates a fourth degree with sacrificial food Talmud, Masoda Talmud, Masoda then that which is unclean in the third degree through contact with what is unclean in the second degree the second degree which is itself forbidden in the case of not holy food must all the more create a fourth degree with the holy and should you reply as stated above it can however be objected it applies to a Tibolyam because he may be a primary source of defilement behold he or Jose derived his argument from one lacking. Atonement and he did not raise this objection. R.C. said in the name of Rab. Another version is Rabbi B. As he said in the name of Rab. Our Mayor, our Jose, our Joshua, our Eliezer, and our Eliezer all hold the view that what is unclean in the second degree does not create a third degree with non holy food. Our Mayor, for we have learned everything that requires immersion in water according to the statement of the scribes defiles the holy, disqualifies the heave offering, and is permitted with the non holy end. With the tithe, such is the statement of our Mayor, but the sages prohibit in the case of the tithe. Our Jose, as we have stated above, for if it were so, then let him derive a fourth degree with the heave offering and a fifth with the sacrificial food. Our Joshua, for we have learned our Eliezer says he who eats food unclean in the first degree is unclean in the first degree. If he eats food unclean in the second degree, he is unclean in the second degree, and similarly with the third degree, our Joshua says he. Who eats food unclean in the first or second degree is unclean in the second degree. If he eats food unclean in the third degree, he is unclean in the second degree as regards the sacrificial food, but not unclean in the second degree as regards the heave offering. This is said of non holy food which was prepared in the purity of the heave offering. This means does it not when it is in the purity of the heave offering, but not when it is in the purity of the sacrificial food, conclude then that he holds that normally what is unclean in the second degree does not create a third degree with the non holy Rlazer, for it has been taught Rlazer says the following three are like the first degree of defilement in the case of the sacrificial food, the non holy and the heave offering. It creates two further degrees of defilement and one of disqualification with the sacrificial food. It creates one further degree of defilement and one of disqualification with the heave offering, and it creates one degree of disqualification with the non-holy Arlizer for we have learned Arlizer says halal may be taken from dough which is pure on account of that which is defiled how is this there are two portions of dough one pure and the other defiled he takes a quantity sufficient for halal from the dough from which its halal had not been removed and places a piece less than the size of an egg in the center of the defiled dough so that it may be considered that halal had been ta
does not create a third with the non-holy and here they differ on whether it is permitted to apply the laws of defilement to non-holy food in the land of Israel. One holds that it is permitted to apply the laws of defilement to non-holy food in the land of Israel. The others hold that it is prohibited on that day are Akiva expounded and ye shall measure etc. On what do they differ? One holds that the regulations concerning the Sabbath limit are an institution of the Torah whereas the other holds. They are an institution of the rabbis or rabbis taught on that day are Akiva expounded at the time the Israelites ascended from the Red Sea they desired to utter a song and how did they render the song like an adult who reads the hell for a congregation and they respond after him with the leading word according to this explanation Moses said I will sing unto the Lord and they responded I will sing unto the Lord Moses said for he hath triumphed gloriously and they responded I will sing unto the Lord our Elizer son of our Jose the Galilean declares like a miner who reads the hell for a congregation and they repeat after him all that he says according to this explanation Moses said I will sing unto the Lord and they responded I will sing unto the Lord Moses said for he hath triumphed gloriously and they responded for he hath triumphed gloriously our Nehemiah declares like a school teacher who recites the Shema in the synagogue this he begins first and they respond after him on what do they differ? Our Akiva holds that the word saying refers to the first clause. Our Elizer, son of our Jose the Galilean, holds that saying refers to every clause. And our Nehemiah holds that and spake indicates that they sang all together and saying that Moses began first. Our rabbis taught our Jose the Galilean expounded at the time the Israelites ascended from the Red Sea. They desired to utter a song. And how did they render the song? The babe lay upon his mother's knees and the suckling sucked at his mother's breast. When they beheld the Sheshana, the babe raised his neck and the suckling released the nipple from his mouth. And they exclaimed, This is my God, and I will praise him as it is said out of the mouths of babes and sucklings. Hast thou established strength? Our mayor used to say, Whence is it that even the embryos in their mothers womb uttered a song as it is said, Talmud, Masoda, bless ye the Lord in the congregations, even the Lord from the fountain of Israel, but these could not behold. The Shechinah or Tanhum said the abdomen became for them a kind of transparent medium and they did behold it on that day our Joshua B. Harkness expounded job only served etc. But let him see how the word low is spelled if it is written with lamed and Allah then it means not and if with lamed and Bob then it means for him but is the meaning not wherever the spelling is lamed and Allah can it apply to in all their affliction there was affliction to him the word low to him is spelled lamed and Allah but does it here also signify not and should you say that here too it means not behold it continues with and the angel of his presence saved them but sometimes it has one meaning and at other times the other meaning it has been taught our mayor says it is declared of job one that feared God and it is declared of Abraham thou fearest God just as fearing God with Abraham indicates from love so fearing God with job indicates from love whence however have we it in connection with Abraham himself that he was motivated by love as it is written the seed of Abraham who loved me what difference is there between one who acts from love and one who acts from fear the difference is that indicated in this teaching our Simeon B. Eliezer says greater is he who acts from love than he who acts from fear because with the latter the merit remains effective for a thousand generations but with the former it remains effective for two thousand generations here it is written unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments and elsewhere it is written and keep his commandments to a thousand generations but in this latter passage it is likewise written with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations in the first verse cited the word thousand is attached to them that love me whereas in the second verse cited the word thousand is attached to keep his commandments two disciples were one sitting in the presence of Rabba one said to him in my dream they read to me, O oh, how great is thy goodness which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. The other said to him in my dream, They read to me, but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice, let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. He replied to them, Both of you are completely righteous rabbis, but one is actuated by love and the other by fear. Chapter -E Mishnah. If a man warned his wife and she secluded herself with another man, even if he heard that she had done so from a flying bird, he divorces her and gives her the marriage settlement. Such is the statement of our Eliezer. Our Joshua says he does not do this until women who spin by moonlight discuss her. If one witness said, I saw that she committed misconduct, she does not drink the water. Not only that, but even a slave male or female is believed also to disqualify her for the marriage settlement. Her mother-in-law, her mother-in-law's daughter, her associate wife, her. Sister-in-law and her stepdaughter are believed not to disqualify her for the marriage settlement, but that she should not drink it is a proper conclusion that if the first evidence that the woman had secluded herself with the man which does not prohibit her to her husband for all time is not established by fewer than two witnesses, is it not right that the final evidence that she had misconducted herself which prohibits her to him for all time should not be established by fewer than two witnesses? Therefore, there is a text to state, and there be no witness against her, i.e., whatever evidence there may be against her, I as believed, even if it be only one witness. And with respect to the first evidence about her seclusion with the man, that one witness suffices may be argued by a fortiori reasoning as follows: If Talmud, Maso to be the final evidence regarding misconduct which prohibits her to her husband for all time is established by one witness, is it not proper that the first? Evidence which does not prohibit her to him for all time should be established by one witness. Therefore, there is a text to state because he hath found some unseemly matter in her, and elsewhere it states at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall a matter be established as the matter mentioned in this latter case must be confirmed by the testimony of two witnesses. So also here in the case of the suspected woman, the matter must be confirmed by the testimony of two witnesses. If one witness says that she misconducted herself, and another witness says that she did not, or if a woman says of her that she misconducted herself, and another woman says that she did not, she drinks the water. If one witness says that she misconducted herself, and two say that she did not, she drinks the water. If two say that she misconducted herself, and one says that she did not, she does not drink it. Tomorrow, why does the teacher in the Mishnah use the scriptural text because he hath? Found some unseemly matter in her, he should have used the teaching against her, i.e., against her in the matter of misconduct, but not in the matter of warning against her in the matter of misconduct, but not in the matter of seclusion. He does also intend to say this, therefore, there is a text to state against her, i.e., against her in the matter of misconduct, but not in the matter of warning against her in the matter of misconduct, but not in the matter of seclusion. Whence, however, have we it? That one witness is not believed in an ordinary charge of infidelity where there was neither warning nor seclusion here in connection with infidelity, the word matter occurs, and it also occurs in the law of evidence, as with the latter charge is established by two witnesses, so is the former established by two witnesses. If one witness says that she misconducted herself, the reason why one witness is not accepted is because there is another who contradicts him, but where nobody Contradicts him one witness is believed once have we this rule because our rabbis have taught and there be no witness against her the text refers to two witnesses you say that it refers to two witnesses but perhaps it is not so and even one suffices there is a teaching to declare one witness shall not rise up against a man etc from the fact that it is stated a witness shall not rise up against a man do and not know that one is intended why is there a teaching to declare one witness this establishes the rule that wherever it is stated witness it signifies two unless the text specifies one and in the case under discussion the all merciful declares that when there are not two witnesses against her but only one and she has not been violated she is forbidden to her husband but since according to the Torah one witness is believed how is it possible for another to contradict him surely Allah has said wherever the Torah accepts the testimony of one witness he is regarded as two and the evidence of one is of no account when opposed by two but said will read the mission as she does not drink and our Isaac similarly declared that she does not drink but our high said that she does drink the view of Allah creates a difficulty against the statement of our high there is no difficulty one statement refers to evidence given simultaneously and the other when one witness follows the other we learned if one witness says that she misconducted herself and two say that she did not she drinks the water consequently if there was one against her and one for her she would not drink this is a refutation of our high our high can reply and according to your view that she does not drink consider the next clause if two say that she misconducted herself and one says that she did not she does not drink it consequently if there was one against her and one for her she
Taking the severe view but to take the lenient view we do not follow the majority therefore the mission informs us of one case where the accused must drink and one where she does not drink and in each the majority is followed C-H-A-P-T-E-R-V-I-I mission the following may be recited in any language the section concerning the suspected woman the confession made at the presentation of the tithe the shima the prayer the grace after meals the oath concerning testimony and the oath concerning a deposit the following are recited in the holy tongue the declaration made at the offering of the first fruits the formula of Elizabeth blessings and curses the priestly benediction the benediction of the high priest the section of the king the section of the calf whose neck is broken and addressed to the people by the priest anointed to accompany the army in battle whence is it that the declaration made at the offering of the first fruits must be in Hebrew it is stated and thou shalt answer and say before the Lord thy God and elsewhere it is stated and the Levites shall answer and say as the latter must be in the holy tongue so must the former be in the holy tongue whence is it that the formula of Elizabeth must be in Hebrew it is stated and she shall answer and say and elsewhere it is stated and the Levites shall answer and say as the latter must be in the holy tongue so must the former be in the holy tongue our Judah says it is derived from the text and she shall answer. And say thus, i.e., she must say it in this language. How were the blessings and curses pronounced when Israel crossed the Jordan and came to Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal, which are by Samaria? This is in the vicinity of Shechem, which is in the vicinity of the Terebinth of Morah, and it is said, Are they not beyond Jordan, etc.? And elsewhere it states, And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the Terebinth of Morah, as the Terebinth of Morah mentioned in this latter verses. Shechem, so the Terebinth of Morah mentioned in the former verses, Shechem, six tribes ascended the summit of Mount Gerizim, six tribes ascended the summit of Mount Ebal, and the priests and Levites with the ark were stationed below in the center, the priests surrounding the ark, the Levites surrounding the priests, and all Israel on the side, and that side, as it is said, and all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on the side, the ark, and on that side, etc., they turned there. Faces towards Mount Gerizim and opened with the blessing, blessed be the man that make not a graven or molten image, and both parties respond, Amen. They then turn their faces towards Mount Ebal and opened with the curse, curse be the man that make the graven or molten image, and both parties respond, Amen. So they continue until they complete the blessings and curses after that they brought the stones, built the altar, and plastered it with plaster, and inscribed thereon all the words of it. Torah in seventy languages, as it is said very plainly, then they took the stones and went Talmud, Maso to be, and spent the night in their place. Tomorrow, once have we that the section concerning the suspected woman may be recited in any language as it is written, and the priest shall say unto the woman in whatever language he speaks, our rabbis taught they explain to her in any language she understands for what reason she is about to drink the water, in what sort of vessel she drinks what. She had misconducted herself and in what manner she had misconducted herself for what reason she is about to drink the water because of her husband's warning and her subsequent seclusion in what sort of vessel she drinks in the pots heard why she had misconducted herself because of levity and childishness and in what manner she had misconducted herself whether in error or deliberately under compulsion or of free will but why all this so as not to discredit the water of bitterness. The confession made at the presentation of the tithe once have we it that this may be recited in any language as it is written and thou shalt say before the Lord thy God I have put away the hallowed things out of mine house and the deduction is to be drawn from the analogous use of the word say in connection with the suspected woman that it may be in whatever language he speaks said to but let the deduction be drawn from the analogous use of the word say in connection with it. Love it as follows as there it means that it must be in the holy tongue so here it must be in the holy tongue he answered we deduce the meaning of an unqualified use of say from another occurrence of an unqualified use of say but we do not deduce the meaning of an unqualified use of say from a passage where the expression answer and say occurs it has been taught our Simeon B.O. he said a man should recount what is to his credit in a low voice and what is to his discredit in a loud voice. That he is to recount what is to his credit in a low voice is learned from the confession made at the presentation of the tithe and what is to his discredit in a loud voice from the declaration made at the offering of the first fruits but should one recount what is to his discredit in a loud voice surely our Yohanan has said in the name of our Simeon B.O. why was it instituted that the prayer should be recited softly so as not to put transgressors to shame for behold scripture made no. Distinction as to the place of a sin offering or burnt offering do not read in our Simeon's statement his discredit but his trouble as it has been taught and he shall cry unclean unclean it is necessary for the leper to make his trouble known to the multitude so that the multitude may pray on his behalf and thus everybody to whom a calamity has occurred should make it known to the multitude so that the multitude may pray on his behalf the above text states are you said in the name of our Simeon B. Why was it instituted that the prayer should be recited softly so as not to put transgressors to shame for behold scripture made no distinction as to the place of a sin offering or burnt offering but it is not so for there is a difference in the treatment of the blood the blood of a sin offering was applied above the red line which ran round the altar whereas the blood of a burnt offering was applied below it only the priest would know that there is however the difference. That for a sin offering a female animal was sacrificed and for a burnt offering a male being covered by the fat tail the sex would not be recognized that is quite right with a female lamb but what of a female goat in that case the man brought the shame upon himself because he should have offered a lamb but offered a goat what however of the sin offering brought for idolatry when only a goat suffices in that case let him experience shame so that he may receive atonement the shema whence. Have we it that this may be recited in any language as it is written here O Israel in any language you understand our rabbis taught the shema must be recited as it is written such is the statement of rabbi but the sages say in any language what is rabbi's reason scripture declares and these words shall be i.e. they must remain as they are and what is the reason of the rabbi's scripture declares here O Israel in any language you understand but for the rabbis it is likewise written and these words shall be that indicates that one may not read it in the wrong order and whence does rabbi derive the rule that one may not read it in the wrong order from the fact that the text uses these words and not merely words and the rabbis they draw no inference from the use of these words instead of words but for rabbi it is likewise written here he requires that for the rule make audible to your ears what you utter with your lips and the rabbis they agree with him who said that if one has not recited the shema audibly he has fulfilled his obligation it is possible to say that rabbi holds talmud masoda that the whole torah may be read in any language for if you maintain that it may be read only in the holy tongue wherefore had the all merciful to write and these words shall be it is necessary because it is written here it is likewise possible to say that the rabbis hold that the whole torah must be read in the holy tongue for if you maintain that it can be read in any language wherefore had the all-merciful to write the word here it is necessary because it is written and these words shall be the prayer it may be recited in any language because it is only supplication and one may pray in any language he wishes but may the prayer be recited in any language behold Rab Judah has said a man should never pray for his needs in Aramaic for our Yohanan declared if anyone prays for his needs in Aramaic the ministering angels do not pay attention to him because they do not understand that language there is no contradiction one referring to the prayer of an individual and the other to that of a congregation and do not the ministering angels understand Aramaic behold it has been taught Yohanan the high priest heard a bath call issue from within the holy of holies announcing the young men who went to wage war against Antioch have been victorious it also happened with Simeon the righteous that he heard a bath call issue from within the holy of Holy's announcing an old is the decree which the enemy intended to introduce into the temple then was Caius Caligula slain and his decrees an old they noted down the time when the bath call spoke and it tallied now it was in Aramaic that it spoke if you wish I can say that it is different with the bath call since it occurs for the purpose of being generally understood or if you wish I can say that it was Gabriel who spoke for a master has declared Gabriel came and taught Joseph the seventy languages the grace after meals that this may be recited in any language is derived from the text and thou shalt eat and be full and thou shalt bless the Lord thy God in any language wherein thou utterest the benediction the oath concerning testimony that this may be uttered in any language is derived from the text and if anyone sin in that he heareth the voice of adjuration in whatever language he hears it the oath concerning a deposit that this may be uttered in any
require it to indicate that each act invalidates the ceremony by its omission and Arjuna from the use of kaka instead of koh and the rabbis they draw no inference from the use of kaka instead of koh talmud ma so to be what then does Arjuna make of the phrase and she shall answer and say he requires it for the purpose of deducing that the levites must pronounce the blessings and curses in the holy tongue but let him derive that from the analogous use of the word voice in connection with Moses he had learned from his teacher to draw an inference from the analogous use of the word answer but not from voice it has been similarly taught Arjuna says wherever in scripture the words thus both in the form of koh and kaka or answer and say occur what has to be spoken must only be in the holy tongue the word koh is found in thus ye shall bless kaka in connection with halitza and answer and say with the levites how were the blessings and curses pronounced when Israel Cross the Jordan, etc. Our rabbis taught, are they not beyond Jordan? This means on the other side of the Jordan and beyond such is the statement of Arjuna behind the way of the coming of the sun, the place where the sun dawns in the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the Arab Ayi Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebel, where the Kutians dwell over against Gilgal. This means near Gilgal, beside the Terebinth of Morah. This means Shechem elsewhere. It states, and Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem unto the Terebinth of Morah, as the Terebinth of Morah mentioned in this latter verse is Shechem. So in the former verse, it means Shechem. It has been taught, our Eliezer, son of our Jose, said in this connection, I proved the Samaritan scriptures to be false. I said to them, You have falsified your Torah, but you gained nothing thereby. You declare that the Terebinth of Morah means Shechem. We too admit that the Terebinth of Morah means Shechem. We learned this by an inference from. Analogy, but how have you learned it? Our Eliezer said, Are they not beyond the Jordan? This means near the Jordan, because if it signified on the other side of the Jordan and beyond, is it not written? And it shall be when ye are passed over Jordan behind the way of the coming of the sun. This means the place where the sun sets in the land of the Canaanites, i.e., the land of the Hivites, which dwell in the Arab, but do they not dwell among mountains and hills over against Gilgal, but they could not. See Gilgal, our Eliezer B. Jacob says, Scripture has here only the intention of pointing out to them the route for the second part of the journey, as it had pointed out to them the route for the first part of the journey. The way this means proceed along the high road and not through fields and vineyards which dwell, this means pass through inhabited territory and not through deserts in the Arab, but this means pass through the plain and not through mountains and hills. Our rabbis taught how. Did Israel cross the Jordan each day during the journey in the wilderness? The ark journeyed behind two standards, but on this day of crossing it journeyed in front, as it is said, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you each day. The levites carried the ark, but on this day the priests carried it, as it is said, and it shall come to pass when the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, etc. It has been taught, our Jose says on three occasions, the priests carried the ark when they crossed the Jordan, when they walked round Jericho, and when they deposited it in its place, Talmud, Masoda, when the feet of the priests were dipped in the water, the water flowed backward, as it is said, and when they that bore the ark were come unto the Jordan, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up in one heap, what was the height of the water, twelve mil by twelve mil, in accordance with the dimensions of the camp of Israel, such is the statement of Arjuna and our Eliezer B. Simeon said to him, according to your explanation, which is swifter man or water, surely water is swifter, therefore the water must have returned and drowned them. It rather teaches that the waters were heaped up like stacks to a height of more than three hundred mil until all the kings of the east and west saw them, as it is said, and it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were beyond Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard how that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until they were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel, and also Rahab the harlot said to Joshua's messengers, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea, etc., and it continues, and as soon as we heard it, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more, etc., while they were. Still in the Jordan, Joshua said to them, Know why you are crossing the Jordan, it is on condition that you disinherit the inhabitants of the land from before you, as it said, and ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, etc. If you do this well and good, otherwise the water will return and drown you. Other come what means other come me, and you while they were still in the Jordan, Joshua said to them, Take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, etc. And it continues that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones, etc. It was to be a monument for the children that their fathers had crossed the Jordan while they were still in the Jordan, Joshua said to them, Take you hence out of the midst of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood from twelve stones, and carry them over with you and lay them down in the lodging place. Where ye shall lodge this night, etc. It is possible to think that they were to deposit them in any lodging place. Therefore, there is a text to state where ye shall lodge this night. Arjuna said, Abba, he laughed, our Eliezer, be Matthew, and Hanani, be Hakane. I stood upon those stones and estimated that each was equal to about forty se. There is a tradition that the weight which a man can raise upon his shoulder is a third of the weight he can carry. So from this, you may calculate what was the weight of the cluster of grapes, as it is said, and they bear it upon a staff between two. From the fact that it is stated upon a staff, do I not know that it was carried between two? Why then is there a text to state between two? It means on two staffs. Our Isaac said it means a series of balancing poles. How was it? Eight spies carried the great cluster. One carried a pomegranate, one carried a fig, and Joshua and Caleb did not carry anything. If you wish, I can say that they did not carry anything because. They were the most distinguished of them, or alternatively, that they did not have a share in the plan. RMI and R. Isaac the Smith differ in opinion. One said, according to the statement of Arjuna Talmud, Maso to be, they crossed over in the formation of their encampment, and according to the statement of R. Eliezer B. Simeon, they crossed over in single file. The other said, according to the statement of both teachers, they crossed over in the formation of their encampment. One teacher was of the opinion that man was swifter, and the other that water was swifter. Sent for the men, Reshlakish said, for the means from thine own mind, because does anybody choose a bad position for himself? That is what is written, and the thing pleased me well. Reshlakish said, it pleased me Moses well, but not the all present that they searched the land for us. R. Hi B. Abba said, the spies aimed at nothing else than discrediting the land of Israel. Here it is written that they may search we upper the Land for us and elsewhere it is written, and the moon shall be confounded. We have Ra and the sun ashamed, etc. And these were their names of the tribe of Reuben, Shamu, the son of Zachar. Our Isaac said, It is a tradition in our possession from our forefathers that the spies were named after their actions, but only with one has it survived with us through the son of Michael. He was named Thur because he undermined Sather, the works of the Holy One. Blessed be he, and Michael was so named because he suggested that God El was weak. Makar Yohanan said, We can also explain the name Nabi, the son of Bofsi. He was named Nabi because he had hit by the words of the Holy One. Blessed be he, and Bofsi was so named because he stepped over Pasa, the attributes of the Holy One. Blessed be he, and they went up by the south, and he came unto Hebron. It should have read, and they came. Rabbi said, It teaches that Caleb held aloof from the plan of the spies and went and prostrated himself upon it. Graves of the patriarch saying to them, My fathers, pray on my behalf that I may be delivered from the plan of the spies. As for Joshua, Moses had already prayed on his behalf, as it is said, and Moses called Hashia the son of Nun Joshua, meaning may I save the Yoshi aka from the plan of the spies. That is the intention of what is written, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and there were Ahim and Sheshai and Talma Ahim, and was so named because he was the strongest. Mayaman of them Sheshai, because he made the earth like Pitchi, he thought Talma, because he made the earth like Pharaoh's Talim. Another explanation Ahim and built an Af Sheshai, built Alish and Talma, built Elbish, the children of Anak. They are so called because they wore the sun as a necklace, Mayanak, and owing to their stature, now Hebron was built seven years. What means was built if I say that it means actually built? Is it possible that a man constructs a house for his younger son before? His elder son, as it
not endure in the end and Caleb still W. A. Yahaz, the people concerning Moses Rabbah said it means that he won them over his hand with words when Joshua began to address them they said to him with this person with the lopped off head speak to us Caleb said to himself if I address them in the same strain as Joshua they will answer me in like manner and silence me so he said to them is it this alone that Amram's son has done to us they thought that he was speaking to censure Moses. So they were silent and he said to them he brought us out of Egypt divided the Red Sea for us and fed us with manna if he were to tell us prepare ladders and ascend to heaven should we not obey him let us go up at once and possess it etc. But the men that went up with him said we will not be able etc. Our Hannah B. Papa said a grievous statement did they make at that moment this for they are stronger than we read not than we but than he as it were even the master of the house cannot remove his furniture from there it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof Rabbah expounded the Holy One blessed be he said I intended this for good but they thought it in a bad sense I intended this for good because wherever the spies came the chief of the inhabitants died so that they should be occupied with his burial and not inquire about them others say that job died then and the whole world was occupied with mourning for him but they thought it in a bad sense it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight our measure she said the spies were liars as regards we were in our own sight as grasshoppers very well but how could they know that so we were in their sight but it is not so for when the inhabitants held their funeral meal they ate it beneath cedar trees and when the spies saw them they climbed the trees and sat there then they heard them say we see men like grasshoppers in the trees and all the congregation lifted up their voice and wept rabbi said in the name of our Yohanan that day was the ninth of and the holy one blessed be he said they are now weeping for nothing but i will fix this day for them as an occasion of weeping for generations but all the congregation bade them stone them with stones and it continues and the glory of the lord appeared in the tent of meeting our high Abba said it teaches that they took stones and hurled them against him who was above even those Men that did bring up an evil report of the land died by the plague. Our Simeon Belakish said they died an unnatural death. Our Hanabi Papa said our Sheila of Kvartem Artha expounded it teaches that their tongue was elongated and reached down to their navel and worms issued from their tongue and penetrated their navel and from their navel they penetrated their tongue. Our Naman B. Isaac said they died of croup when the last of the Israelites ascended from the Jordan the waters returned to their place. As it is said and it came to pass when the priests that bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of the Jordan and the soles of the priests feet were lifted up onto the dry ground that the waters of Jordan returned onto their place and went over all its banks as aforetime consequently the ark and its bearers and the priests were on one side of the Jordan and the Israelites on the other the ark carried its bearers and passed over the river as it is said and it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over that the ark of the Lord passed over and the priests in the presence of the people on that account was Uah punished as it is said and when they came onto the threshing floor of Shaddan Uah put forth his hand to hold the ark the Holy One blessed be he said to him Uah the ark carried its bearers must it not all the more be able to carry itself and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uah and God smote him there for his error. Shal etc. Our Yohanan and our Eliezer differ on the interpretation of the word Shal one said that it means on account of the act of error Shal the other said that it means he relieved himself in its presence and there he died by the ark of God our Yohanan said Uah entered the world to come as it is stated with the ark of God as the ark endures forever so Uah entered the world to come and David was angry because the Lord had broken forth upon Uah our Eliezer said his face was changed. So that it became in color like a cake baked upon the coals. Herrera, are we to infer from this that wherever W A U R occurs, it has this meaning. In other passages, the word A of anger is added, but here it is not added. Rabbah expounded why was David punished because he called words of Torah songs, as it is said, Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. The Holy One, blessed be He, said to him, Words of Torah of which it is written, Wilt thou set thine eyes upon it? It is gone now. Recitest as songs, I will cause thee to stumble in a matter which even school children know. For it is written, But unto the sons of Kohat he gave none because the service of the sanctuary, etc. And yet David brought it in a wagon and he smote of the men of Beth Shemesh because they looked into the ark. God smote them because they looked into the ark. Arabah and our Eliezer differ in their interpretation. One said that they went on reaping while they prostrated themselves before the ark. Others said that they also used this disrespectful language to a Talmud, Ma so to be who embittered thee that thou wast thus embittered and what has come upon thee that thou art now appeased even he smote of the people seventy men and fifty thousand men are about and our Eliezer differ in their interpretation one said that there were only seventy men smitten each of whom was the equal of fifty thousand men while the other said that there were fifty thousand men smitten each of whom was equal to the seventy who constituted the Sanhedrin and it was so that when they that bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces he sacrificed an ox and a fatling and it is also written they sacrificed seven bullocks and seven rams our Papa said in the name of Samuel the two passages are reconciled by supposing that at each pace an ox and a fatling were offered and at each six paces seven bullocks and seven rams are Hista said to him on your theory you filled the whole of the land of Israel. With high places, but said Arhista, at each six paces an ox and a fatling were offered, and at each six sets of six paces seven bullocks and seven rams in one place. The name of the threshing floor is written Chidon, and in another Nakan or Yohanan said at first it was called Chidon, and afterwards Nakan. In consequence of what is related in the scriptures, you must conclude that there were three sets of stones, one which Moses caused to be erected in the land of Moab, as it is said beyond. Jordan in the land of Moab began Moses to declare, etc., and elsewhere it states, Thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly, and the inference is drawn from the use of the analogous word that is in the latter passage stones were employed, they were similarly employed in connection with what is narrated in the first passage. The second set was that which Joshua caused to be erected in the midst of the Jordan, as it is said, and Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan the third set was that which he caused to be erected in Gilgal as it is said and those twelve stones which they took our rabbis taught how did the Israelites inscribe the Torah our Judah says they inscribed it upon the stones as it is stated thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law etc after that they plastered them over with plaster our Simeon said to him according to your explanation how did the nations of that period learn the Torah he replied to him the Holy One. Blessed be he endowed them with exceptional intelligence and they sent their scribes who peeled off the plaster and carried away a copy of the inscription on that account was the verdict sealed against them to descend to the pit of destruction because it was their duty to learn Torah but they failed to do so our Simeon says they inscribed it upon the plaster and wrote below that they teach you not to do after all their abominations hence you learn that if they turn in penitence they would. Be accepted, Rabbi Sheila said, What is our Simeon's reason? Because it is written, and the people shall be as the burnings of Lima on account of the matter of the plaster. And how does our Judah explain this verse? Their destruction will be like plaster, as there is no other remedy for plaster except burning. So there is no other remedy for those nations who cleave to the abominations except burning, according to whom is the following teaching which has been taught, and thou carriest them. A way captive this is to include Canaanites who reside outside the land of Israel. So if they turn in penitence, they will be accepted. Talmud, Masoda, according to whom is this? According to our Simeon, come and see how many miracles were performed on that day. Israel crossed the Jordan, came to Mount Gerizim, and Mount Ebal, thus traversing a distance of more than sixty mil. No creature was able to withstand them, and whoever withstood them was immediately panic stricken, as it is said, I will. Send my terror before thee and will discomfort all the people to whom thou shalt come, etc. And it states terror and dread falleth upon them till that people pass over. O Lord, this alludes to the first advance of Israel in the days of Joshua until the people pass over which thou hast gotten alludes to the second advance in the days of Ezra. Conclude from this that the Israelites were worthy that a miracle should be performed on their behalf during the second advance as in the first advance. But sin caused it to be withheld after that they brought the stones, built the altar and plastered it with plaster and inscribed thereon all the words of the Torah in seventy languages as it is said very plainly. Then they sacrificed
Mount so were they divided on the stones of the ephod, and objection was raised. The high priest had two precious stones on his shoulders, one on the side and one on the other side. Upon them were inscribed the names of the twelve tribes, six on one stone and six on the other. As it is said, six of their names on the one stone and the names of the six that remain on the other stone according to their birth. This indicates that the second six were to be according to their birth, but the first six were not to be according to their birth because the name of Judah came first and there were fifty letters, twenty five on each stone. Our Hannah B. Gamaliel says Talmud, Ma so to be they were not apportioned upon the stones as they were apportioned in the book of Numbers, but as they were apportioned in the second book of the Pentateuch, how then were they arranged the sons of Leah in order of seniority on one stone and on the other the sons of Rachel, one on top and the other at the bottom with the sons of the handmaids in the center. In that case, how am I to explain according to their birth? It means that the inscription was according to the names which their father called them and not according to the names which Moses called them Reuben and not Rubini, Simeon and not Simeon, Idan and not Hadani, Gad and not Hadgadi. This is a refutation of Arkahana. The refutation is unanswered. What then is the meaning of and the half of them? It has been taught the half in front of Mount. Jerazim was larger than that in front of Mount Ebel because the tribe of Levi was below with the ark. On the contrary, for the reason that Levi was below, it must have been smaller. This is what he intends. Although Levi was below the party on Mount Jerazim was still larger because the sons of Joseph were included with them and they were very numerous as it is said. And the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua saying, Why hast thou given me but one lot and one part for an inheritance? Seeing I am a great people. And Joshua said unto them, If thou be a great people, get thee up to the forest. He said to them, Go hide yourselves in the forest that the evil I may not have sway over you. They replied to him, The evil I can bear no sway over the seat of Joseph. For it is written, Joseph is a fruitful bow, a fruitful bow by a fountain. And Arabab said, Red not a lion by a fountain, but a lion overcoming the ir. Jose Behanan said, It is derived from this passage and let them. Grow we you into a multitude in the midst of the earth as the water covers the fish to gym in the sea so that the evil I bears no sway over them so the evil I bears no sway over the seed of Joseph it was stated above that on the stones of the ephod were fifty letters but there were fifty less one our Isaac said one letter was added to the name of Joseph as it is said he appointed it in Joseph for a testimony when he went out over the land of Egypt Arnam and B Isaac objected we require according to their birth but the correct explanation is that throughout the whole Torah Benjamin's name is spelled without the letter Yod before the final letter but here on the ephod it was spelled complete with Yod as it is written but his father called him Benjamin our Hanabi business said in the name of our Simeon the pious because Joseph sanctified the heavenly name in private one letter was added to him from the name of the Holy One blessed be he but because Judah sanctified the Heavenly name in public, the whole of his name was called after the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he, how was it with Joseph that he sanctified the name as it is written? And it came to pass about this time that he went into the house to do his work. Our Yohanan said this teaches that both Joseph and Potiphar's wife had the intention of acting immorally. He went into the house to do his work. Rab and Samuel differ in their interpretation. One said that it really means to do his work, but the other said that he went to satisfy his desires and there was none of the men of the house, etc. Is it possible that there was no man in a huge house like that of this wicked Potiphar? It was taught in the school of our Ishmael that day was their feast day and they had all gone to their idolatrous temple, but she had pretended to be ill because she thought I shall not have an opportunity like today for Joseph to associate with me and she caught him by his garment saying, etc. At that moment his Father's image came and appeared to him through the window and said, Joseph, thy brothers will have their names inscribed upon the stones of the ephod, and thine amongst theirs is it thy wish to have thy name expunged from amongst theirs and be called an associate of harlots, as it is written, he that keepeth company with harlots wasteth his substance immediately as bow boat in strength. Our Yohanan said in the name of our Mayor, this means that his passion subsided and the arms of his hands were made. Active he stuck his hands in the ground so that his lust came out from between his fingernails by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob who caused his name to be engraven upon the stones of the ephod, but the mighty one of Jacob from thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. From there was he worthy to be made a shepherd, as it is said, Give your O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest like the flock of Joseph. It has been taught Joseph was worthy that twelve tribes should issue from him as they Issued from his father Jacob, as it is said, these are the generations of Jacob Joseph, but his lust came out from between his fingernails. Nevertheless, they issued from his brother Benjamin and were given names on his own account, as it is said, and the sons of Benjamin, Bela and Beecher and Ashbel, etc. He was called Bela because Joseph was swallowed up Nibla among the peoples. He was called Beecher because Joseph was the firstborn beggar of his mother. He was called Ashbel because God sent Joseph into captivity. Sheba Oel, he was called Gera because Joseph dwelt in lodgings in a strange land. He was called Naman because he was especially beloved. Naim, they were called Ai and Rosh because Joseph is my brother. Ahi and Chief Rosh, they were called Mutham and Hutham because Benjamin said, Joseph did not see my marriage canopy, and I did not see his. He was called Ard because Joseph descended Yared among the peoples. Others explained that he was. Called hard because Joseph's face was like a rosewood. Our high be said in the name of our Yohanan at the moment when Pharaoh said to Joseph, And without thee shall no man lift up his hand, etc. Pharaoh's astrologers exclaimed, Wilt thou set in power over us a slave whom his master bought for twenty pieces of silver? He replied to them, I discern in him royal characteristics. They said to him, In that case, he must be acquainted with the seventy languages. Gabriel came and taught Joseph it. Seventy languages, but he could not learn them. Thereupon Gabriel added to his name a letter from the name of the Holy One, blessed be he, and he learned the languages as it is said. He appointed it in Joseph for a testimony when he went out over the land of Egypt, where I Joseph heard a language that I knew not on the morrow in whatever language Pharaoh conversed with him. He replied to him, But when Joseph spoke to him in the holy tongue, he did not understand what he said, so he asked him to. Teach it to him, he taught it to him, but he could not learn it. Pharaoh said to him, Swear to me that thou wilt not reveal this. And he swore to him. When Joseph later said to him, My father made me swear, saying, He remarked to him, Go ask to be released from thine oath. He replied to him, I will also ask to be released from my oath concerning thee. Therefore, although it was displeasing to him, Pharaoh said to him, Go up and bury thy father according as he made thee swear. What was it that Judah did as it has been taught? Our Mayor said, When the Israelites stood by the Red Sea, the tribes strove with one another, each wishing to descend into the sea first, then sprang forward Talmud, Masoda, the tribe of Benjamin, and descended first into the sea. As it is said, There is little Benjamin, their ruler, Red not Rodam, their ruler, but Radiam descended into the sea. Thereupon the princes of Judah hurled stones at them, as it is said, The princes of Judah, their counsel for that reason, it Righteous Benjamin was worthy to become the host of the all powerful, as it is said, he dwelleth between his shoulders. Our Judah said to our Mayor, That is not what happened, but each tribe was unwilling to be the first to enter the sea, then sprang forward Nashon, the son of Ammonadab, and descended first into the sea, as it is said, Ephraim compasseth me about with falsehood, and the house of Israel with deceit, but Judah yet ruleth with God concerning him, it is stated in Scripture, Save me, O God, for the waters are coming unto my soul, I sink in deep mire where there is no standing, etc. Let not the water flood overwhelm me, neither let the deep swallow me up, etc. At that time Moses was engaged for a long while in prayer, so the Holy One blessed be, he said to him, My beloved ones are drowning in the sea, and thou prolongest prayer before me, he spake before him, Lord of the universe, what is there in my power to do? He replied to him, Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward and lift thou up. Thy rod and stretch out thy hand, etc. For that reason Judah was worthy to be made the ruling power in Israel, as it is said, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. Why did Judah become his sanctuary and Israel his dominion? Because the sea saw him and fled. It has been taught our Eliezer B. Jacob says it is impossible to declare that Levi was stationed below since it is stated that he was above, and it is impossible to declare that he was above since it is stated that he was below. So how was
The tent of meeting in the wilderness. The difference of opinion here is the same as that of the teachers in the following are Ishmael says general laws were proclaimed at Sinai and particular laws in the tent of meeting are Akiva says both general and particular laws were proclaimed at Sinai repeated in the tent of meeting and for the third time in the plains of Moab. Consequently, there is not a single precept written in the Torah in connection with which 48 covenants were not made. Arsimian. Be Judah of Farako said in the name of Arsimian, there is not a single precept written in the Torah in connection with which 48 times 600 and 3550 covenants were not made. Rabbi said according to the reasoning of Arsimian, be Judah of Farako who said in the name of Arsimian that there is not a single precept written in the Torah in connection with which 48 times 600 and 3550 covenants were not. Made it follows that for each Israelite there are 600 and 3550 commandments. What is the issue between them? Our Meshachia said the point between them is that of personal responsibility and responsibility for others are Judah B. Namani, the lecturer of Simeon B. Lakish expounded the whole section of the blessings and curses refers to none other than the adulterer and adulteress. It states, Curse be the man that make the graven or molten image, etc. Does it suffice merely to pronounce curse with such a person, but it alludes to one who has immoral intercourse and begets a son who goes to live among heathens and worships idols? Curse be the father and mother of this man since they were the cause of his sinning. Our rabbis taught thou shalt set the blessing upon Mount Gerizim and the curse, etc. What is the purpose of this text if it is to teach that the blessing is to be pronounced on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal? It has already been. Said these shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people, and it continues, and these shall stand upon Mount Ebal for the curse, but the purpose is to indicate that the blessing must precede the curse. It is possible to think that all the blessings must precede the curses, therefore the text states blessing and curse, i.e. one blessing precedes a curse, and all the blessings do not precede the curses. A further purpose is to draw a comparison between blessing and curse to tell us that as the curse is pronounced by the Lovitz, so the blessing must be pronounced by the Lovitz as the curse is uttered in a loud voice, so must the blessing be uttered in a loud voice as the curse is said in the holy tongue, so must the blessing be said in the holy tongue as the curse is in general and particular terms, so must the blessing be in general and particular terms, and as with the curse both parties respond with amen, so with the blessing both parties respond with amen. Mishnah, how was the priestly? Benediction pronounced in the province it was said as three blessings but in the temple as one blessing in the temple the name was uttered Talmud, Masoda Talmud, Masoda is written but in the province in its substituted name in the province the priests raise their hands in a line with their shoulders but in the temple above their heads except the high priest who does not raise his hands higher than the plate Arjuna says also the high priest raises his hands higher than the plate. As it is said and Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them Gemara our rabbis taught on this wise ye shall bless i.e. in the holy tongue you say that it means in the holy tongue but perhaps it is not so and it means in any language it is stated here on this wise ye shall bless and elsewhere it is stated these shall stand to bless the people as in this latter passage it was in the holy tongue so also in the former it was in the holy tongue Arjuna says this deduction is Unnecessary because it states on this wise which signifies that they must pronounce it in this language as written in scripture another buried the taught on this wise ye shall bless i.e. standing you say that it means standing but perhaps that is not so and the benediction may be pronounced even sitting it is stated here on this wise ye shall bless and elsewhere it is stated these shall stand to bless as here it was standing so in the former passage it was standing our Nathan says this. Deduction is unnecessary behold it states to minister unto him and to bless in his name as the priest ministers standing so he blesses standing whence is it that the ministering itself was performed standing because it is written to stand to minister another bury the taught on this wise ye shall bless i.e. with raising of the hands you say that it means with raising of the hands but perhaps that is not so and the benediction can be pronounced without raising of the hands it is stated. Here on this wise ye shall bless and elsewhere it is stated and Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them as in this latter passage it was with raising of the hands so also in the former passage it was with raising of the hands our Jonathan raised the question if your reasoning is valid then as in that passage the benediction was pronounced by the high priest on the new moon and in the service of the community so also here it must be the high priest on the new moon and in the service of the community our Nathan says this deduction is unnecessary behold it states him and his sons forever comparing him and his sons as the high priest pronounced the benediction with raising of the hands so also his sons with raising of the hands furthermore it is written forever and a comparison is drawn between the benediction and ministering another very the taught on this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel with the use of the Shem for us you say that it means with the tetragrammaton, but perhaps that is not so, and a substituted name was used. There is a text to say, So shall they put my name, my name, which is unique to me. It is possible to think that the Shem was also used in places outside the temple, but it is stated here, So shall they put my name, and elsewhere it is stated to put his name there, as in this latter passage it denotes in the temple, so also in the former passage it denotes in the temple. Our Joshua says this deduction is unnecessary. Behold, it states, In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I will come unto thee. Can it enter your mind that every place is intended, but the text must be transposed? Thus, in every place where I will come unto thee and bless thee, will I cause my name to be remembered, and where will I come unto thee and bless thee in the temple? There in the temple will I cause my name to be remembered. Another bury the teaches on this wise, Ye shall bless the children of Israel I have here. Only the children of Israel whence is it that proselytes women and enfranchised slaves are included there is a text to state ye shall say unto them i.e. to all of them another bury the teachers on this wise ye shall bless i.e. face to face you say that it means face to face but perhaps that is not so and it means the face of the priests towards the back of the people there is a text to state ye shall say unto them i.e. like a man who talks to his companion another bury the teachers on this wise ye shall bless i.e. in a loud voice but perhaps it is not so and the meaning is softly there is a text to state ye shall say unto them like a man who talks to his companion they said we have a tradition that the precantor exclaims kohanim when at least two are present but he does not exclaim kohen when only one is there as it is said ye shall say unto them i.e. at least unto two are his da said we have a tradition that when the precantor is himself a kohen he exclaims kohanim but a Lazarelite does not as it is said ye shall say unto them the same Talmud, Masoda B must come from one of their own body the legal decision is in accord with the view of Abbe and not according to our histonimonic desires for the benediction platform in the service cup recognize accepts hospitality heifer our Joshua B Levi said whence is it that the Holy One blessed be he desires the priestly benediction as it is said so shall they put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them our Joshua B Levi also said every Kohen who pronounces the benediction is himself blessed but if he does not pronounce it he is not blessed as it is said I will bless them that bless the our Joshua B Levi also said any Kohen who refuses to ascend the platform transgresses three positive commandments is on this wise shall ye bless ye shall say unto them and so shall they put my name Rab said we have to take into consideration that he might be the son of a divorcee or the son of a Haliza, but our Joshua and Rab are not at variance one referring to a case where he ascends the platform occasionally the other to a case where he does not occasionally ascend it. Our Joshua B. Levi also said any Cohen who does not ascend the platform in the service may not ascend later as it is said and Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them and he came down from offering the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offering as in this passage the benediction occurred. During the service so here in the synagogue it must be during the prayers relating to the service but that is not so seeing that RMI and RC ascended at a later point in the liturgy RMI and RC had already moved their feet at the proper point to ascend the platform but did not reach there in time this is as Arashai taught the statement that the Cohen may not ascend after that point in the liturgy does not apply except when he had not moved his feet but if he had moved. His feet he may ascend it has been similarly learned if he is confident that he can raise his hands for the benediction and resume the prayers without an error he is permitted to do so on arguing in this connection that he surely does not move his feet the reply was that he shifts a little to one side so also in the present instance if a Kohen moves
This blood but can it enter our minds that the elders of the court of justice are shedders of blood the meaning is the man found dead did not come to us for help and we dismissed him we did not see him and let him go i.e. he did not come to us for help and we dismissed him without supplying him with food we did not see him and let him go without escort at a set in the name of our simile in a synagogue where all the worshippers are kohanim they all ascend the platform for whom then do they pronounce the benediction are answered for their brethren working in the fields but it is not so for Abba the son of our mighty Ammon Bihai taught the people who are behind the kohanim do not come within the scope of the benediction there is no contradiction the former refers to men who are compelled to be absent and the latter to men who are not compelled to be stationed behind the kohanim but our Shimei of the fort of Shihori taught in a synagogue where all the worshippers are kohanim some Ascend the platform and the rest respond with Amen. There is no contradiction. The latter refers to where ten remain to respond Amen, and the former where ten do not remain. The above text stated Abba the son of Armani Amen Bihai taught the people who are behind the Kohanim do not come within the scope of the benediction. It is obvious that the tall do not create an obstruction for the short, nor does the ark where the Torah scrolls are deposited create an obstruction. But how is it with a partition within the synagogue? Come and hear our Joshua B. Levi said, Even a partition of iron does not divide between Israel and their father in heaven. The question was asked, How is it with those standing on the side of the Kohanim? Abba, our son of Arashi said, Come and hear. We have learned if he intended to sprinkle in front of him Talmud, Masode, and he sprinkled behind him, or vice versa. The sprinkling is invalid, but if he intended to sprinkle in front of him and did so on the sides in front of him is sprinkling is valid. Rabbi son of Arhuna said when the Torah scroll is unrolled it is forbidden to converse even on matters concerning the law as it is said and when he opened it all the people stood up and standing up signifies nothing else than silence as it is said and I wait because they speak not because they stand still and answer no more. Arzara said in the name of Arhus it may be derived from this passage and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Joshua B. Levi also said any Kohen who has not washed his hands may not lift them up to pronounce the benediction as it is said lift up your hands in holiness and bless ye the Lord his disciples asked our Eliezer B. Shamu how have you prolonged your life he replied never have I made use of a synagogue as a shortcut nor stepped over the heads of the holy people nor lifted up my hands as a Kohen without first uttering a benediction what benediction did he utter Arzara said in the Name of Arhista, blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has commanded us with the sanctity of Aaron and has commanded us to bless thy people Israel in love. When he, the priest, moves his feet to ascend the platform, what does he say? May it be pleasing before the O Lord, our God, that this benediction wherewith thou hast commanded us to bless thy people Israel may be free from stumbling and iniquity. When he turns his face from the congregation to the ark after pronouncing the benediction, what does he say? Arhista, let our Abba forward, and the latter explained that what he says is, Lord of the universe, we have performed what thou hast decreed upon us, fulfill with us Talmud, Maso to be what thou hast promised us, is looked down from thy holy habitation from heaven, etc. Arhista said, The Kohanim are not permitted to bend their finger joints until they turn their faces from the congregation. Arzara said, In the name of Arhista, the precantor is not permitted to exclaim. Kohanim until the response of Amen to the preceding benediction had been completed by the congregation and the Kohanim are not permitted to begin the benediction until the announcement of Kohanim had been completed by the Prekentor and the congregation is not permitted to respond Amen until the benediction had been completed by the Kohanim and the Kohanim are not permitted to begin another section of the benediction until the response of Amen had been completed by the congregation to the preceding Arzara also said in the name of Arhista the Kohanim are not permitted to turn their faces from the congregation until the Prekentor begins the paragraph Grant peace nor are they permitted to move their feet and descend until the Prekentor has finished Grant peace Arzara also said in the name of Arhista the congregation is not permitted to respond Amen until the benediction had been completed by the Prekentor and the reader is not permitted to read in the Torah until the response of Amen to the preliminary benediction had been completed by the congregation and the translator is not permitted to begin the translation until the verse had been completed by the reader and the reader is not permitted to begin another verse until the translation of the preceding verse had been completed by the translator Artanhum said in the name of our Joshua B. Levi he who is to read the lection from the prophets must first read a passage in the Torah Artanhum also said in the name of our Joshua B. Levi he who is to read the lection from the prophets is not permitted to begin his recital until the Torah scroll is rolled up Artanhum also said in the name of our Joshua B. Levi the precantor is not permitted to strip the ark bear in the presence of the congregation because of the dignity of the congregation Artanhum also said in the name of our Joshua B. Levi the congregation is not permitted to depart until the Torah scroll is removed and deposited in its place Samuel said they may not Depart until the precente has gone out. There is no variance between them. The former refers to when there is another exit, the latter to when there is not another exit. Rabbi said, Barahina explained to me that the scriptural basis for this regulation is, Ye shall walk after the Lord your God while the Kohanim are blessing the people. What do the latter say? Our Zerah declared in the name of our Hista, Bless the Lord, ye angels of his Yamaiti in strength. Bless the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all ye his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. What do they say during the benediction in the additional service of the Sabbath? RC declared a song of ascents. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord. Lift up your hands in holiness and bless ye the Lord. Bless be the Lord out of Zion who dwelleth at Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. But they should also say, The Lord bless the out of Zion which occurs. In that context, Judah the son of our Simeon, because he answered since he commenced with the blessings of the Holy One, blessed be he, he should conclude with his blessings. What do they say in the afternoon service of a fast day? Our Ahavi Jacob declared, Though our iniquities testify against us, work thou for thy name's sake, O thou hope of Israel, the Savior thereof. In the time of trouble, why shouldest thou be as a sojourner in the land? Why shouldest thou be as a man astonished, as a mighty man that cannot save, etc.? Talmud, Masoda, Talmud, Masoda, what do they say in the concluding service of the day of atonement? Marzitra declared, According to another version, there is a teaching to this effect. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord, the Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life, yet thou shalt see thy children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Where did they say these verses are Joseph answered between? Each benediction Arshis hate answered at the mention of the divine name Armari and Arzi but differ on this matter. One said a verse by the congregation is to be recited simultaneously with the verse by the Kohanim while the other said the congregation recites the whole for each verse by the Kohanim. Arhai B. Abba said whoever recites them outside the temple simply ears Arhanna B. Papa said no that even in the temple it is unnecessary to recite them for is there a servant whom one blesses. Without his listening Arhai B. Hanna said no that even outside the temple it is necessary to recite them for is there a servant whom one blesses without his face brightening Arhai said at first I used to recite them but when I saw that Arhai did not recite them I also did not Arhai also said at first I used to think that I was humble but when I saw Arhai Bako offer one explanation and Izamora offer another without his taking exception I considered that I was not humble. How did Arabab display humility? The wife of Arabab Zamora said to Arabab's wife, My husband has no need of instruction from your husband, and when he bends down and straightens himself, he merely pays him respect. Arabab's wife went and reported this to him, and he said to her, Why worry about it through me and him? The all highest is praised further. The rabbis decided to appoint Arabab as principal of the academy, but when he saw that Arabab Akko had numerous creditors pressing for payment, he said to the rabbis, There is a greater scholar than I for the office. Arabab and Arhai B. Abba once came to a place, Arabab expounded again, and Arhai B. Abba expounded legal lore. All the people left Arhai B. Abba and went to hear Arabab so that the former was upset. Arabab said to him, I will give you a parable to what is the matter like to two men, one of whom was selling precious stones and the other various kinds of small wear, to whom will the people hurry, is it
Israelites, if you listen to me, you are my brethren, if not, you are my people, and I will rule you with a rod. The rabbi said it is derived from the regulation that the Kohanim are not permitted to ascend a platform wearing their shoes. This is one of the ten ordinances which our Yohan and Bizakai instituted. What was the reason? Was it not out of respect for the congregation? Our Ashi said no. The reason there was less the shoelace become untied, and he proceeds to retie it, and people will say he is. The son of a divorcee or a halyza, but in the temple as one blessing, etc. Talmud, ma so to be. For what reason is this? Because the response of Amen was not made in the temple. Our rabbis taught whence is it that the response of Amen was not made in the temple? As it is said, stand up and bless the Lord your God from everlasting to everlasting. And whence is it that every benediction must be followed by an expression of praise? As it is said, and blessed be thy glorious name, which is exalted above all. Blessing and praise, i.e., upon every benediction, ascribe praise to Him. Mishnah. What was the procedure with the benedictines of the high priest? The synagogue attendant takes a Torah scroll and hands it to the synagogue president. The synagogue president hands it to the deputy, and he hands it to the high priest. The high priest stands, receives the scroll, and reads therein after the death. And howbeit on the tenth day, then he rolls the Torah scroll together, places it in his bosom, and exclaims more. Then I have read before you is written here the passage on the tenth day which is in the book of Numbers he reads by heart and he recites eight benedictines in connection therewith is over the Torah for the temple service for the thanksgiving for the pardon of sin over the temple over Israel over the priests over Jerusalem and the rest of the prayer Gemara is it to be deduced from this that honor may be paid to a disciple in the presence of his master Abbe said no all this was done for the purpose of honoring the high priest the high priest stands receives the scroll and reads etc since it is stated that he stands it follows that he had been sitting but a master has said in the temple court the kings of the house of David alone were allowed to sit as it is said and David the king went in and sat before the Lord and he said who am I etc it is as our Hista declared this occurred in the court of women and here also with the reading of the high priest it was in the court of women, an objection was raised. Where did the lection take place in the temple court? Our Eliezer B. Jacob declares it was on the temple mount, as it is said, Talmud, Masodai, and he read therein before the broad place that was before the water gate. Our Hista said in the court of women and reads therein after the death, and howbeit on the tenth day, I quote, in contradiction, we may skip a passage in the prophets, but not in the Torah. Abbe said there is no contradiction. The latter teaching refers to a case where the passage skipped is sufficiently long to interrupt the translator, whereas in the Mishnah it is not sufficiently long to interrupt the translator. On this point, however, it has been taught we may skip a passage in the prophets, but not in the Torah. How much may be skipped in the reading of the prophets? A passage which is not sufficiently long to interrupt the translator. Consequently, so far as the Torah is concerned, nothing at all may be skipped, but Abbe said there is no. Contradiction the teaching that we may skip a passage in the reading of the Torah applies to where there is one theme the other teaching to where there are two themes thus it has been taught we may skip a passage in the Torah where there is one theme and in the prophets where there are two themes but in either case only when it is not sufficiently long to interrupt the translator we may not however skip from one prophet book to another but with the book of the minor prophets we may skip from one to another except that this may not be done from the end of the book to its beginning then he rolls the Torah scroll together places it in his bosom etc why all this so as not to discredit the Torah scroll the passage on the tenth day which is in the book of numbers he reads by heart let him roll up the scroll and recite the passage Arunabi Judah said in the name of Arshis hate because we do not roll up the Torah scroll in the presence of a congregation then let another Torah scroll he brought and read it there in Arhu Nabi Judah said no because it would discredit the first Ar Simeon Belakish said because we may not pronounce an unnecessary benediction do we then pay attention to the reason that it would discredit the first scroll behold our Isaac the smith said when the new moon of David falls on the Sabbath three scrolls are brought the first for the lection of the Sabbath day the second for the portion of the new moon and the third for the portion of Hanukkah. When three men read in three scrolls there is no fear about a scroll being discredited but when one man reads in two scrolls there is this fear and he recites eight benedictines in connection therewith etc. Our rabbis taught the high priest pronounces a benediction over the Torah just as we do in synagogue for the temple service for the thanksgiving and for the pardon of sin as usual over the temple separately over the priests separately over the Israelites separately and over Jerusalem. Separately and the rest of the prayer our rabbis taught the rest of the prayer consists of petition song and supplication that the people Israel is in need of salvation and he concludes with blessed art thou O Lord who hear canest unto prayer from this point onward each individual brings a Torah scroll from his house and reads therein for what purpose is this done to display its beauty in public mission what was the procedure in connection with the portion read by the king at the conclusion of the first day of the festival of tabernacles in the eighth i.e. the end of the seventh they erect a wooden dais in the temple court upon which he sits as it is said at the end of every seven years in the set time etc the synagogue attendant takes a Torah scroll and hands it to the synagogue president and the synagogue president hands it to the high priest's deputy he hands it to the high priest who hands it to the king the king stands and receives it but reads sitting king Agrippa stood and received it and read standing for which act the sages praised him when he reached thou mayest not put a foreigner over thee his eyes ran with tears they said to him fear not Agrippa thou art our brother thou art our brother the king reads from the beginning of Deuteronomy up to the Shema the Shema and it shall come to pass if ye hearken thou shalt surely tithe when thou hast made an end of tithing the portion of the king and the blessings and curses until he finishes all the section day. king pronounces the same benedictines as the high priest except that he substitutes one for the festivals instead of one for the pardon of sin Gemara does it enter your mind that the Mishnah means the eighth day of the festival read the eighth year but why all this it is all necessary for if the Almerciful had only written at the end I might have thought that the reckoning was to be from then although they had not observed the year of release therefore the Almerciful wrote in the year of release if the Almerciful had only written the year of release I might have thought that this means the end of the year of release therefore the Almerciful wrote in the set time if he had only written in the set time I might have thought that this means at the new year festival therefore the Almerciful wrote in the feast of tabernacles and if the Almerciful had only written in the feast of tabernacles I might have thought that this means on the last day of the festival therefore the Almerciful wrote when all Israel is come Talmud, Maso to be i.e. the beginning of the festival the synagogue attendant takes a Torah scroll and hands it to the synagogue president is it to be deduced from this that honor may be paid to a disciple in the presence of his master Abbe said no all this was done for the purpose of honoring the king the king stands and receives it but read sitting king Agrippa stood and received it and read standing since it is stated that he stands it Follows that he had been sitting, but a master has said in the temple court the kings of the house of David alone were allowed to sit as it is said, and David the king went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, etc. It is as our Hista declared this occurred in the court of women, and here also with the reading by the king it was in the court of women for which act the sages praised him, since they praised him, it follows that he acted rightly, but Arashi has said, even according to him who maintains that when an Asai foregoes the honor due to him, one may avail himself of the permission, when a king foregoes the honor due to him, one may not avail himself of the permission, as it is said, thou shalt set a king over thee that his authority may be over thee, it is different with the fulfillment of a precept when he reached thou mayest not put, etc. A taught in the name of our Nathan at that moment the enemies of Israel made themselves liable to extermination because they flattered. Agrippa our Simeon Behalaf to say from the day the fist of flattery prevailed justice became perverted conduct deteriorated and nobody could say to his neighbor my conduct is better than yours our Judah the Palestinian another version our Simeon because he expounded it is permitted to flatter the wicked in this world as it is said the vile person shall be no more called liberal nor the churl said to be bountiful consequently it is allowed in this world our Simeon Behalaf said it may be derived from this text as one seat the face of God and thou wast pleased with me on this point he is at variance with our Levi for our Levi said a parable of Jacob and he saw to what is the matter like to a man who invited his neighbor to a meal and the latter perceived that he wished to kill him so he said to him the taste of this dish of which I am partaking is like the dish I tasted in the king's
flame, etc. Our Eliezer also said, Whoever flattereth his neighbor will finally fall into his hand. If he does not fall into his hand, he will fall into the hand of his sons. And if he does not fall into his sons' hand, he will fall into the hand of his grandsons. As it is stated, and Jeremiah said to Hanani, Amen. The Lord do so. The Lord perform thy words. And it is written, Talmud, Masoday. And when he was in the gate of Benjamin, a captain of the ward was there, whose name was Arajah, the son of Shalimia, the son of Hanani. And he laid hold on Jeremiah the prophet, saying, Thou fallest away to the Chaldeans. And said, Jeremiah, it is false. I fall not away to the Chaldeans, etc. And it continues. So he laid hold on Jeremiah and brought him to the princes. Our Eliezer also said, Any community in which is flattery is as repulsive as a menstruant woman. As it is said, for the community of flatterers is Galma. And in oversea towns they call a menstruant woman Galma. What means Galma? She is. Separated Gamulada from her husband, our Eliezer also said, Any community in which is flattery will finally go into exile. It is written here for the community of flatterers is Galma, and elsewhere it is written, And shalt thou say in thine heart who hath gotten me thee, seeing I have been bereaved of my children, and am solitary Galma in exile, and wandering to and fro, etc. Our Jeremiah B. Abba said, Four classes will not receive the presence of the Shechinah, the class of scoffers, the class of flatterers, the class of liars, and the class of slanderers, the class of scoffers, as it is written, He stretched out his hand against scorners, the class of flatterers, as it is written, For a flatterer shall not come before him, the class of liars, as it is written, He that speak falsehood shall not be established before mine eyes, the class of slanderers, as it is written, For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, evil shall not sojourn with thee, i.e., thou art righteous, O Lord, evil may. Not sojourn in thy habitation, C-H-A-P-T-E-R-V-I-I mission at the time when the anointed for battle addresses the people he speaks in the holy tongue as it is said, and it shall be when ye draw nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach, i.e. the anointed for battle, and speak unto the people, i.e. in the holy tongue, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye draw nigh this day unto battle against your enemies, against your enemies, but not against your brethren, not Judah, against Simeon, nor Simeon against Benjamin, so that if you fall into their hand they shall have mercy upon you, as it is said, and the men which have been expressed by name rose up and took the captives, and with the spoil clothed all that were naked among them, and arrayed them, and shod them, and gave them to eat and to drink, and anointed them, and carried all the people of them upon asses, and brought them to Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto their brethren, and they returned to Samaria, etc., against your enemies, do. You march so that if you fall into their hand they will have no mercy upon you. Let not your heart faint, fear not, nor tremble, etc. Let not your heart faint at the neighing of the horses and the brandishing of swords. Fear not because of the crash of shields and the tramp of the soldiers' footwear, nor tremble at the sound of trumpets, neither be affrighted at the sound of battle cries. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you. They come relying upon the might of flesh and blood, but you come relying upon the might of the all present. The Philistines came relying upon the might of the life, but what was his fate in the end? He fell by the sword and they fell with him. The Ammonites came relying upon the might of Shobat, but what was his fate in the end? He fell by the sword and they fell with him, but with you it is otherwise. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight with you, etc. This alludes to the camp of the Ark How does the author of the mission? Prove his point, he proves it, thus it is stated in this connection, and speak, and elsewhere it states Moses spake, and God answered him by voice, as in the latter passage it was in the holy tongue, so also in the former it was in the holy tongue, our rabbis taught the priests shall approach and speak unto the people, it is possible to think that any priest who so desires may address them, therefore there is a text to state, and the officers shall speak, as the officers must have been appointed, so must the priest have been appointed for the purpose, but I might say that it is the high priest who addresses them, it is analogous to the case of an officer, as an officer has a superior appointed over him, so also the priest who addresses the people has a superior appointed over him, but the high priest likewise has a superior over him, as the king he is referring to his service, but I might say that it is the deputy high priest who addresses them, the deputy high priest is not. Considered appointed as it has been taught our hand of the deputy of the priest said for what is the priest's deputy appointed if any disqualification should occur to the high priest he enters and functions in his stead and shall say unto them here O Israel why must he just open with the words here O Israel are you hand and said in the name of our Simeon Bohe the Holy One blessed be he said to Israel even if you only fulfilled morning and evening the commandment to recite the Shema you will not be delivered into the enemy's hand let not your heart faint fear not etc our rabbis taught he addresses them twice once on the boundary and once on the battlefield what does he say on the boundary Talmud Maso to be here the words of the war regulations and return home what does he say to them on the battlefield let not your heart faint fear not nor tremble neither be affrighted these four expressions correspond to the four means adopted by the nations of the world to terrorize it. Enemy, they crash their shields, sound trumpets, shout battle cries, and trample with their horses. The Philistines came relying upon the might of Goliath, etc. Goliath was so named, said, Are you Hanan? Because he stood with the front of Regulopatum before the Holy One, blessed be he, as it is said, Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. The word man signifies none other than the Holy One, blessed be he, as it is said, The Lord is a man of war, the Holy One, blessed be he, declared, Behold, I will bring about his downfall through the hand of a son of man, as it is said, David was the son of that man of Ephraim. Are you Hanan? said, In the name of Armaeir, in three places did his mouth trap that wicked man, first choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me, second, if he be able to fight with me, and kill me, etc. Enter, am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? David likewise replied to him, Thou contest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a javelin, and he continued, but I Come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, which thou hast defied, and the Philistine drew near morning and evening. Are Yohanan said to make the moment the recital of the Shema morning and evening, and presented himself forty days. Are Yohanan said the period corresponds to the forty days in which the Torah was given, and there went out a champion, the name out of the camp of the Philistines, etc. What means the name Rab said that he was built up Mabana without any. Blemish Samuel said he was a middle one, Benoni of his brothers in the school of Arshila. They explained he was made like a building pinion. Are Yohanan said he was the son of a hundred fathers and one mother, Benani named Goliath of Gath. Our Joseph learned he is so described because all men pressed his mother like a one pressed Gath. The text is Marot, but we read the word as Marot. Our Joseph learned because all had intercourse here with his mother, the text is Herf, and also. Orpah Rab and Samuel differ in their interpretation. One said that her name was Herf, and why was she called Orpah? Because all had intercourse with her from the rear orphan. The other said her name was Orpah, and why was she called Herfa? Because all ground her like a bruised corn. Herfot thus it states, and the woman took and spread the covering over the well's mouth and screwed Herfot bruised corn thereon. If you like, I can derive the meaning of Herfot from this verse, though thou shouldest spray a fool in a mortar with a pestle among Herfot bruised corn. These four were born to Herfa in death, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants who were there. His dossets of Midon Goliath and Ishbi and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants, as it is written, and Orpah kissed her mother in law, but Ruth clave unto her. Our Isaac said, The Holy One, blessed be he spake, may the sons of the one who kissed come and fall by the hand. Of the sons of the one who claimed Rabbah expounded as a reward for the four tears which Orpah dropped upon her mother-in-law, she merited that four mighty warriors should issue from her as it is said, and they lifted up their voice and wept again. The text further has HEZ the arrow of his spear, but we read easy the staff of his spear. Our Eliezer said it indicates that we have not reached half haze of the praise of that wicked man, hence it is learned that it is forbidden to recount the praise of the wicked, and scripture should not have begun to recount it at all. The object is to proclaim the praise of David who conquered such a giant. The Ammonites came relying upon the might of Shobak, etc. The name is written Shobak, and also Shofik Rab and Samuel differ in their interpretation. One said that his name was Shofik, and why was he called Shobak? Because he was made like a dove coat The other said that his name was Shobak, and why was he
The tablets of the Decalogue which were in it and the trumpets for the alarm, i.e. the horns, Aitan, taught not for not did Phinehas go to the battle against Midian but to exact judgment on behalf of his mother's father Joseph as it is said and the Midianites sold him into Egypt etc. Is this to say that Phinehas was a descendant of Joseph but behold it is written and Eliezer Aaron's son took him one of the daughters of Putile to wife and she bare him Phinehas is it not to be supposed? Then that he was a descendant of Jethro who fattened Pitam calves for idolatry. No, he was a descendant of Joseph who mastered Pippet his passion, but did not the other tribes despise him, saying, Look at the son of Puti, the son whose mother's father fattened calves for idolatry. He killed the prince in Israel, but if his mother's father was descended from Joseph, then his mother's mother was descended from Jethro, and if his mother's mother was descended from Joseph, then his mother's father was descended from Jethro. This is also proved as a conclusion from what is written, one of the daughters of Putiel, from which are to be inferred two lines of ancestry. Draw this conclusion, mission, and the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that hath built a new house and hath not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, etc. It is all one whether he built a barn for straw, a stable for cattle, a shed for wood, or a storehouse. It is all one whether he built. Purchased inherited it or somebody had given it to him as a present and what man is there that hath planted a vineyard and hath not used the fruit thereof etc. It is all one whether he planted a vineyard or planted five fruit trees and even of five species it is all one whether he planted bent or grafted it or whether he purchased inherited or somebody had given it to him as a present and what man is there that hath betrothed a wife etc. It is all one whether he had betrothed a virgin or a widow. Or even a childless widow waiting for her brother-in-law or even if a man heard that his brother had died in battle he returns home all these hear the priest's words concerning the war regulations and return home but they supply water and food and repair the roads for the army the following do not return home he who built a lodge, a lodge or a veranda he who planted four fruit trees or five trees which are not fruit bearing he who took back his divorced wife if a high priest married a widow. Or an ordinary priest married a divorcee or a halyza or a lay Israelite married an illegitimate or a nethin or the daughter of an Israelite married an illegitimate or a nathan he does not return home. Our Judah says also he who rebuilt a house upon its foundations does not return home. Our Elizer says also he who built a brick house in Sharon does not return home. The following do not move from their place he who built a new house and dedicated it planted a vineyard and used its fruit married his betrothed or took home his brother's childless widow as it is said he shall be free at home one year at home this refers to his house shall be refers to his vineyard and shall cheer his wife refers to his wife which he hath taken is to include his brother's childless widow these do not supply water and food and repair the roads for the army Gemara our rabbis taught and the officers shall speak it is possible to think that this refers to their own words but when it states and the officers shall speak further behold this is to be understood as their own words so how am I to explain and the officers shall speak scripture alludes to the words of the priest anointed for battle so what was the procedure a priest speaks the words and an officer proclaims them to the army one authority taught a priest speaks the words and an officer proclaims them another taught a priest speaks the words and a priest proclaims them while yet another taught an officer speaks the words and an Officer proclaims them. Abay said, "What then was the procedure from when you draw nigh down to and the officers shall speak? A priest speaks and a priest proclaims from and the officers shall speak down to and the officers shall speak further. A priest speaks and an officer proclaims from and the officers shall speak onwards and officer speaks and an officer proclaims. What man is there that hath built a new house, etc.? Our rabbis taught that hath built. I have here only the case where he built whence. Is it that the law applies also to a case where he purchased inherited or somebody gave it to him as a present? There is a text to state what man is there that hath built a house. I have here only the case of a house whence is it that it includes a barn for straw, a stable for cattle, a shed for wood, and a storehouse? There is a text to state that hath built. I.e., whatever structure be erected, it is possible to imagine that I am also to include one who built a lodge, lodge or veranda. There is a Text to state a house as house implies a place suitable for habitation so every building for which exemption may be claimed must be suitable for habitation. Our Elizer B. Jacob says the word house is to be interpreted according to its usual definition and the fact that scripture does not read and hath not dedicated but and hath not dedicated it is to exclude a robber is this to say that this teaching is not in agreement with that of our Jose the Galilean for if it agreed with our Jose the Galilean behold he has said faint hearted i.e. he was afraid Talmud, Maso to be because of the transgressions he had committed you may even say that it agrees with our Jose the Galilean as e.g. when the man had repented and restored the monetary value but in that event he becomes the purchaser and as such returns home since it originally came into his possession as a result of robbery he does not return home and what man is there that hath planted a vineyard etc. Our rabbis taught that hath. Planted I have here only the case where he planted whence is it that the law applies also to a case where he purchased inherited or somebody gave it to him as a present there is a text to state and what man is there that hath planted a vineyard I have here only the case of a vineyard whence is it that it includes five fruit trees and even of other kinds of plantings there is a text to state that hath planted it is possible to think that I am also to include one who planted four fruit trees or five trees which are not fruit bearing therefore there is a text to state a vineyard our Elizer says the word vineyard is to be interpreted according to its usual definition and the fact that scripture does not read one hath not used the fruit but and hath not used the fruit thereof is to exclude one who bends or grafts the vine but we have the teaching it is all one whether he planted bent or grafted it or Zara said in the name of our there is no contradiction the letter Referring to a permitted grafting and the former to a prohibited grafting, what is an instance of this permitted grafting? If I say a young shoot on a young shoot, it follows that he ought to return home on account of planting the first young shoot. It must therefore be grafting a young shoot on an old stem. But Arabah has said if he grafted a young shoot on an old stem, a young shoot is annulled by the old stem, and the law of Orla does not apply to it. Or Jeremiah said it certainly refers to a young shoot on a young shoot. And the case of a permitted grafting is where, e.g., he planted the first stem for a hedge or for timber, as we have learned. He who plants for a hedge or for timber is exempt from the law of Orla. What is the distinction that a young shoot is annulled when grafted on an old stem, but not when grafted on a young shoot? In the former case, if he reconsiders his intention with regard to it, it is incapable of retraction. But in the latter case, if he reconsiders his Intention with regard to it, it is capable of retraction since it is then analogous to plants which grow of themselves for we have learned when they grow of themselves they are liable to rule but let him explain the mission as dealing with the case of a vineyard belonging to two partners where each returns home on account of his own grafting our papa declared this is to say that in the case of a vineyard belonging to two partners the war regulations do not apply to it why then is it different with five brothers one of whom dies in battle that they all return home in the latter illustration we apply the words his wife to each one of them but in the other we cannot apply the words his vineyard to each one of them or nomin b isaac said the mission deals with the case where he grafted a tree into vegetables and this accords with the view of the teacher responsible for the following teaching if one bends a tree into vegetables rabbin simeon b gamaliel allows it in the name of our Judah began the Akfar Akko, but the sages forbid it when Ardimi came from Palestine to Babylon. He reported in the name of our Yohanan, whose teaching is it, it is that of our Eliezer B. Jacob did not our Eliezer B. Jacob declare above the word vineyard is to be interpreted according to its usual definition. So here also planted is to be interpreted according to its usual definition. Hence, if he planted, he does return home, but if he bends or grafts, he does not. When Ardimi came, he reported that our Yohanan said in the name of our Eliezer B. Jacob, a young shoot less than a handbreadth in height is liable for Orla so long as it appears to be a year old, but this only applies where there are two plants with two other plants parallel to them and one in front should, however, the entire vineyard consists of such shoots that it is talked about. When Ardimi came, he reported that our Yohanan said in the name of our Eliezer B. Jacob, a dead body affects four cubits with respect to the recital of the Shema. As it is said, whoso mock at the poor reproach at his maker, our Isaac declared that our Yohanan said in the name of our Elizer B. Jacob, a stepdaughter reared with her stepdash broth
above but if the entrance is from the side all agree that a space of four cubits is necessary this should be just the reverse on the contrary when the entrance is from the side he merely steps aside and goes out but when it is from above it is impossible for him to avoid forming a cover but read thus when does the statement of Beth Hillel apply to all whose entrance is from the side but if the entrance is from above a space of four cubits is necessary now the teaching that one is clean who stands there and only holds good of a forecourt of a burial vault where the partitions between the graves and the forecourt are distinctly marked but a corpse in general affects four cubits and what man is there that hath betrothed a wife etc. Our rabbis taught that hath betrothed it is all one whether he betrothed a virgin or a widow or a childless widow waiting for her brother-in-law and even when there are five brothers one of whom died in battle they all return home. The fact that scripture does not read and hath not taken but and hath not taken her is to exclude a high priest who married a widow an ordinary priest who married a divorcee or a halia a Israelite who married an illegitimate or a nathan or a daughter of an Israelite married to an illegitimate or a nathan is this to say that this teaching is not in agreement with our Jose the Galilean for if it agreed with our Jose the Galilean behold he has said faint-hearted i.e. he was afraid because of the transgressions he had committed you may even say that it agrees with our Jose the Galilean and it is in accord with Rabbah for Rabbah said he is certainly not guilty until he has cohabited with her for what is the reason of the prohibition shall he not take so that he shall not profane his seed hence he does not receive the punishment of lashes until he has cohabited with her our rabbis taught the order of the phrases is that hath built that hath planted that hath betrothed the Torah. Has thus taught a rule of conduct that a man should build a house plant a vineyard and then marry a wife similarly declared Solomon in his wisdom prepare thy work without and make it ready for thee in the field and afterwards build thine house prepare thy work without i.e. a dwelling place and make it ready for thee in the field i.e. a vineyard and afterwards build thine house i.e. a wife another interpretation is prepare thy work without i.e. scripture and make it ready for thee in the field i.e. Mission and afterwards build thine house i.e. Gamar another explanation is prepare thy work without i.e. scripture and mission and make it ready for thee in the field i.e. Gamar and afterwards build thine house i.e. good deeds are Elizer son of our Jose the Galilean says prepare thy work without i.e. scripture mission and Gamar and make it ready for thee in the field i.e. good deeds and afterwards build thine house i.e. make research in the Torah and receive the reward the following do not return home he who built a lodge etc. A tan taught if when rebuilding the house he adds a row of fresh bricks to it he does return home our Elizer says also he who built a brick house in Sharon does not return home a tan taught the reason is because they have to renew it twice in a period of seven years the following do not move from their place he who built a new house and dedicated it etc. Our rabbis taught a new wife I have here only a new wife once is it that the law applies also to a widow. And divorce there is a text to state wife I in every case why however does the text state a new wife it means one who is new to him thus excluding the case of a man who takes back his divorce wife since she is not new to him our rabbis taught he shall not go out in the host and it is possible to think that he does not go out in the host but he supplies water and food and repairs the roads for the army therefore there is a text to state neither shall he be charged with any business it is possible to think that I am also to include among those who do not move from their place the man who built a house but did not dedicate it or planted a vineyard and did not use its fruit or betrothed the wife but did not take her therefore there is a text to state neither shall he be charged but you may charge others since however it is written neither shall he be charged what is the purpose of he shall not go out in the host so that a transgression of the law should involve two prohibitions. Mishnah and the officers shall speak further unto the people etc. Our Akiva says fearful and faint-hearted is to be understood literally because he is unable to stand in the battle ranks and see a drawn sword. Our Jose the Galilean says fearful and faint-hearted alludes to one who is afraid because of the transgressions he had committed therefore the Torah connected all these with him that he may return home on their account. Our Jose says a high priest who married a widow an ordinary priest who married a divorce or halia a Israelite who married an illegitimate or nathan and the daughter of an Israelite who married an illegitimate or a nathan behold such an one is fearful and faint-hearted and it shall be when the officers have made an end of speaking unto the people that they shall appoint captains of hosts at the head of the people and at the rear of the people they station guards in front of them and others behind them with iron axes in their hands and should anyone wish to flee they have permission to smite his thighs Talmud, Ma so to be because the beginning of flight is falling as it is said Israel is fled before the Philistines and there hath been a great slaughter among the people and further on it states and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain etc. To what does all the foregoing apply to voluntary wars but in the wars commanded by the Torah all go forth even a bridegroom from his chamber and a bride from her canopy our Judah says to what does all the foregoing apply to the wars commanded by the Torah but in obligatory wars all go forth even a bridegroom from his chamber and a bride from her canopy tomorrow what is the difference between our Jose and our Jose the Galilean the issue between them is the transgression of a rabbinical ordinance with whom does the following teaching accord he who speaks between donning one phylactery and the other has committed a transgression and returns home under the war regulations with whom does it accord with our Jose the Galilean who is the tenor of the following our rabbis taught if he heard the sound of trumpets and was terror stricken or the crash of shields and was terror stricken or beheld the brandishing of swords and the urine discharged itself upon his knees he returns home with whom does it accord are we to say that it is with our Akiva and not our Jose the Galilean in such a circumstance even our Jose the Galilean admits that he returns home because it is written lest his brethren's heart melt as his heart and it shall be when the officers have made an end etc the phrase because the beginning of flight is falling should be because falling is the beginning of flight read in the mission because falling is the beginning of flight to what does all the foregoing apply to voluntary wars etc our Yohanan said a war which is designated voluntary according to the rabbis is commanded according to our Judah and a war which is designated commanded according to the Rabbis is obligatory according to our Judah Rabbis said the wars waged by Joshua to conquer Canaan were obligatory in the opinion of all the wars waged by the house of David for territorial expansion were voluntary in the opinion of all where they differ is with regard to wars against even so that these should not march against them one calls them commanded and the other voluntary the practical issue being that one who is engaged in the performance of a commandment is exempt from it. Performance of another commandment C-H-A-P-T-E-R-I-X mission the declaration over the heifer whose neck is to be broken must be in the holy tongue as it is said if one be found slain in the earth then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth three used to go forth from the supreme court in Jerusalem our Judah says five as it is stated thy elders i.e. two and thy judges i.e. two and since a court of justice cannot consist of an even number they add one more if the corpse was found hidden in a heap of stones or hanging on a tree or floating upon the surface of the water they do not break a heifer's neck because it is stated in the earth and not hidden in a heap of stones nor hanging on a tree in a field nor floating upon the surface of the water if it was found near to the frontier or a city the majority of whose inhabitants were heathens or a city in which there is no court of justice they do not break a heifer's neck they only measure the distance to a city in which there is a court of justice Kamara how does the author of the mission prove his point our said this is what he intends it is stated and they shall answer and say and elsewhere it is stated and the levites shall answer and say etc as the answering mentioned in this latter passage was in the holy tongue so here also it was in the holy tongue and as to the procedure in the ceremony of the heifer whose neck was to be broken if one be found slain in the earth and thy elders and thy judges shall Come forth three used to go forth from the Supreme Court in Jerusalem our Judah says five etc. Our rabbis taught and thy elders and thy judges shall come forth thy elders i.e. two and thy judges i.e. two and since a court of justice cannot consist of an even number they add one more hence there were five such is the statement of our Judah but our Simeon says thy elders i.e. two and since a court of justice cannot consist of an even number they add one more hence there were three but for our Simeon also it is written and thy judges he requires that for the teaching that they must be the most distinguished of thy judges and where does our Judah derive the teaching that they must be the most distinguished it follows from thy and thy elders how does our Simeon meet this argument if the Almerciful had only written elders I
They shall measure i.e. two according to our Judah, then there must be nine, and according to our Simeon, there must be seven. No, the two phrases are required for the following teaching. They shall come forth, they and not their agents, and they shall measure even if it is found obviously near to a particular city. They must still measure since it is a commandment to carry out the measurement. Our mission is not in agreement with our Elizabeth B. Jacob, for it has been taught our Elizabeth B. Jacob says thy elders. I.e. the Sanhedrin, thy judges, i.e. the king and high priest, the king, for it is written, the king by judgment establisheth the land, and the high priest, for it is written, and thou shalt come unto the priests, the levites, and unto the judge that shall be, etc. The question was asked, is our Elizabeth B. Jacob only at variance in defining judges as the king and high priest, but as regards the number of members of the Sanhedrin, does he agree with our Judah or our Simeon, or perhaps he is also at variance on that? Matter two and requires the whole of the Sanhedrin. Our Joseph said, Come and hear if they found a rebellious elder in Beth Pagi and he rebelled against them. It is possible to think that his act of rebellion is punishable. Therefore, there is a text to state, Then shalt thou arise and get thee up unto the place. This teaches that the place determines whether the act of rebellion is punishable. Now, how many of them had gone forth from the great Sanhedrin to Beth Pagi? If I say that only a part of them had gone forth, perhaps they who remain behind are of the same opinion as the accused. It is therefore evident that all must go forth. And for what purpose, if for a secular object was it possible for them all to go for? Behold, it is written, Thy navel is like a round goblet wherein no mingled wine is wanting, so that should a member have need to go out from the hall where the Sanhedrin was in session, he may only do so if twenty three of his colleagues remain corresponding to the number of a. Minor Sanhedrin otherwise he may not leave obviously then they had gone forth for a religious object for what object must it not be to measure in connection with the heifer according to the opinion of our Elizabeth B. Jacob Abbe said to our Joseph no they may all go forth for such a purpose as to add to the boundaries of the city of Jerusalem or the temple courts as we have learned we do not add to the boundaries of the city of Jerusalem or the temple courts except by a court of seventy one. There is a teaching in agreement with our Joseph if they met in Beth Pagi and an elder rebelled against them e.g. they went forth to carry out a measurement in connection with the heifer or to add to the boundaries of the city of Jerusalem or the temple courts it is possible to think that his act of rebellion is punishable therefore there is a text to state then shalt thou arise and get thee up etc. This teaches that the place determines whether the act of rebellion is punishable if it Corpse was found hidden in a heap of stones or hanging on a tree is this to say that our mission agrees with our Judah and not the rabbis for it has been taught and has forgot a sheaf in the field this excludes a sheaf which was hidden such is the statement of our Judah but the sages declare that in the field is to include a hidden sheaf rab said you may even maintain that it agrees with the rabbis since each case is to be explained in the light of its context in connection with the corpse. It is written if one be found slain i.e. wherever it be found in the earth i.e. to the exclusion of one which is hidden the other case of the sheaf is to be explained in the light of the context for it is written when thou reapest thine harvest in thy field and hast forgot a sheaf there is an analogy between the forgotten sheaf and the harvesting as the harvesting is visible to all so the forgotten sheaf must be visible to all and the fact that the all merciful wrote in the field is to include a Hidden sheep then let our Judah likewise draw an analogy between the forgotten sheep and the harvesting he actually does so but he argues what is the purpose of in the field it is required to include standing corn which is forgotten from where then do the rabbis derive the regulation of standing corn which is forgotten they derive it from when thou reapest thine harvest in thy field and hast forgotten and how does our Judah explain this phrase he requires it for the teaching of our Abba the name of our Eliezer for our Abba said in the name of our Eliezer it excludes the case where sheep were carried by the wind into his neighbor's field and from where do the rabbis derive this regulation from the fact that scripture has thy field and not merely the field and what of our Judah he draws no inference from thy field as distinct from the field our Jeremiah asked how is it if sheep were carried into his own field is the airspace above a field identical with the field or not our Kahana said to our Papi, another version is our Kahana said to our Zebed, the problem is to be solved from the teaching of our Abba who said in the name of our Eliezer it excludes the case where sheets were carried by the wind into his neighbor's field, implying does it not that only when they are carried into his neighbor's field they are excluded, but if the wind drops them into his own field they are not, but according to your reasoning it would follow that if the sheets were carried into his neighbor's field and alighted upon a stone, etc., they are excluded, but should they lie upon the ground they are not, surely we require the sheets to be in that field, but they are not there, rather must they argue thus it excludes when the sheets were in his neighbor's field, even if actually lying upon the ground and the expression carried is only employed because this could have happened only if they were carried by the force of the wind, come and here if he laid hold of a sheet too. Convey it into the city, placed it on top of another sheep belonging to his neighbor, and forgot it. The lower is considered to be a forgotten sheep, but not the upper. Our Simeon B. Judah says in the name of our Simeon, neither is a forgotten sheep the lower because it is hidden, and the upper because it is suspended. Hence, they only differ as regards the lower, but with respect to the upper, they all agree that it is not a hidden sheep. It is different in the circumstance because having taken hold of it, he has the right to it. If that is so, why use the argument placed it on top of another sheep belonging to his neighbor? It would have been the same if he had laid it upon the field of his neighbor. That is so, but he used the illustration of on top of another sheep belonging to his neighbor because of the instance of the lower sheep about which there was a difference of opinion. Why then should he use the phrase because it is suspended? Red because it is like something suspended. Abbe said. Behold, I am like Benazay in the streets of Tiberias. So one of the rabbis asked Abbe if there were two corpses, one on top of the other, from which is the measurement taken. Do we argue that with two things of the same kind the lower is regarded as hidden, and with two things of the same kind the upper is not regarded as suspended, so that he takes the measurement from the upper, or perhaps with two things of the same kind the upper is regarded as suspended, and with two things of the same kind the lower is not regarded as hidden, so that he takes the measurement from the lower, or perhaps with two things of the same kind the lower is regarded as hidden, and with two things of the same kind the upper is regarded as suspended, so that he takes measurement neither from the lower nor the upper. He replied to him, Talmud, Masoda, you have it stated if he laid hold of a sheep to convey it into the city, placed it on top of another sheep belonging to his neighbor, and forgot it. The lower is considered to be a forgotten sheep, but not the upper. Our Simeon B. Judah says in the name of our Simeon, neither is a forgotten sheep the lower because it is hidden and the upper because it is suspended. Now they were of the opinion that these ten agreed with our Judah who said in the field, i.e., to the exclusion of one which is hidden, do they then not differ on this issue? One holds that with two things of the same kind the lower is regarded as hidden and the other holds it is not regarded as hidden. No, if they were of the same opinion as our Judah, they all agree that with two things of the same kind the lower is regarded as hidden, but here the difference is the same as that of our Judah and the rabbis. The rabbis here agree with the rabbis there, and our Simeon B. Judah agrees with our Judah. If that is so, why use the argument on top of another sheep belonging to his neighbor? It would have been the same if he had placed it on the earth or on pebbles, that is so, but the purpose. Was to let you know how strong is the position of our Judah who said that even with two things of the same kind the lower is regarded as hidden or rabbis taught slain but not strangled slain but not one who is expiring in the land but not hidden in a heap of stones lying but not hanging on a tree in the earth but not floating upon the surface of the water our Eliezer says in all these cases if the person had been slain they break the heifer's neck it has been taught our Jose B. Judah said they ask our Eliezer do you not admit that if he had been strangled and was lying upon a dung heap they do not break the heifer's neck yes consequently you must agree that slain indicates one who is not strangled similarly in the earth indicates one who is not hidden in a heap of stones lying one who is not hanging on a tree in the earth one who is not floating upon the surface of the water how does our Eliezer meet this argument the word slain is written redundantly if it was found near to the frontier or a city the majority of whose inhabitants were Gentiles etc. because it is written be found thus excluding what commonly occurs or a city in which there is no court of justice because we require the
It follows that we are not dealing here with the subject of measurement. Our Isaac said they differ because of the regulation that a Mathmizwa acquires his place and thus he means to say he acquires his place for burial and where the head is found in one place and the body in another they carry the head to the body and bury it there such is the statement of our Eliezer but our Akiba says they carry the body to the head and bury it there in what do they differ one is of the opinion that the body is in the place where it fell and the head rolled away while the other is of the opinion that the head remains in the place where it falls while the body falls some way off from what part of the body do they measure in what do they differ one is of the opinion that the source of existence is in the nose while the other is of the opinion that the source of existence is in the navel is this to say that they differ on the same point as the following teachers from where is the embryo Formed from the head and thus it states thou art he that took me goes out of my mother's womb and it further states cut off goes of thine hair and cast it away etc. Abbasal says it is from the navel and its root spreads in all directions from there you may even say that Abbasal agrees with our Akibal because Abbasal's statement only applies to the formation that when an embryo is formed it is formed from the center but with respect to existence all agree that its source is in the nose. For it is written all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life etc. Our Eliezer B. Jacob says from the place where he was made a slain person from the neck what is the reason of our Eliezer B. Jacob because it is written to lay thee upon the necks of the wicked that our slain mission when the elders of Jerusalem had departed and got away the elders of that city take a heifer of the herd which has not drawn in the yoke and the blemish does not disqualify it they bring it down to a ravine. Which is stony even is to be understood in its literal sense of heart, but even if it be not stony, it is fit for the ceremony. They then break its neck with a hatchet from behind the side, may never be sewn or tilled, but it is permitted to cart flax and chisel stones. There, the elders of that city then wash their hands with water in the place where the heifer's neck was broken, and declare our hands have not shed this blood, neither have our eyes seen it, but can it enter our minds that the elders of a court of justice are shedders of blood? The meaning of their statement is, however, the man found dead did not come to us for help, and we dismissed him without supplying him with food. We did not see him and let him go without escort. Talmud, Masoda, then the priests exclaim, Forgive, O Lord, that people Israel whom thou hast redeemed, and suffer not innocent blood to remain in the midst of that people Israel. There is no need for them to say, and the blood shall be forgiven them, but the Holy Spirit announces to them when you act thus the blood is forgiven you Gemara but that a blemish disqualified a heifer may be deduced by a fortiori reasoning from the instance of the red cow if a blemish disqualifies a cow which is not disqualified on account of age how much more must a blemish disqualify a heifer which is disqualified on account of age it is different there because scripture stated wherein is no blemish a blemish disqualifies a red cow but does not disqualify a heifer. According to this argument the other disqualifications on account of work having been done by it should not apply to the red cow why then did Rab Judah say in the name of Rab if a person laid a bundle of sacks upon it it is disqualified but with a heifer it is not disqualified until it draws a load it is different with a red cow because we derive the meaning of the term yoke in connection with a red cow from its occurrence in connection with a heifer but let the deduction that a Blemish disqualifies a heifer be also drawn from the instance of a red cow on the basis of a common use of the term yoke. Behold, the All-Merciful has excluded that by using the word wherein Baba with the heifer it is likewise written wherewith Baba is required to exclude animals destined as sacrifices which are not disqualified by having been used for work because it might have occurred to you to say let us draw a conclusion by a fortiori reasoning from the heifer of a heifer. Which is not disqualified by a blemish is disqualified by having been used for work. How much more must animals destined as sacrifices which are disqualified by a blemish be disqualified by having been used for work? It can however be objected this is right for a heifer because it is also disqualified by an age limit. Do you mean to say then that there are no animals destined as sacrifices which are disqualified by an age limit? Hence a text is necessary for those offerings which are disqualified. By an age limit is however the regulation that animals destined as sacrifices are not disqualified by having been used for work derived from here surely it is derived from the following blind or broken or maimed or having a wen or scurvy or scabbed ye shall not offer these unto the Lord these ye shall not offer but you may offer animals as sacrifices which have been used for work this verse is necessary because it might have occurred to you to say this only applies where they have been used for permissible work but where it was for prohibited work conclude that they are forbidden as sacrifices so it was necessary to have this verse from which we infer that the animals may be offered even if they had been used for prohibited work but it could likewise have been derived from the following neither from the hand of a stranger shall ye offer the bread of your God of any of these these you shall not offer but you may offer animals which have been used for work this verse is Necessary because it might have occurred to you to say this only applies when they were worked while they were still not designated as sacrifices but when they were worked after having been designated as sacrifices conclude that they are forbidden so it was necessary to have this verse from which we infer that even then they are acceptable as offerings the above text teaches Rab Judah said in the name of Rab if a person laid a bundle of sacks upon it it is disqualified but with a heifer it is not disqualified until it draws a load it is objected yoke I have only mentioned of a yoke is it that there are other disqualifications on account of work having been done by it you may argue by a fortiori reasoning if a heifer which is not disqualified by a blemish is disqualified by having been used for work how much more must a red cow which is disqualified by a blemish be disqualified by having been used for various kinds of work and if you like you may argue it is stated here yoke and there with the heifer it is stated yoke as there the various kinds of work disqualify so here with the red cow the various kinds of work disqualify but why have this alternative argument because you might reply as mentioned above it can however be objected this is right for a heifer because it is also disqualified by an age limit or it might also be objected that the case of animals destined as sacrifices proves the contrary thus a blemish disqualifies them but the fact that they were used for work does not disqualify them therefore the alternative line of reasoning is employed it is stated here yoke and there with the heifer it is stated yoke as there the various kinds of work disqualify so here with the red cow the various kinds of work disqualify now from the same line of reasoning you may conclude as there with the heifer it is not disqualified until it draws a load so here with the red cow it is not disqualified until it draws a load this is a matter disputed by Tanaim. Some of them deduce it from the instance of the heifer, while others deduce it from the law of the red cow itself. For it has been taught yoke. I have mentioned only of a yoke. Whence is it that various kinds of work disqualify? There is a text to state upon which never came yoke. I.e. work of any sort. If that is so, why is yoke specified? A yoke disqualifies whether during the time of work or not during the time of work, but the various kinds of work only disqualify during the time of work. But say that upon which never came is general and yoke is particular. And where there is a case of general and particular, only what is in the particular is in the general. Is a yoke only disqualifies and nothing else. The phrase which is inclusive of various kinds of work and there is a similar teaching in connection with the heifer as follows. Yoke. I have mentioned only of a yoke. Whence is it that various kinds of work disqualify? There is a text to state. Which hath not been wrought with i.e. work of any sort if that is so why is yoke specified a yoke disqualifies whether during the time of work or not during the time of work but the various kinds of work only disqualify during the time of work but say that which hath not been wrought with is general and yoke is particular and where there is a case of general and particular only what is in the particular is in the general is a yoke disqualifies and nothing else the phrase which is inclusive of various kinds of work are about said I asked are you had and to what extent must there be drawing by a yoke to constitute a disqualification he replied the full extent of the yoke the question was asked does this mean its length or breadth one of the rabbis named our Jacob answered the statement of our and was explained to me as indicating drawing by a yoke to the extent of a hand breadth in its breadth then our and should have said a hand breadth he intended to inform us that the Minimum of a yoke in its breadth is a hand breadth for what purpose does he deduce this for buying and selling our yohan and be Saul said why does the Torah mention that he should bring a heifer into a ravine the holy one blessed be he said let something which did not produce fruit have its neck broken in a place which is not fertile and atone for one who was not allowed to produce fruit what does this last word fruit mean if I answer that it means offspring then according to this argument we should not break a heifer's neck if the man found dead was
says it refers to the future. Rabbah said nobody disputes as to the future since it is written it shall not be sown when they differ as to the past. Arjashia argues is it written and it shall not be tilled and Arjanathan argues is it written which has not been tilled and how does Arjashia meet Arjanathan's argument the relative pronoun which must be understood of the past and Arjanathan which is employed in an inclusive sense but it is permitted to card flax and chisel stones there are. Rabbis taught which is neither plowed nor sown. I have here only sowing. Whence is it that the other kinds of agricultural work are prohibited? There is a text to state which is neither plowed, i.e., agricultural labor in any form. If that is so, why is it stated nor sown? Its purpose is to inform us that as sowing is special since it is connected with the soil itself. So everything which is connected with the soil itself is forbidden to the exclusion of carting flax and chiseling stones which are not connected with the soil itself. But argue that which is neither plowed is general and nor sown particular. And where there is a case of general and particular, only what is in the particular is in the general. The sowing only is forbidden, but nothing else. The term which is employed in an inclusive sense, the elders of that city then wash their hands, etc. Are rabbis taught, and all the elders of that city who are nearest unto the slain man shall wash their hands over the heifer whose neck. Was broken in the valley, there was no need to state whose neck was broken. Why then is whose neck was broken added? It signifies over the place of the heifer's neck where it was broken. They then declare our hands have not shed this blood, neither have our eyes seen it, but can it enter our minds that the members of a court of justice shed blood? The meaning of their statement is, however, the man found dead did not come to us for help, and we dismissed him without supplying him with food. We did not see him and let him go without an escort. It has been taught our mayor used to say we may compel a person to escort a traveler because the reward for escorting is limitless, as it is said. And the watchers saw a man come forth out of the city, and they said unto him, Shoe us, we pray thee the entrance into the city, and we will deal kindly with thee. It continues, and he shewed them the entrance into the city. What was the kindness they did to him? They slew the whole of the city at the edge of it. Sword, but let that man and his family go, and the man went into the land of the Hittites and built a city and called the name thereof Luz, which is the name thereof unto this day. It has been taught that is the Luz in which they die, the blue that is the Luz against which Sennacherib marched without disturbing it, against which Nebuchadnezzar marched without destroying it, and even the angel of death has no permission to pass through it. But when the old men there become tired of life, they go outside the wall and then die for is not the matter. And a fortiori inference, if this Canaanite who did not utter a word or walk a step caused deliverance to come to himself and his seed unto the end of all generations, how much more so he who performs the act of escorting by actually going with the person? How did he show them the way? Hezekiah said he just curved his mouth for them, or Yohanan said he pointed for them with his finger. There is a teaching in agreement with Yohanan this because this. Canaanite pointed with his finger he caused deliverance to come to himself and his seat unto the end of all generations are Joshua B. Levi said whoever is on a journey and has no escort should occupy his mind with Torah as it is said for they shall be a chaplet of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck are Joshua B. Levi also said because of the four paces with which Pharaoh accompanied Abraham as it is said and Pharaoh gave men charge concerning him etc he was allowed to enslave it. Latter's descendants for four hundred years as it is said and shall serve them and they shall afflict them four hundred years Rab Judah said in the name of Rab whoever accompanies his neighbor four cubits in a city will come to no harm when on a journey Rabbi accompanied Rabbi B. Isaac four cubits in a city danger threatened him but he was saved our rabbis taught a teacher accompanies his pupils until the outskirts of a city one colleague accompanies another up to the Sabbath limit. People accompanies his master a distance without limit, but how far are she's hate set up to a parasang? This only applies when his master is not a distinguished scholar, but should his master be a distinguished scholar, he accompanies him three parasangs are Kahana once accompanied Arshai B. Ashi from Palm Nahara to Bizinyatha. When they arrived there, he said to him, Is it true what you say that these palms of Babylon are from the time of Adam? He answered, You have reminded me of something which are. Hosea B. Hanada said, This is what means that which is written through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt since no man passed through it. How could anyone dwell there and since nobody dwelt there, how could anyone pass through it? But the meaning is a land concerning which Adam decreed that it should be inhabited has become inhabited, and a land concerning which Adam did not so decree has not been inhabited. Our Mordecai accompanied Arashi from Hadronia to Bikafi. Another version is. To be dirt are Yohanan said in the name of our Mayor whoever does not escort others or allow himself to be escorted is as though he sheds blood for had the men of Jericho escorted Elisha he would not have stirred up bears against the children as it is said and he went up from thence unto Bethel and as he was going up by the way there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him go up thou bald head go up thou bald head what they said to him was go up thou who hast made this place bald for us what means little children are Eliezer said any Aram children means they were bare many Aram of precepts little means they were little of faith they tanned taught they were youths any Aram but they behaved like little children are Joseph demurred to this but perhaps they were so called after the name of the place for is it not written and the Syrians had gone out in bands and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little mate and the question is asked by us Made Nair and little and our Petath explained she was a little girl from a place called Nirun in this passage her place is not specified but in the other their place is specified and he looked behind him and saw them and cursed them in the name of the Lord what did he see Rab said he actually looked upon them as it has been taught Rab and Simeon B. Gamaliel says wherever the sages set their eyes there is either death or calamity Samuel said he saw that their mothers had all become conceived with them on the day of atonement our Isaac the Smith said he saw that their hair was plaited as with the Morites or Yohanan said he saw that there was no sap of the commandments in them but perhaps there would have been such in their descendants our Eliezer said neither in them nor in their descendants unto the end of all generations and there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tore forty and two children of them Talmud Masoda Rab and Samuel differ in their interpretation. One said it was a miracle while the other said it was a miracle within a miracle he who said it was a miracle did so because there was a forest but there were no bears he who said it was a miracle within a miracle did so because there was no forest nor were there any bears but according to the latter interpretation there need have been provided bears but not a forest it was required because the bears would have been frightened our Hannah said on account of the 42 sacrifices which Balak king of Moab offered were 42 children cut off from Israel but it is not so for Rab Judah has said in the name of Rab always should a man occupy himself with Torah and the commandments even though it be not for their own sake for from occupying himself with them not for their own sake he comes to do so for their own sake because as a reward for the 42 sacrifices which Balak king of Moab offered he merited that Ruth should issue from him and from her issued Solomon. Concerning whom it is written, eight thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer, and our Hosea Behoni said, Ruth was the daughter of Eglon, the son of Balak. Nevertheless, his desire was to curse Israel, and the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, we pray thee, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my lord seeth, etc. But how could it be so, since the water is not in the land? Miscarrieth, what then was its pleasantness? Arhanin said, The favor of a place in the estimation of its inhabitants are. Yohanan said, There are three kinds of favor: the favor of a locality in the estimation of its inhabitants, the favor of a woman in the estimation of her husband, and the favor of an article in the estimation of its purchaser. Our rabbis taught Elisha was afflicted with three illnesses: one because he stirred up the bears against the children, one because he thrust Gehazi away with both his hands, and one of which he died, as it is said. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. Are. Rabbis have taught always let the left hand thrust away and the right hand draw near not like Elisha who thrust Gehazi away with both his hands and not like our Joshua be who thrust one of his disciples away with both his hands how is it with Elisha as it is written and Naaman said be content take two talents and it is written and he said unto him went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants but had he received all these things silver and garments were what he had received our Isaac said at that time Elisha was engaged in the study of the law
Whilst our Joshua be prey, fled to Alexandria in Egypt when there was peace, Simeon Bishada sent this message to him from Jerusalem, the holy city, to the Alexandria in Egypt. O oh, my sister, my husband dwelleth in my midst, and I abide desolate. Our Joshua rose and came back and found himself in a certain inn where they paid him great respect. He said, How beautiful is this Saxony? One of his disciples said to him, My master, her eyes are narrow. He replied to him, Wicked person, is it with such thoughts that thou occupiest thyself? He sent forth four hundred horns and excommunicated him. The disciple came before him on many occasions, saying, Receive me, but he refused to notice him. One day while our Joshua was reciting the Shema, he came before him. His intention was to receive him, and he made a sign to him with his hand, but the disciple thought he was repelling him, so he went and set up a brick and worshipped it. Our Joshua said to him, Repent, but he answered him, Thus have I received from. Be that whoever sinned and caused others to sin is deprived of the power of doing penitence. A master has said the disciple practiced magic and led Israel astray. It has been taught our Simeon B. Eliezer says also human nature should a child and woman thrust aside with the left hand and draw near with the right hand. Misha, if the murderer was discovered before the heifer's neck was broken, it goes free and feeds with the herd. But if after the heifer's neck was broken, it is buried in that place. Because it came there from the outset in connection with a matter of doubt and atoned for the doubt which is now gone. If the heifer's neck was broken and afterwards the murderer is discovered, behold, he is executed. If one witness says I saw the murderer and one witness says you did not see him, or if a woman says I saw him and another woman says you did not see him, they break its neck. If one witness says I saw him and two say you did not see him, they break its neck. If two say we saw him and one. Says to them, You did not see him, they do not break its neck. When murderers multiplied, the ceremony of breaking a heifer's neck was discontinued. That was when Eliza Bidana, also called Tehina B. Perisha, appeared. He was afterwards renamed son of the murderer. When adulterers multiplied, the ceremony of the bitter water was discontinued, and it was Aryohan and Bizakai who discontinued it. As it is said, I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your brides when they commit adultery for they themselves, etc. When Jose B. Joser of Zirda and Jose B. Judah of Jerusalem died, the great cluster ceased. As it is said, There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fig. Yohanan the high priest brought to an end the confession made at the presentation of the tithe. He also abolished the wakers and the knockers. Talmud, Maso to be up to his days, the hammer used to strike in Jerusalem, and in his days there was no need to inquire about the Megamara or rabbis taught. Whence is it that if the heifer's neck had been broken and the murderer is afterwards discovered, they do not set him free? There is a text to state, and no expiation can be made for the land for the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. If one witness says, I saw the murderer, etc., the reason why his evidence is not accepted is because there is somebody who contradicts him. Therefore, if there is nobody who contradicts him, one witness is believed. Whence is this is our rabbis taught, and it be not known who hath smitten him. Hence, if it be known who hath smitten him, even by one person at the other end of the world, they do not break the neck. Our Akiva says, Whence is it that if the Sanhedrin saw a person commit murder, but they do not recognize him, the neck of the heifer is not broken? There is a text to state, neither have our eyes seen it, but in this case they had seen it. Now that you admit that one witness is believed, how is it possible for another individual to? Contradict him, surely Allah has said wherever the Torah accepts the testimony of one witness, he is regarded as two witnesses, but the evidence of one is not regarded as the evidence of two. Allah can reply to you, read in the Mishnah, they do not break its neck. Similarly, said our Isaac, read in the Mishnah, they do not break its neck, but our high said, read in the Mishnah, they break its neck, and our high is in conflict with the teaching of Allah. There is no contradiction, one case referring to evidence given simultaneously, and the other when one witness follows the others. The Mishnah declares, if one witness says, I saw the murderer, and two say, you did not see him, they break its neck. Consequently, if there is one against one, they do not break its neck, and this is a refutation of our highest statement, but according to your own argument, cite the continuation. If two say, we saw him, and one says to them, you did not see him, they do not break its neck. Consequently, if there is one against one, they do. Break its neck, but our mission deals entirely with disqualified witnesses and is in accord with our Nehemiah who said wherever the Torah accepts the testimony of one witness, the decision follows the majority of persons who testify so that two women against one woman is identical with two men against one man. But there are some who declare that wherever a competent witness came and testified first, even a hundred women are regarded as equal to one witness. And with what circumstance are we dealing here? For example, if it was a woman who came first and testified and our Nehemiah's statement is to be construed, thus our Nehemiah says wherever the Torah accepts the testimony of one witness, the decision follows the majority of persons who testify so that two women against one woman is identical with two men against one man. But two women against one man is like half and half. Why then have we two teachings concerning disqualified witnesses? What you might have said was that when we Follow the majority of persons who testify it is for taking the severe view but to take the lenient view we do not follow the majority therefore the mission informs us of one case where the neck is broken and one where it is not and in each the majority is followed when murder is multiplied etc. Our rabbis taught when murder is multiplied the ceremony of breaking a heifer's neck was discontinued because it is only performed in a case of doubt but when murder is multiplied openly the ceremony of breaking a heifer's neck was discontinued when adulterer is multiplied etc. Our rabbis taught and the man shall be free from iniquity at the time when the man is free from iniquity the water proves his wife but when the man is not free from iniquity the water does not prove his wife why then was it necessary for the mission to add as it is said I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom etc. Should you say that his own iniquity prevents the water from proving his Wife, but the iniquity of his sons and daughters does not come, and here I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your brides when they commit adultery. And should you say that his sin with a married woman prevents the water from proving his wife, but not if it was with an unmarried woman, come and here for they themselves go aside with whores and with the harlots, etc. What means and the people that doth not understand shall be overthrown. Our Eliezer said the prophet spoke to Israel, if you are scrupulous with yourselves, the water will prove your wives, otherwise the water will not prove your wives when hedonists multiply. Justice became perverted, conduct deteriorated, and there is no satisfaction to God in the world when they who displayed partiality in judgment multiplied the command, ye shall not be afraid of the face of men became void, and ye shall not respect persons in judgment cease to be practiced, and people threw off the yoke of heaven and placed upon. Themselves the yoke of human beings when they who engaged in whisperings in judgment multiplied fierceness of the divine anger increased against Israel and the Shechina departed because it is written he judges among the judges when they're multiplied men of whom it is said their heart goeth after their gain they're multiplied they who call evil good and good evil when they're multiplied they who call evil good and good evil woes increased in the world when they who draw out their spittle multiplied the arrogant increased disciples diminished and Torah went about looking for them who would study it when the arrogant multiplied the daughters of Israel began to marry arrogant men because our generation looks only to the outward appearance but that is not so for a master has declared an arrogant person is not acceptable even to the members of his household as it is said a haughty man one about not at home i.e. even in his own house at first they jump round him but in the end he Becomes repugnant to them when they're multiplied, they who force their goods upon householders, bribery increased as well as miscarriage of justice and happiness cease when they're multiplied. Judges who said, I accept your favor and I shall appreciate your favor. There was an increase of every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Common persons were raised to eminence, the eminent were brought low, and the kingdom of Israel deteriorated more and more when envious men and plunderers of the poor multiplied their increase. They who hardened their hearts and closed their hands from lending to the needy, and they transgressed what is written in the Torah of his beware that there be not, etc. When they're multiplied, women who had stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, the need increased for the bitter water, but it ceased to be used when receivers of gifts multiplied. The days of human life became fewer and years were shortened as it is written, but he that hate gifts shall live. When the haughty of heart multiplied, dissensions increased in Israel. When the disciples of Shammai and Hillel multiplied, who had not served their teachers sufficiently, dissensions increased in Israel, and the Tor
said to the people, My sons, come, I will tell you this just as in the neglect of the great Terima, there is mortal sin. So, with the neglect to present the Terima of the tithe and with the use of untithed produce, there is mortal sin. He thus arose and decreed for them that whoever purchases fruits from an AM Hires must separate the first and second tithes therefrom. From the first tithe, he separates the Terima of the tithe and gives it to a priest, and as for the second tithe, he should go up and eat it in Jerusalem with regard to the first tithe and the tithe of the poor. Whoever demands them from his neighbor has the onus of proving that they had not been already apportioned. Yohanan made two decrees. He abolished the confession over the presentation of the first tithe in the case of the Habram and decreed in regard to the deme of the Am Hires. He also abolished the wakers. What does wakers mean? Reuba said, Beloved, used daily to stand upon the days and exclaim. Awake, why sleepest thou, O Lord? He said to them, Does then the all present sleep? Has it not been stated, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep, but so long as Israel abides in trouble and the Gentiles are in peace and comfort? The words, Awake, why sleepest thou, O Lord, should be uttered, and knockers, what does knockers mean? Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel, they used to make an incision on the calf between its horns so that the blood should flow into its eyes. Yohanan came and abolished the practice because it appeared as though the animal had a blemish. There is a very the which teaches they used to strike the animal with clubs, as is the practice with idolatry. Yohanan said to them, How long will you feed the altar with Nibbleth? How could he have described the carcasses as Nibbleth when they had been properly slaughtered? Rather should they be described as since the membrane of the brain may have been perforated, he thereupon arose and Ordained rings for them in the ground up to his days. The hammer used to strike in Jerusalem on the intermediate days of the festival. All his days there was no need to inquire about Dima as we have explained above Mishnah when the Sanhedrin ceased to function. Song ceased from the places of feasting as it is said they shall not drink wine with a song etc. When the former prophets died the Urim and Thummim ceased when the second temple was destroyed the Shamir and Nafit of them ceased and men. A faith disappeared from Israel as it is said help Lord for the godly man ceaseth etc. Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel says our Joshua testified that from the day the temple was destroyed there is no day without a curse the dew has not descended for a blessing and the flavor has departed from the fruits. Our Jose says the fatness was also removed from the fruits. Our Simeon B. Eliezer says the cessation of purity has removed taste and fragrance from fruits the cessation of the tithes has removed it. Fatness of corn, but the sages say immorality and witchcraft destroy everything. Gemara, how do we know that the text they shall not drink wine with the song applies to the time when the Sanhedrin ceased? Arhuna, son of our Joshua, said, Because scripture states the elders have ceased from the gate, the young men from their music rap said, The ear which listens to song should be torn off. Rabbah said, When there is song in the house, there is destruction on its threshold, as it is stated, their voice shall sing in the windows. Desolation shall be in the thresholds, for he hath laid bare the cedar work. What means for he hath laid bare the cedar work? Our Isaac said, Is a house panelled with cedar wood, a city Arab, but the meaning is even a house panelled with cedars will be overthrown. Mithro, yea, our Ashi said, Infer from this that when destruction begins, it begins on the threshold, as it is stated, Desolation shall be in the thresholds, or if you will deduce it from here, and the gate is smitten. With destruction, Mar son of Arashi said, I have personally seen him, and he gores like an ox. Arhuna said, The singing of sailors and pluffmen is permitted, but that of weavers is prohibited. Arhuna abolished singing, and a hundred geese were priced at a zoos, and a hundred seahs of wheat at a zoos, and there was no demand for them even at that price. Our Hista came and ordered Arhuna's edict to be disregarded, and a goose was required even at the high price of a zoos, but was not to be found. Our Joseph said, When men sing and women join in, it is licentiousness. When women sing and men join in, it is like fire in tow. For what practical purpose is this mentioned to abolish the latter before the former? Our Yohanan said, Whoever drinks to the accompaniment of the four musical instruments brings five punishments to the world, as it is stated, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that tarry late into the night till wine inflame them, and the harp and the lute. The tubert and the pipe and wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of the Lord. What is written after this? Therefore, my people are gone into captivity for lack of knowledge. They therefore cause captivity in the world, and their honorable men are famished. They therefore bring hunger into the world, and their multitude are parched with thirst. They therefore cause Torah to be forgotten by its students, and the mean man is bowed down, and the great man is humbled. They therefore cause humiliation to the haters of God, and man signifies none other than the Holy One. Blessed be He, as it is said, the Lord is a man of war, and the eyes of the lofty are humbled. They therefore cause the humiliation of Israel, and what is written after that? Therefore, Talmud, Masoda Bishiol hath enlarged her desire and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth among them descend into it when the former prophets died, who are the former. Prophets are who said they are David Samuel and Solomon are Naman said during the days of David they were sometimes successful and at other times unsuccessful for behold Zadok consulted it and succeeded whereas Abiathar consulted it and was not successful as it is said and Abiathar went up Rabbi Samuel objected it is written and he set himself to seek God all the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the vision of God was this not by means of the Urim and Thummim no it was through the prophets come and here when the first temple was destroyed the cities with pasture land were abolished the Urim and Thummim ceased there was no more king from the house of David and if anyone incites you to quote and the governor said unto them that they should not eat of the most holy things till there stood up a priest with Urim and Thummim replied to him it is only a phrase for the very remote future as when one man says to another until the dead revive and the Messiah son of David comes. But said Arnaman, who are the former prophets, the term former excludes Hadi Zechariah and Malachi, who are the latter prophets, for our rabbis have taught when Hadi Zechariah and Malachi died, the Holy Spirit departed from Israel. Nevertheless, they made use of the bath coal. On one occasion, some rabbis were sitting in the upper chamber of Gerya's house in Jericho. A bath coal was granted to them from heaven, which announced, There is in your midst one man who is deserving that the Sheshanah should alight upon him, but his generation is unworthy of it. They all looked at Hillel the elder, and when he died, they lamented over him. Alas, the pious man, alas, the humble man, disciple of Ezra. On another occasion, they were sitting in an upper chamber in Jabna. A bath coal was granted to them from heaven, which announced, There is in your midst one man who is deserving that the Sheshanah should alight upon him, but his generation is unworthy of it. They all looked at Samuel the little, and when he died. They lamented over him, alas, the humble man, alas, the pious man, disciple of Hillel. At the time of his death, he also said, Simeon and Ishmael are destined for the sword, and their colleagues for death, and the rest of the people for spoliation and great distress will come upon the nation. They also wished to lament over Arjuna Bibab, alas, the pious man, alas, the humble man. But the times were disturbed, and they could not lament publicly over those who had been slain by the government when the second temple was destroyed, the Shamir ceased, etc. Our rabbis taught with the Shamir Solomon built the temple as it is said, and the house when it was in building was built of stone made ready at the quarry. The words are to be understood as they are written, such as the statement of Arjuna Arnim. I asked him, Is it possible to say so? Has it not been stated? All these were of costly stone sawed with saws, if that be so, why is there a text to state there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron? Heard in the house while it was in the building, it means that they prepared them outside and brought them within. Rabbi said the statement of Arjuna is probable in connection with the stones of the sanctuary and the statement of Arnahamia in connection with Solomon's house. For what purpose then, according to Arnahamia, was the Shamir necessary? It was required as taught in the following. We may not write with ink upon these stones because it is said like the engravings of a signet nor cut into them with a knife because it is said in their settings. But he writes with ink upon them shows the Shamir the written strokes on the outside and these split of their own accord like a fig which splits open in summer and nothing at all is lost, or like a valley which splits asunder in the rainy season and nothing at all is lost. Our rabbis taught the Shamir is a creature about the size of a barley corn and was created during the six days of creation. No hard substance can withstand it. How is it
Holy One, blessed be he, for it has been taught our Eliezer the Great declares whoever has a piece of bread in his basket and says what shall I eat tomorrow belongs only to them who are little in faith and that is what our Eliezer said what means that which is written for who hath despised the day of small things it signifies what is the cause that the tables of the righteous are despoiled in the hereafter the smallness of faith which was in them that they did not trust in the Holy One, blessed be. He Rabbah said they are the little ones among the children of the wicked of Israel Talmud, Masoda who despoiled the verdict upon their fathers in the hereafter saying before him sovereign of the universe since thou art about to exact punishment of them why hast thou blunted their teeth Our Lady Jebrakai said had it not been for the prayer of David all Israel would have been sellers of rubbish as it is stated grant them esteem O Lord Our Lady Jebrakai also said had it not been for the prayer of Habakkuk two disciples of the sages would have to cover themselves with one garment and occupy themselves with Torah as it is stated O Lord I have heard the report of thee and am afraid O Lord revive thy work in the midst of the years read not in the midst of the years Bekorupshanim but in the drawing together of two Bekorupshanim Our Lady Jebrakai also said if two disciples of the sages proceed on a journey and there are no words of Torah between them they are deserving of being burnt with fire as it is stated and it came to pass as they still went on that behold a chariot of fire etc the reason why the chariot of fire appeared was that there was discussion of Torah between them hence if there had not been such discussion they would have deserved to be burnt Our Lady Jebrakai also said if two disciples of the sages reside in the same city and do not support each other in the study of the law one dies and the other goes into exile as it is stated that the Manslayer might flee thither which slayeth his neighbor without knowledge and knowledge means nothing but Torah as it is stated my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge our Judah son of our highest said any disciple of the sages who occupies himself with Torah in poverty will have his prayer heard as it is stated for the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem thou shalt weep no more he will surely be gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry when he shall hear he will answer thee and it continues and the Lord will give you bread in adversity and water in affliction our Abba said they also satisfy him from the luster of the Shechina as it is stated thine eyes shall see thy teacher our Ahabi Hanan said neither is the veil drawn before him as it is said thy teacher shall no more be hidden Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel says in the name of our Joshua from the day that the temple was destroyed there is no day etc Rabba said and the curse of each day is severer than that of the preceding as it is stated in the morning thou shalt say with God it were even and at even thou shalt say with God it were morning which morning would they long for if I say the morning of the morrow nobody knows what it will be therefore it must be the morning which had gone how in that case can the world endure through the doxology recited after the scriptural reading and the response of may his great name be blessed which is uttered in the doxology after studying again as it is stated a land of thick darkness as darkness itself a land of the shadow of death without any order hence if there are scriptural readings it is illumined from the thick darkness the dew has not descended for a blessing and the flavor has departed from the fruits etc it has been taught our Simeon B. Eliezer says the cessation of purity has removed taste and fragrance from fruits the cessation of tithes has removed the fatness of corn our who now once found a juicy date which he took and wrapped in his mantle his son Rabbah came and said to him, I smell the fragrance of a juicy date. He said to him, My son, there is purity in thee, and gave it to him. Meanwhile, Rabbah's son Abba came, Rabbah took it and gave it to him. Aruna said to Rabbah, My son, thou hast gladdened my heart and blunted my teeth. That is what the popular proverb says. A father's love is for his children, the children's love is for their own children. Our Ahabi Jacob reared our Jacob, his daughter's son, when he grew up. The grandfather said to him, Give me some water to drink. He replied, I am not thy son. That is what the popular proverb says. Rear me, rear me, I am thy daughter's son. Mission during the war with Vespasian, they the rabbis decreed against the use of crowns worn by bridegrooms and against the use of the drum during the war of Quaetus. They decreed against the use of crowns worn by brides and that nobody should teach his son Greek during the final war. They decreed that a bride should not go out in the palanquin in the Midst of the city, but our rabbis decreed that a bride may go out in the palanquin in the midst of the city. When our Meir died, the composers of fable ceased. When Ben Ezai died, the assiduous students of Torah ceased. When Ben Zioma died, the expositor ceased. When our Akiba died, the glory of the Torah ceased. When our Hanan Abidosa died, men of deeds ceased. When our Jose Ketan died, the pious men ceased. And why was his name called Ketan Tab? Because he was the youngest of the pious men. When our Yohanan Bizakai died, the luster of wisdom ceased. When Rabban Gamaliel the elder died, the glory of the Torah ceased. And purity and abnegation perished. When our Ishmael Bifabi died, the luster of the priesthood ceased. When Rabbi died, humility and fear of sin ceased. Our Phineas Bijadir says, When the second temple was destroyed, scholars and noblemen were ashamed and covered their head. Men of deed were disregarded, and men of arm and men of tongue grew powerful. Nobody inquires, nobody prays on their behalf, and nobody. Asks upon whom is it for us to rely upon our Father who is in heaven? Our Eliezer the Great says, From the day the temple was destroyed, the sages began to be like school teachers, school teachers like synagogue attendants, synagogue attendants like common people, and the common people Talmud, Masoda became more and more debased, and there was none to ask, none to inquire upon whom is it for us to rely upon our Father who is in heaven in the footsteps of the Messiah. Insolence will increase, and honored dwindle the vine will yield its fruit abundantly, but wine will be dear, the government will turn to heresy, and there will be none to offer them reproof. The meeting place of scholars will be used for immorality, Galilee will be destroyed, Gabelin desolated, and the dwellers on the frontier will go about begging from place to place without anyone to take pity on them. The wisdom of the learned will degenerate, fearers of sin will be despised, and the truth will be lacking, youths will put. Old men to shame the old will stand up in the presence of the young a son will revile his father a daughter will rise against her mother a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's enemies will be the members of his household the face of the generation will be like the face of a dog a son will not feel ashamed before his father so upon whom is it for us to rely upon our father who is in heaven Gamara Rab said the decree against the use of a crown applies only to one made of salt and brimstone but if made of myrtle or roses it is permitted and Samuel said also one made of myrtle or roses is prohibited but if made of reeds or rushes it is permitted and Levi said also one made of reeds or rushes is prohibited similarly taught Levi in his mission it is also prohibited if made of reeds or rushes and against the use of the drum irus what means irus our Eliezer said a drum with a single bell Rabbi Bihar who made a tambourine for his son his father came and broke it saying. To him it might be substituted for a drum with a single bell go make for him an instrument by stretching the skin over the mouth of a pitcher or over the mouth of a kephis during the war of Quaetus they decreed against the use of crowns worn by brides etc. What means crowns worn by brides Rabbi Barhana said in the name of our Yohanan a miniature golden city there is a teaching to the same effect what are crowns worn by brides a golden city but one may make a cap for her out of fun. Well a tanda taught they also decreed against the use of the canopy of bridegrooms what means canopy of bridegrooms crimson silk embroidered with gold there is a teaching to the same effect the canopy of bridegrooms is crimson silk embroidered with gold but we may make a framework of glass and hang on it anything one desires and that nobody should teach his son Greek our rabbis taught when the kings of the Hasmonean house fought one another Harkness was outside and Aristobulus within each. Day they used to let down denarii in a basket and haul up for them animals for the continual offerings. An old man there who was learned in Greek wisdom spoke with them in Greek, saying, As long as they carry on the temple service, they will never surrender to you. On the morrow, they let down denarii in a basket and hauled up a pig. When it reached halfway up the wall, it stuck its claws into the wall, and the land of Israel was shaken over a distance of four hundred parts. At that time, they declared, Curse be a man who rears pigs, and curse be a man who teaches his son Greek wisdom. Concerning that year, we learned that it happened that the Omer had to be supplied from the gardens of Zerfim and the two loaves from the valley of Ensoker, but it is not so for Rabbi said, Why use the Syrian language in the land of Israel? Either use the holy tongue or Greek, and our Joseph said, Why use
Be Ketan Tab because he was the youngest of the pious men when Ben Eze died, the assiduous students of Torah ceased when Ben Zoma died, the exosider ceased when Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel died, locusts came up and troubles increased when Rabbi died, troubles were multiplied twofold when Rabbi died, humility and fear of sin ceased. Our Joseph said to the Tana, do not include when reciting this mission of the word humility because there is I, our Naman said to the teacher, do not include fear of sin because there is I.